بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. So a little bit about what Sidi Mahdi did for us this morning, mashallah. Uh, these are the beautiful words of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah subhanahu wa taala says on the tongue of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that I am as my servant thinks of me, and I am with him when he makes remembrance of me. If he makes remembrance of me to himself, I make remembrance of him to myself. And if he makes remembrance of me in a gathering, I make remembrance of him in a gathering better than it. Anas radiallahu anhu also reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when you come upon the meadows of the garden, graze in them. He, sal he was asked, what are the meadows of the garden? He said, the circles of remembrance, hilaq al-dhikr sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah Almighty has angels who travel the highways and byways seeking out gatherings of remembrance. Inshallah, we're amongst those people. In the earth, when they find a gathering of remembrance, they enfold them with their wings, stretching up to the heaven. Allahu Akbar. So uh, the name of our uh, gathering for today, um, you know, it's a salawat retreat uh, focused around everything related to salawat, and that is the prayer on the Prophet Wasallam. So we're focusing on the essentials and wisdom of sending blessing upon the Prophet Wasallam. And this is a blessed month, the sacred month of, of respite, right? Which means Dhul Qa'dah. This is the time where people agreed, let's just not have any difficulties and, and conflicts in the, in the time of before the Prophet Wasallam. And that month remained and it became one of the four sacred months. So Dhul Qa'dah, Dhul Hijjah, Muharram, and then Rajab by itself. And these are the four sacred months. So inshallah, we'll talk a little bit about what uh, the intention behind Circles of Light is. Who the author Imam Sheikh Abdullah Sarajuddin Al Husseini radiallahu anhu was, and then also the book that we're covering, which is called As Salatu Al Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay, uh, and regarding the circles of light, um, this is a name for the gathering, which uh, primarily I'm involved in. I'm helping curate content, research, edit, provide uh, you know um, ideas for what kind of gatherings to do. And inshallah, right now this is the name for it. But inshallah, Allah knows the best, you know, future what what ideas we can do with the with the program. But it's a name to help us focus and concentrate on a specific aim, which is trying to find the wisdom in our deen. And the word of wisdom, the Prophet sallallahu is reported said, the word of wisdom is the lost property of the believer. Wherever he finds it, he is most worthy of it. Al kalimatul hikmatu dalatul mu'min. The Prophet sallallahu is reported have said. And so the aim of Circles of, of, of Light is, is really focused around sharing sacred teachings and wisdom for the benefit of our community. Meant to assist in maximizing dunya for our deen, which is a very uh, different way of looking at it. And the way that I saw this was a dua from the Prophet ﷺ, where he said that, O oh Allah, help us in our dunya so that we can uh, assist us in our deen. And it's a different way because we usually think of, of, of like we need to help our deen. But once our dunya focus in this life, because there's gatherings where Sayyidina Ali, the people were blaming the dunya, the lower world. And Sayyidina Ali said, but this is the place where we get to get the akhira. So it's, it's a paradigm shift. This is where you can earn the akhira. So let's maximize this world. Use it in the right way. When we build a masjid and we pray in it, Allah, the whole world, the, the dunya is outside, the inside is not dunya anymore, right? The inside becomes Jannah. The, the place where we're making sajda and everyone is the closest to Allah. Aqrab ma yakun al-abd min rabbihi wa huwa sajid. The Prophet said, the most closest a human being will be to their Lord is when they're in sajda. And interestingly enough, the sajda is the time when our hearts are over our intellects. That's what happens. Because this is a matter of the hearts and the intellect. We have nur and nur. Nurun ala nur, wahyun ala al aql. The, the revelation is above the, the intellect and the rational faculty. But they're both nur. We have to use them in the service of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, says in the Quran, He gives wisdom to whomever He wills. Whoever is given wisdom has been given much good. But none pays heed except those with insight. And we are motivated by the words of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the most beloved people to Allah, 
are those who's m most beneficial to the people. And we seek to achieve, the, achieve this through our in-person educational programs and publications. Now, why do we say in-person? Because we have people, alhamdulillah, online as well. In-person is that human connection, right? And we're we're hitting, sitting here together, we'll uh, have uh, discussions, we'll meet each other. That's the brotherhood of Islam, the suhbah, the gathering and sitting together. SubhanAllah, that's what the, the companion's highest rank and entitled was that they were the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet and they were in his companionship. And we're, Alhamdulillah, in our case, we're all in the companionship of each other. They say, you know, the, one of the amazing uh, spiritual masters, he said, meet every single person as if this person is Khidr. Because you, you, you honor every human being. We're all from the children of Adam and, and Eve. We're all from Adam and Hawa. Subhanallah, what more do you need? Allah already honored the, those, those people and we're from their progeny. So that's how we remove those layers and barriers and we get to see the essence of what we are. And that's what we try to do. But inshallah, uh, online is also an, an approach and later on we can try to, uh, you know, try to do programming for that as well. But uh, in person I think is is the first approach and then publications wise is things that we can curate so some of the content that we curate inshallah we want to be able to let people uh, enjoy it and, and, and benefit inshallah a little bit about our, our speakers for today if you haven't read it um, Ustad Mahdi Amin my beloved brother uh, you know he's a Zaytuna college alumnus and practicing attorney he teaches Islamic studies at Elm Tree and serves as convert, convert care coordinator for Ta'lif um, your brother, the Fakir here, um, I'm a native of the Bay Area with roots hailing from the ancient city of Kabul in Afghanistan. He, um, I've been a li lifelong seeker of Islamic knowledge, alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah. I don't deserve any of that. And learning from a wide range of Muslim scholars from Mauritania, Morocco, the, the Yemen, and the Hejaz, many uh, other places, alhamdulillah, by the grace and blessings of Allah. And with the blessings of my teachers, I have been able to contribute to some educational programs and gatherings of dhikr and with that blessing we're trying to do circles of light as well and uh, my research areas that i really enjoy uh, are quran and hadith commentaries philology i love words i love the the wisdom that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in them and the realities that are in there and also spirituality because in in essence we are a spiritual being uh, I think I've heard this and I'm not sure where, but they say we're, we're a spiritual being having a human experience. We're a spiritual being having a human experience, not a human having a spiritual experience. Because our, Allah created our ruh first. That existed, right? And that's why Imam al-Haddad in the lives of man, he says that we, we go through five stages. The first stage is when we, were, we came from non-existence into a spirit. And then the journey goes on to the Akhirah, when we finally are in, blessed with a body and a spirit that lasts, ever, uh, that will never taste death again. In other words, death is that transition. We will never transition again to another world. We'll be in that amazing uh, paradisical uh, area. And, 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 then, and, then, and then the experience of that, we, <laughs> the Prophet ﷺ said, مَا لَا عَيْنٌ رَأَتْ وَلَا أُذْنٌ سَمِعَتْ وَلَا خَطَرْ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرْ No eye has heard it, no ear has heard about it, no eye has seen it, and will ha it hasn't even occurred to the heart of a human being. So that's the, the, the focus around that, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. And now we come to the most important part, our Imam, Sayyidina Shaykh Abdullah Sarajuddin. Uh, I've known about him for over 10 years, uh, read a little bit of his works, alhamdulillah, and was gifted by Imam Zaid, his book, Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's what I think really started my interest in his works more. Um, and, uh, and then from there, found out, mashallah, he has so many books and his publications started coming out with more in English. Um, and then, of course, there's other things that, you know, you meet other people that know him. But like a, two weeks ago, I met one of his students, subhanAllah. And I asked him, I said, subhanAllah, we were teaching this class and he was very happy and he, he gave us his blessings, alhamdulillah. Uh, so Sayyidina Shaykh Abdullah bin Muhammad Najibuddin Sirajuddin, uh, Najibuddin Sirajuddin, 
Al Husseini, he was from the family of the Prophet and from the lineage of Imam Al Hussein radiallahu anhu. Al Halabi, from the beautiful land of Halab, Aleppo, in northern Syria. Um, and in short, people refer to him as Sheikh Abdullah Sirajuddin. He was born in 1923. He was a scholar for scholars. Yet many of his published works were of benefit to both the scholar and the layperson. The Sheikh focused primarily on the Holy Quran and prophetic narrations. And I say that, you know, in one sense, this, but the volumes can be written on what he did for Islam. Because he was a, a muhaddith in a hafith. And he was a muhaddith because he knew the science of hadith and a master of that. But he was also a, uh, a hafith of hadith, which he, he memorized all the chains of narration. And uh, I've heard it's well over 80,000. So he was, he was preserving the, the, the Quranic uh, sciences and the prophetic narrations. What an honor, subhanAllah. And he founded a school called School of Islamic Teachings, what we're doing now. We're all sitting, subhanAllah. It all starts with that. But that's the abbreviation, subhanAllah, School of Islamic Teachings in 1958. And he died, rahimullah ta'ala, in March of 20, uh, 2002, 1422, after the hijrah of our Prophet. And that's a picture of him when he was younger and then a later age. MashaAllah. May Allah bless him and rahimahullah ta'ala. And we make a special dua and fatiha for him, his teachers, um, and everyone that uh, has rights upon him. Now regarding our text, alhamdulillah, someone uh, you know, decided to publish it and, and make it available in English, which is amazing. Uh, uh, otherwise, I think the, the task of looking through the Arabic and finding the best choice words and explaining the expressions, that would be a challenge. But mashallah, Abdulaziz Suraka, he's a master translator, mashallah, may Allah bless him. And, um, and he did, did this work. So the, the book itself, the areas we're going to cover um, are the ma'ani, the meanings, the rulings, the ahkam, the virtues, the fada'il, a warning to the heedless uh, people who f are careless about doing salawat on the Prophet ﷺ, and the benefits, fawaid. And then there's a section, uh, he has a very short section about Prophet Jesus ﷺ, how he fits that in. Maybe if you haven't heard it, uh, then you'll find out it's a nice surprise. But then if you have, please don't share it so that it'll be a surprise for other people. He talks about the angels and Abrahamic salutation, Salat al Ibrahimiyah, or what the translator calls Ibrahimi prayer. The, the prayer of Salat al Ibrahimiyah. Some scholars say that this is the Afdal of Salawat al Nabi Sassim. It's the greatest form of Salawat, the most virtuous. The Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad kama salli ta'ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ali Sayyidina Ibrahim to the end of that. And then there's a closing section for his uh, du'as, which we will inshallah incorporate. And the Shaykh has done much of the heavy lifting for us in this book, mashallah. If you look at it, his research is uh, impeccable. We must now take what we know and apply it with sincerity in our hearts. Okay, so now this slide and my notes are going to be a little bit um, uh, different, but I wanted to bring the kind of summarized version there. Inshallah, I'm going to put this a little bit here. Bear with me. And CDs are here. If I can ask you, please uh, be the timekeeper for us to make sure we don't go too uh, off track here. Right now, uh, we were supposed to s start at 9:30. Alhamdulillah, we're 9:29, so we're doing good. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Okay, CD. Uh, let me go to my notes. Yes. I, I, I wish, I haven't seen one, um, but uh, yeah, the only one that I've seen is the print, and then this is a paper uh, back that I have. So the one that I'm using um, is this, this, this book. It's a paper back. Uh, and these are really hard to, you know, try to do that because the binding, I think, is going to be an issue. <clears throat> OK. 
Okay, so before we jump right into um, session one, which we're, alhamdulillah we're on time, and uh, see so here we we looked at the um, the timing. It's I think we're going to do uh, chapter one. We're going to do uh, twenty minutes, right? right? Okay, so inshallah, in just a minute you can start that. But there's a beautiful dua that I heard from some of the scholars of Azhar Sharif, and I want to incorporate that. Inshallah, anyone who hears it and they 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 can memorize it. Try to memorize it and try to use it in your gatherings if you can. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Allahumma salli wa sallim barak ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Allahumma ja'al majalisina majalis Rasulillah wa ayyamana ayyam Rasulillah wa layalina layali Rasulillah. Wa shrah suduruna bi ulumi Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa mla'a qulubuna bi hubbi Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa adkhilna fi hisni Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa jadid bina sunnata Sayyidina Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa atliq al-sinatana bi salati wa salami ala Sayyidina Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma rizukna as-safa واجمعنا على حبيبك المصطفى اللهم يا نور السماوات والأرض املأ قلوبنا بأنوار حبيبك المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم وجعلنا من أهل الصفاء والوفاء يا رب العالمين and the last lines that Sidi Mahdi recited was صفاء وفاء سبحان الله سعيد ما شاء الله joined uh, with this dua الحمد لله ما شاء الله so chapter one, inshallah, the way it's going to be is, um, or the session one is going to be salawat. As you know, is a vast topic. There's no one who can do it justice. Uh, this book is amazing, but there's so many other books that are on the same topic. Um, and then what we'll do is, um, after you know mentioning that, well, we should define some terms. I think there, especially uh, people who are going to come later or. Uh, you know, uh, people who are going to refer to this, they, they should know these terms that we're going to use so that we can be on the same page. And then we'll jump into chapter one of the book, inshallah. Okay. So some of these are very basic, but alhamdulillah, we should just, you know, try to define them. Dhikr, and the plural is adhkar. So this is the remembrance of Allah Ta'ala. In, in other words, this is the most general form of remembrance. So whenever we say, I'm doing salawat, it's more specific. But when you're doing dhikr, it's, uh, it's dhikr in all of its forms, right? You can be doing dhikr of reciting the Qur'an. Uh, you could do many other types of dhikr, but that's what the, um, the, the, the du'as usually are referred to the adhkar too. So like Imam al nawi has a kitab al-adhkar, the, the, the book of remembrances, meaning the book of these remembrances of the du'as from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Amazing, exhaust, amazing book. And it's been translated in English, so people should have it at home, inshallah. And then salat and salawat. Okay, so this, this here obviously can be a little bit tricky because we have the prayer and we have the formal prayer and we have this prayer on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi which is blessings. So that's where that comes from. So salat, it means prayer generally. But the actual root word salat means dua. It means a supplication. So in reality, when we start our prayer, right? Uh, when, when you start your prayer and you start uh, Fatiha, right? Your dua starts at Ihdina Salat al-Mustaqim. Some scholars say that it starts at Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Why? Because when you praise Allah without asking for anything, that's automatically asking Him for something. But the most beautiful way of asking is to praise Him and don't say anything else. Just say, praise Him. Say, we, you're the Lord of the world, you're the Maliki Yomidin. That's it. That's, he's going to give you now. But uh, uh, because the, the Quran came like this, we say, Otherwise, that's why the, many of the du'as start with profuse praising of Allah, exalting Allah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Hamda yuafi ni'mahu yukafi mazida and all these things like that, praising Allah and all of His beautiful attributes. So the root word of Salat is Dua. But now we have Salat al-Maktuba. The Salat al-Maktuba is the formal prayer that we pray, the five times prayer. Whenever we refer to it, we say, which Salat are you talking about? Oh, Salat al-Maktuba. Then that we have the Salat ala nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is the prayer on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that it refers to uh, Ayah 56 of Surah Hazab, 3356, where that it became uh, a Salatu Ala Nabi. And that's uh, important to uh, differentiate. Now, in other cultures, especially if you go a little bit east, right, Durud is the same thing as Salawat on the Prophet. 
Durud means I'm sending my greetings, my respect, my love, my honor, right? And that's what the seeking of, of, of salawat is. So Durud Sharif is what that means. And Durud is also used as a way to greet people. We would say, you know, Durud to you. That means my greetings, my honor, my respect towards you. And then we also have a word that we will use like majlis, gathering, right? Or mahfil. Mahfil is also like a gathering. And more. It could be used more like even a, a, a celebration, like a party where people are gathering for a, for a, a specific occasion. And then where this means a regular practice. But the root word means to go and get water. So we're quenching our, our spiritual souls. When we're doing our work regularly, we're quenching ourselves, right? We're, we're, we're uh, all the benefits of drinking water. SubhanAllah, you can think spiritually how much benefit it has. So that's your word. It becomes, you have a word of Quran. It means your regular practice of Quran that you do. Or you have a word of salawat on the Prophet Sallallahu Or you have other uh, types of du'as and dhikr that you do that become a regular practice. And then virtues and benefits... As you remember, chapter 3 and 4 were virtues and benefits. Fada'il and fawa'id. When you look at it, from what I can tell, they're, they're almost the same thing. Right? One is talking about the virtues of it, um, like the rank and status of it. But you, when you read it, you see that there's benefits in it. But then when you read the benefits, you see that there's virtues in it. So it's kind of a, a, almost the same. But there is, has to be a reason why the scholars differentiate it. So Allah knows best. And then we have sigha, which is, means the wording, the set form, the formula. So we say, which prayer on the Prophet and which sigha of the prayer are you doing? Oh, I'm doing Salat al-Ibrahimiyah. That's the sigha. Or somebody like Sidi Mahdi did, right? Salat al munjiyah That was actually the first, after Salat al-Ibrahimiyah, that's the first salawat that I learned. Right? And it wasn't at a masjid, <laughs> subhanAllah. We were visiting Stanford University and, and one of our teachers recited it and I memorized it after that. So you don't know where your risk is going to come. That's how it is. So that's Salat al munjiyah So which sigha is Salat al munjiyah Which sigha is Salat al sirajiyah Shaykh Abdullah Sirajuddin has a salawat as well. So that's that. And then tajdeed means renewal, revival. Right, so what, what we're trying to do in this gathering, we're trying to do a revival of the salawat on the Prophet Sallallahu knowing about it, understanding it, practicing it, right? We, we will share uh, things. And then we have interactive where people will share their feelings about it. So a beautiful learning event will happen that SubhanAllah, I could be sitting in my office and just reading this book by myself. But what's the benefit of just benefiting myself? We can all benefit together. We're reading it together. We're reviewing it together. We're rereading it. And the same thing, imagine you said to yourself, you know, Saturday from 9 o'clock to 4 o'clock, I'm going to read this book. Do you think it will happen? Chances are it won't happen. Because we didn't have what Shaykh uh, Ibn Arabi radiallahu who says, this is jam'iyyah. We don't have the focus and concentration. Everything comes with that. When you have focus, then everything happens. Because you're putting all your di distractions and end tasks and everything away, and you're making your focus one. And Allah loves that. Allah loves that. So, you know, that's that's what tajdeed is about. So it could, it could be anything. It could be your own tajdeed for yourself. You could be doing renewal for your own self. That you found something, you said, Subhanallah, I need to revive this thing in my life. I need to revive this thing in my practice. And that's where this, this idea in this book came from. I said, SubhanAllah, I need to learn more about the salawat on the Prophet Sallallahu There's so many beautiful books. Why aren't we reading them? They're all sitting on our shelves. No one's buying them. And now the practice of sitting together, reading, and also having benefit of people that are, can't make it online, then we're, alhamdulillah, this is a gathering of dhikr. That's the blessing. And then tafakkur. Tafakkur is reflection. And in the ayah of 191 of Surah Al Imran, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Dhikr and fikr, remembrance and fikr and reflection, they go together." Right? And then uh, after the prayer, as soon as you do your uh, basic istighfar, you say, "Allahumma inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni badak. Right there, it's the dhikr, and then there's a place for fikr, and how those the relationship happens. So, inshallah, we'll have a, a, a fikr. Uh, exercise as well, inshallah, tafakkur. And this is the 
main ayah that we're focusing around when we dive into chapter one, inshallah. Yeah. So I'm going to leave this on there, and now we're going to start reading. Um, don't be shy if anyone has questions and something's not clear, please ask. But this is the ayah uh, that is ayah 56 of Surah Ahzab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I would blame Shaitan al Jim Smila Rahman Rahim. In Allah, Mala Ikatahu, you saluna ala nabi, ya ayuhaladina amanu salu alayhi wa salimu taslima. And the translation that I chose, Allah Masalli wa salim barak alayhi wa alayhi. The translation that I chose are two uh, Dr. Thomas Cleary's uh, translation of the Quran, which he used to work on in the late hours of the night. For many many uh, you know hours that he spent, Subhanallah, to do the full translation of the Quran. The first translation that he did was the Jawahir al Quran of Imam al Ghazali called the Essentials of the Quran, the Essential Quran. Yeah, and that was amazing and very uh, uh, impactful and beneficial for me. But then later, Subhanallah, after many many years, he finally did the full translation of the Quran, Rahimullah Taala, and he became Muslim. Alhamdulillah. May Allah have mercy upon him. So he says, God and God's angels. You see how he chose God and God's angels? Because he's trying to avoid the uh, using gender. So he's trying to say, God and God's angels, because in Allahu malaikata, who? So God and God's angels bless the Prophet. O believers, invoke blessings on him and greet him with a prayer for peace. And Dr. Mustafa Khattab, his translation says, Indeed, Allah showers his blessings upon the Prophet and his angels pray for him. O believers, invoke Allah's blessings upon him and salute him with worthy greetings of peace. Allahumma salli wa sallim barak alayhi wa alayhi wa sahabi So Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, page 17, is the uh, chapter 1. So, uh, Shaykh Abdullah Sarajuddin, rahimullah, starts off by talking about this ayah. And he says, there are numerous points to be made regarding this verse. And then he says, the predicate and the command in this noble verse, the the khabar and the amr. So the khabar in this uh, 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 in here in this uh, ayah is in Allahu malaikatu yusalluna ala nabi. This is giving us some news. And then later the command comes sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. So he says, firstly, this noble verse includes a predicate and a command. With regards to the predicate in this noble verse, Allah the exalted informed his servants about the rank of this noble prophet with him in the higher assembly that those brought nigh sent prayers upon him there and that all of the angels sent prayers upon him this is only due to his esteem with his lord and his lofty station and dignified rank in the higher assembly then he commanded the inhabitants of the lower world to send prayers and salutations upon him that there be gathered for him lauding, which is, which is praise, a nobleman and exaltation from the inhabitants of the two worlds combined, the higher world and the lower world. This predicate begins with the governing particle, which is the inna, indeed, in order to emphasize what is said and explain its tremendousness. Some of the verifying scholars said that this noble verse contains two predicates, just as the last part of the verse contains two mighty commands, sallu alayhi and then wasallimu. The first predicate concerns the Lord of Might, Allah, the Most High and Exalted, that He sends prayers upon this noble Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the second predicate it concerns the angels of Allah, that they send prayers upon this noble Prophet. This es the estimated meaning of the verse is, this is the part we should now uh, be extra... Uh, attentive to. The estimated meaning of the verse is that indeed Allah sends prayers upon the Prophet and indeed the angels send prayers upon the Prophet too. The reason for this estimation is due to the different realities of these two prayers. The prayer of Allah and the prayer of the angels. The prayer of the angels in no way resembles the prayer of the Lord of the worlds. So that can get lost in translation in English, right? We think it's the same. No, they, can't, they can never be the same. As for those who say that this statement, send prayers upon the Prophet, includes both Allah and the angels, then in their view, this is a, this a mode of applying a, a term of shared designation for each individual, or it is figurative generality. However, the first view is more emphatic, and people have different ways of understanding this. 
In both estimations, Allah the Exalted is announcing to His servants the virtue of this noble Prophet His lofty station and His dignified rank with Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala announces this reality in the higher assembly and then reveals it to the celestial world and then to the lower earth, thus causing it to reverberate through the entire cosmos and recording those verses in the pages of all beings, informing that this noble prophet has a mighty and tremendous station with the Lord of the mighty throne. That is because Allah, the exalted, sends prayers upon, the, upon this Prophet والسلام, as a means of ennobling him, honoring him, preferring, preferring him, and magnifying him. And the angels of Allah, the exalted, send prayers upon this Prophet by being ennobled, by sending prayers upon him, seeking blessings, and basking in its lights, and pl plunging into the depths of its secrets. And he doesn't even go into that. He just tells us that there's amazing things that are there, we don't know all of it. And this is amazing because imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said the first part and then the next part didn't come. We were not invited to do this. We would be so sad. This is an honor from Allah that Allah invited us into that circle. Said that I do this, the angels do this. You can join in. Join in. And then he says, in Amanu. And we won't delve into that because later he will do it. But that's the secret. Look at it. It won't even get lost in translation. That he says, oh you, right? Oh believers. Have you met someone who does salawat is not a believer? Have you met somebody who is a Muslim but they don't do a lot of salawat? Maybe they're at the rank of Islam. They haven't reached the level of iman, higher iman yet. But you will, it's very impossible to think somebody who's doing salawat, they don't have iman. Because Allah said, the believers... And then he says, from this point when the inhabitants of the lower assembly, the world, heard that their hearts heard that their hearts felt intimacy and their resolves and aspirations were moved, that they may obtain the honor of sending prayers upon this noble prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa obtain the virtues of sending prayers upon him, acquire from its lights, and be filled with its secrets. Their mute tongue of eloquence express the reality of their say as if they're saying this, O Lord, allow us to be honored by sending prayers upon this noble Prophet Sallallahu by whom the angels were honored sending prayers upon him. Then came the divine call with the statement, O, which is a vo vocative part particle, which is more forceful in capturing attention and receiving the command that follows it. The exalted then said, O you who believe, send prayers and abundant salutations upon him that is to increase in longing and spiritual experience so the first one is shawq and the next one is dhawq when, when longing heralds spiritual experience the experience is more complete and more acceptable imagine you're longing to go to hajj and you've waited years and years so your shawq is there for 10 years until you taste it that's going to be so much different than somebody who says I, you know I want to go to hajj and next day they're going to hajj they didn't have enough longing, right? So that's what he's saying. When longing heralds spiritual experience, the experience is more complete and more acceptable, and it is more delightful and loftier for the person of spiritual state, the spiritual taste. May Allah, the exalted, make us of them. Amen. As is well known to the scholars of the Arabic language, the word ya is primarily used for calling one who's far away. When someone is close by, he is called with Hamza or with a, though ya may be used to call someone who is close in order to give him the status of someone who is distant. Now, that can either be due to the lofty rank and high position assumed by the caller. An example of this is the real al-haq subhanahu wa ta'ala calling his servants using the word ya, or it would be due to the lofty rank of the one who is called, and an example of this is the statement of the servant, ya rab. Right? Because we know Allah is al Qarib. Does he have a name called al Ba'id? No. So he's Qarib. So, but we use that Ya because of the lofty st status and rank. Or it could be used to place the one who is close far away due to his heedlessness and neg neglect. May Allah protect us from that. Moreover, linking the call to the attribute of faith, which is what we talked about. O oh, you who believe, contains a strong encouragement to comply with the command that comes after the call for it indicates that it is required by their faith in which they believe and by their religion to which they adhere. 
So whoever abandons this command and neglects it has sullied his faith and exposed it to harm. This is comparable to Allah's statement, O you who believe, bow, prostrate, and worship your Lord, and perform good actions that you may be successful. O you who believe, fasting has been prescribed for you. O you who believe, seek help with patience and prayer. And so on. In addition, linking the call to the attribute of faith brings attention to the fact that compliance with his command, send prayers upon him, is an issue of faith. It is not a favor given to the Prophet. It's not imtinan. We're not doing a favor to the Prophet It's an issue of faith. We're showing our faith. And then he says that the prayers of Allah, the exalted, and the prayers of the angels upon this noble Prophet are forever enduring and unceasingly continuous in forward eternity. Now the mention of his uh, description instead of his name. Because see right here, look at, the eye, look at the eye again. It says Prophet. Allah chose the name Nabi. And Nabi for this, uh, you, you know, for lack of a better word, for this repository of salawat. It's on the Nabi. So now he's going to say, why is that chosen over the name? The mention of his description instead of his name in the statement of the Most High, indeed Allah and his angels send prayers upon the Prophet. Alayhi salatu salam is contrary to the predominant way in which Allah speaks about His Prophets. The mention of His description in order to indicate the added magnificence, nobility, and lofty rank and position with which Allah has uniquely granted Him to the exclusion of all others. He emphasized that with the Al, Al Nabi, in His statement, the Prophet, in order to point out that He is the one who is known with the true, true description of prophethood. Properly speaking, that is to say, Allah usually addresses His prophets and messengers with their names. Allah said to Adam, O oh Adam, He didn't say, O oh Prophet. He said, O oh Adam, reside you and your wife in the garden. Allah said to Nuh, It was said, O oh Nuh, come down with peace and blessings from us. Allah said to His intimate friend, Ibrahim, and we called him saying, O oh Ibrahim, you have confirmed the vision. You have confirmed the vision. See, how are we doing on time? Eight more minutes? Alhamdulillah. And, and so on. We all get the point there, right? And as for the address and call of the Most High to the noblest beloved, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Al-Habib, it was with the honorific titles of praise and lauding, which is uh, exaltation and praise. He mentioned him with the attributes of prophethood and messengership. The Most High said, O Prophet, indeed, we have sent you as a witness, a bringer of God tidings, and a warner. O Messenger, do not be grieved by those who hasten to disbelieve, and so on. Take the divine reports about him, mentioning the attributes of prophethood and messengership. The Most High said, However, the Messenger and those with him strive with their wealth and their selves, and know that among you is the Messenger of Allah, and so on. Indeed, in the above is his statement, Indeed, Allah and his angels send prayers upon the Prophet. In this there is divine preference for him, an ennobling of him and an elevation of his status among that of others. Yes, it is the prophethood that precedes all prophethood in the spiritual realm, and the seal of all prophethood in the physical world. This is proven by the statement of the Most High, rather, he is the messenger of Allah and the seal of the prophets, and Allah is all-knowing of everything. This is an explicit text regarding the seal of his prophethood. As for his prophethood being the first in the spiritual world, this is proven in the hadith report narrated by Imam At-Tirmidhi rahimahullah, who said that it was Hassan Sahih, authentic, from Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. They said, Ya Rasulullah, when was prophethood decreed for you? He responded, when Adam was between spirit and flesh. The interpretation of the questioner's statement, when was prophethood decreed for you, appears in the narration of Imam Ahmad and his Musnad from Abdullah bin Shaqiq, from a man who said, I said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa when were you made a prophet? He replied, when Adam was between spirit and flesh. Imam Ahmad narrated from Irbad bin Sariya, who said, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, indeed with Allah, I am the seal of the prophets, even while Adam was mixed in his mud. I, I shall inform you of the first of that. I am the response to the prayer of my father, Abraham. I am Esau's glad tidings and the fulfillment of my mother's dream. 
and like that all of the Prophet's mothers see. In a narration from another route from Al-Irbad bin Sari radiallahu anhu, he said, I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, Indeed, I am the servant of Allah in the seal of the Prophets, even while Adam was mixed in his mud. And when the mother of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was delivering him, she saw a light that illuminated the palaces of the Levant, which is Asham. Abu Naim radiallahu anhu narrated from uh, Sunubihi, from Umar bin, Abdul, uh, Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu anhu who said, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ya Rasulullah, when were you made a prophet? He replied, when Adam was between spirit and flesh. So he goes on to, to, show, to show and prove this, and he says later, there are Quranic and prophetic texts explaining the vast number of the angels, uh, upon them all be peace, the Most High said, and none knows the host of your Lord save he. And in the agreed-upon hadith about the miraculous night journey, it mentions that the Prophet ﷺ said about the oft-frequented house, Al-Bayt Al-Ma'mur, every day 70,000 angels enter it, never to return to it thereafter. So he's talking about the tremendousness of the prayer from the angels and how amazing they are. And then he goes on to say, There is no place within the seven heavens the size of a foot, a handspan, or even a palm, save that it contains an angel either standing, bowing, or prostrating. After this tremendous statement that he, the glorified and exalted, sends prayers upon this noble prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that all of the angels sent prayers upon him, then comes a command from the Lord of the mighty throne, ordering prayers and salutations to be sent upon this noble prophet. This command comes with a powerful emphasis on the order and the obligation to carry it out, and the prohibition of being negligent in it. All of this is indicated in the phrase, O you who believe. Now he talks about the relationship between this noble verse and the one preceding it. Because there's many, many ayahs that are building up, because this is ayah 56, the, this ayah here. He says, there's a relationship between this noble verse and the one preceding it. This noble verse comes after many verses in which Allah expounded upon the virtue of this noble prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and explain some of his unique rulings and the lofty station he bestowed upon him exclusively. So this verse comes after those verses to explain the reasons for all of the aforementioned unique qualities and virtues that he bestowed upon him. So why did Allah do this? He says, go look in the ayahs before and you see that it builds up to this. Now you know why. And then he goes on and talks about that for four pages. Uh, page until 24. Then the Most High mentioned the ranks of the believing men and women as well as the virtue of their position with their Lord. He said, indeed, the Muslim men and women, the believing men and women, the, uh, the obedient men and the obedient women, the truthful men and the truthful women, the patient men and the patient women, the humble men and the humble women, the charitable men and the charitable women, the fasting men and the fasting women, the men who guard their private parts and the women who do so, and the men who remember Allah often and the women who do so. For them, Allah has prepared forgiveness and a great reward. This is before that. And this is an announcement from Allah explaining the virtue of the women who are included in the praise mentioned in the verse. This verse also informs that the best of them are the ones to whom this verse applies first and foremost. And they are the wives of the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa radiallahu anhu. That is because this lauding and praise came after their mention. This is proven by the narration of Imam Ahmad, an Nasai, and others, radiallahu anhum, from Umm Salama radiallahu anha. And I wish we could spend one day just talking about Umm Salama. This amazing woman and the, what she went through, the difficulty in her life. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed her to be the wife of the Prophet Sallallahu who said, I asked the Prophet Sallallahu why is it that we women are not mentioned in the Quran? As men are mentioned, then one day, without me realizing it, he was calling from the member of the pulpit, and I was combing my hair. So I tied my hair back, and then I went out to my chamber in my house, and I started listening, and lo and behold, he said upon the member, O oh people, indeed, Allah the Exalted says, indeed, the Muslim men and women, and the believing men and women, the ayah that we read. This is an explicit text in which the wives of the Prophet are included in the lauding and praise in the verse, just as they are included in the honorable uh, household. And then Sayyidina Shaykh uh, goes on to talk about uh, other few things, but here's one area where he goes further on in chapter one, which we'll wrap up soon, inshallah.
Then came the noble verse, Indeed, Allah and His angels sent prayers upon the Prophet. O you who believe, sent prayers and abundant salutations upon him. This verse came after all of the aforementioned noble verses that delineated the virtues and perfections of this noble messenger. This verse came to clarify the reasons for all of those unique Muhammadan virtues والسلام, and perfections and to explain that the status of this noble Prophet وسلم, is great in the sight of Allah and that his station is magnificent. Indeed, Allah the Great and Exalted with his comprehensive name Allah that gathers all of the divine names send prayers upon this noble Prophet and the angels of Allah all send prayers upon this noble Prophet And then he goes on to say, on the meanings of sending prayers upon the Prophet Sallallahu Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala said in his rigorously authentic collection, Abu Ali radiallahu anhu said, Allah's prayer is his lauding or praising of him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the presence of the angels. And the prayer of the angels is their supplication for him. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu said, send prayers means that they send blessings to the Prophet. Imam Hafiz ibn Hajar al-Asqalani said in his Al-Fatih al-Bari and from Ibn Abi Hatim from Muqatil bin Hayyan who said Allah's prayer is his forgiveness and the angels prayer is their seeking of forgiveness. And from Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma it is stated that the Messenger of Allah uh, stated that the meaning of the Lord's prayer is mercy and the angels prayer is seeking forgiveness. And he goes on to say, that is because the prayer from Allah to his noble prophet والسلام, is continuous, enduring, and unceasing. This is proven by the words of the Most High. Indeed, Allah and his angels sent prayers upon the prophet. Because he used the verb which is yusallun. So there's continuity. And then it's, it is well known that the prayers of the Lord of the worlds upon his creation include prayers that are elite, prayers that are the elite of the elite, and prayers that are general. His prayers upon the prophets are elite and are commensurate with the rank of their prophethood. His prayers upon, upon his friends, the awliya, that are drawn near are elite and are commensurate with their rank. His prayers upon his most honored beloved and the imam and seal of the prophets and messengers, alayhi salatu wasalam, are the elite of the elite and are commensurate with his unique rank. And his prayers upon the generality of the believers are general and according to their faith. The Most High said, it is he. And that's why this is related to that ayah. Inshallah, times we're running out of time for this session. But that, this is why it's related to this ayah. Because Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, who when, in, when the previous ayah was revealed, he said, Ya Rasulullah, I've noticed a pattern. Anytime Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you a blessing, we have a portion in that blessing too. And then this ayah was revealed. He's, Allah says about us, the believers, inshallah. He says, He is the one who showers His blessings upon you. And His angels pray for you, so that He may bring you out of darkness into light. For He is ever merciful to the believers. SubhanAllah. And that's what Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq was right. That this ayah was revealed for us. So we get the blessings of sending prayers on Prophet Sallallahu One, ten from Allah. But then we have a special ayah dedicated for the believers. That Allah is saying, "Who are you who 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 are you uh, anything else. So in this case, session two will be uh, ending with a break, nasheed zin or salawat, inshallah, by my blessed brother, Ustad Mahdi, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit uh, more geared towards the rulings, the ahkam. Let me uh, find it on my side. And then, by the way, at the end of everything, we're going to do a summary of all the chapters. So inshallah, we will review everything. So, the hukum or ahkam, as we did before, we, we define the word, we try to do the plural as well. The hukum uh, means the ruling. And so the, the, the ahkam are the rulings of the sacred law. And what is fard, obligatory, one is bound to believe in and act on the obligatory. The one who denies it will fall into disbelief, and the one who leaves it is sinful. Wajib is necessary, is a, is a confirmed command 
affirmed by a text that allows the possibility of interpretation. Denying something necessary is corruption, but not disbelief, leaving it is sinful. And the only uh, usul or the only uh, legal methodology that differentiates between fard and wajib is the Hanafi school. And Sheikh Abdullah Sarraj Jadeen was a master of the Hanafi school. So he's putting it for that reason. Otherwise, in uh, other usuls, they just call the obligation as one obligation, as fard or wajib. And um, yeah, so that's why he's, he's doing that. And sunnah mu'akkada, that which our Prophet wasallam or the companions did most of the time and was not of worldly habits. Mustahab, that which our Prophet ﷺ did sometimes, and of course we know the, the last one. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. So again, we're focusing on this ayah, but now we're looking at the rulings to that regarding that ayah, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So Sayyidina Shaykh uh, starts at page 41, chapter 2. The rulings of sending prayers upon the Prophet ﷺ. Sending prayers upon the Prophet ﷺ can be obligatory, compulsory, right, fard or wajib, an emphatic sunnah, sunnah mu'akkada, or it can be recommended mustahab. And I have an exercise for all of you. I looked through the book, I couldn't find an example where he gave a sunnah mu'akkada, emphatic sunnah. Even though he mentions at the beginning, but when you look through the chapter, you don't see an example of that. So if anyone finds it, please share it with me. So Sayyidina Shaykh says, the obligation fardiya of sending prayers upon the Prophet ﷺ is established by the command mentioned in the words of the Most High. We have it here. O you who believe. O believers. This command entails obligation and since, a com and since a command does not entail repetition of what is recommended, so long as its cause is not repeated, this obligation is fulfilled when it is done once. So some of the teachers will say that as a Muslim, as soon as you're, uh, you're an adult, Try to do all of his commands once with the intention of fulfilling the obligation of that command. So say your, say your kalima. Say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Even though you inherited Islam, if, if that was the case. So that's why when the Prophet ﷺ immediately got the messengership, the prophethood, right? The first person who believed in was uh, Sayyidah Khadija, radiallahu right? But f who was the first that inherited Islam? Sayyidah Fatima Zahra, radiallahu anha, wa Immediately, as they as they became Muslim, she's she's not she's their their child, so she became Muslim automatically. But later on, of course, everyone is supposed to do it on their own. And so he's saying that ayah. As soon as you hear the ayah, say one with that intention. Say I'm fulfilling that command one time with an intention that this command came and I tried to fulfill it. So that's one of the intentions you can make. Now, as he's saying, as the as long as the cause is not repeated, then it doesn't mean that you always have to do it. So now, he goes further into that, as is the view of the Hanafis. In addition, sending prayers upon the Prophet ﷺ is obligatory at the end of the prayer according to Imam al-Shafi and others. Imam al-Nawi rahimahullah ta'ala who said, Our colleagues the Shafi'is deduced this from the words of the Most High, sent prayers in abundant salutations. Imam al-Shafi said, In this verse, Allah the Exalted made it obligatory to send prayers upon him. And the most fitting of circumstances for this obligation is... The, uh, is during the prayer. Is during the prayer. We mentioned earlier that our school's position is that sending prayers upon him is a compulsory and the final testification of the tashahud, the last one. Our colleagues cited this from Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu and his son. Now, he doesn't mention this, but uh, I have heard this from other scholars that this was the qawlul qadim. So Imam uh, uh, Shafi radiallahu who he traveled from the Hijaz and he went to Iraq. And he sat with one of the top students of Imam Abu Hanifa, Muhammad bin Hassan al-Shaybani, and he, his, he formulated his school, his methodology. But then when he we traveled to Mecca and on to away to Egypt, he, he actually revised his school, and that opinion changed. So this, uh, even they don't say that it's fard to do it in the last one. But it's like to say that the prayer is in, invalid. But the old school believed that. Even though that it's changed, let's say, right? That shows the magnificence that the prayer won't be accepted if you don't send prayer on the Prophet. Imagine that even though that he get, reached that conclusion in his older school, his older opinion, the fact that he reached that opinion shows how magnificent it is. That the prayers upon the Prophet ﷺ are an integral part of the prayer. Not only that, but he'll go into it more that we're addressing the Prophet directly. 
Assalamu alayka. And we switch the orders. Here the ayah, look at it. See, it says, Yusalluna ala nabi, and then sallu alayhi wa sallimu. Right? But in the prayer, we do the salam first, then we do the salat first. And he goes into why that's happening. Then he says on page 42, as for Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he is the, uh, the, the hub for the Hanafi school. Everything comes through him and then goes to the Prophet sallallahu Because between Sayyidina and Abu Hanifa is four people to the Prophet sallallahu He has, that's how it, it is. He used to say, there is no prayer for the person who does not send prayers upon the Prophet sallallahu within it. This was qu quoted by Al-Hafidh ibn Abdul Bar and Tamheed and others report as well. As for Abu Mas'ud al-Badri radiallahu anhu, Uthman bin Abi Shayba and others narrated with their fully connected chains to Abu Mas'ud al-Badri radiallahu anhu who said, I don't feel my prayer is complete until I send prayers upon Muhammad and upon the household of Muhammad He doesn't feel that. Ad-Dara Qutni and Abu Hafs Shaheen narrated a hadith in which the Prophet taught Ibn Mas'ud the testification and then the sending of prayers upon the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. It reads from Ibn Mas'ud who said, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, used to teach us the testification of faith said in the prayer, the tashawud, just as he would teach us a chapter from the Quran. He would say, greetings and the best of prayers to Allah, salutations of peace be upon you, O Prophet, and the mercy of Allah and His blessings. Salutations of peace be upon us and upon all, and Allah's righteous servants. I testify that there is no God but Allah, and that Muhammad is His servant and messenger. O Allah, send prayers upon Muhammad and the members of his household, just as you have sent prayers upon the household of Ibrahim. Indeed, you are the praiseworthy, the magnificent. And then it goes on to the end of it. So the tahiyyat, they learned it directly in that form. One of the proofs used to infer the obligation of sending prayers on the Prophet I mean, in the ritual prayer is the fact that the sending of salutations of peace, salam, upon him is obligatory by agreement. So the tahiyyat is obligatory, which has the salam in it. That is when the person engaged in ritual prayer says, salutations of peace be upon you. As-salamu alayka ayyuhan nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And then he goes on to mention about the recommended. You should know, may Allah teach us in you, that of the many eminent stations and ranks that Allah chose for our master Muhammad sallallahu one is that he granted him the station of general supremacy. He called it uh, a maqam siyadat al amma For that reason, the Prophet sallallahu would openly announce the station just that he would mention all of the other unique traits and stations granted to him by Allah. He would announce it in order to speak of Allah's bounties and favors upon him. The Prophet ﷺ used to say, On the day of resurrection, I shall be the leader and the spokesman of the prophets, and I shall be the possessor of their intercession, and that is not a boast. So some scholars say, why is it not a boast? Because his boasting and his pride وسلم, is in his servanthood to Allah, not in the things that he mentioned before. Speaking of the unique ranks he possessed, he would say, I am the master of the children of Adam on the day of resurrection. I am the first one for whom the grave will split open. And I am the first intercessor and the first one whose intercession, intercession shall, be, uh, shall be accepted. And then Sayyidina Shaykh Abdullah Sirajuddin says the obligation. It is obligatory to send prayers upon the Prophet when his noble name is mentioned to the one engaged in remembrance or the one listening. The scholars deduce this obligation wujub from many. The emphatic command of the Prophet to send prayers upon him. He said, وسلم, Whosoever hears mention of my name in his presence, let him send prayers upon me. And then he says the, uh, uh, regarding the severe uh, uh, threats against the one who fails to send prayers upon the Prophet وسلم, when he is mentioned. And the author goes on to prove uh, or talk about this all the way until page 56. This is stated in numerous well-known traditions that uh, th these divine threats, including the threat of distance and being remote, having dust cast upon one's face, suffering wretchedness, stinginess, and coarseness, may Allah protect us from that, uh, all for the one who does not send prayers upon the Prophet when he is mentioned. Other threats include the danger that the path of paradise will, will pass him by and Allah's refuge is sought uh, so, yeah, that he goes on to talk about that. The scholars deduce that it is an obligation to send prayers upon him from these aforementioned hadiths and others. The scholars uh, say uh, it is an obligation to send prayers upon him when he is mentioned. So he goes on to that. Now, again, he, this is a thing where um, 
we need to talk about a difference, right? The scholars disagreed regarding the obligation to send Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam each time he is mentioned. And the position of the Hanafi official school of the position of the Hanafi school is that it is recommended to repeat the sending of prayers upon him, alayhi salatu wasalam, when his name is repeated in a single gathering. That is, it is obligatory to do it once, though it is recommended to repeat it. And at Durr al Imam al Haskafi, rahimullah ta'ala, said, and this is the official position given as a legal verdict. Wa alayhi al fatwa. So that makes it easy, alhamdulillah, because you see, look at our Prophet He says about the maswak, which is a swak, right? The tooth stick. He says, Lawla an ashukka ala ummati la amartuhum siwak. He said, if it wasn't difficult for them, then I would have commanded them to it. Think about that. He, on a simple thing, he, want, he doesn't want to burden us, sallallahu alayhi wa Imagine all these other things that he want to burden us. No, it has to come from the heart. It has to come with love if you want to do it. But if you do it once in a gathering, alhamdulillah, you got the blessings. And you fulfilled that command. Here's the recommendation. Sending prayers upon the Prophet after the call to prayer, the adhan, which is, I think, a lot of people I miss. I hear the people do the adhan, and then they say, Allahumma rabba adhi dawati tamma. But it's recommended you do the, the salawat first, then you do the Allahumma rabba adhi dawati tamma. Another is sending prayers upon the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, at the beginning, middle, and end of supplications. Sending prayers upon the Prophet ﷺ when entering and exiting the mosque. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa ala Sayyidina Rasulullah, Allah maftah li abba rahmatik. And, and so on. Sending prayers upon the Prophet ﷺ when a Muslim meets his fellow Muslim. And this is amazing, this is a narration very rarely from Sayyidah Fatima Zahra radiallahu anha. Where she said, when the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu would enter the mosque, he would say in the name of Allah, may salutations be upon the Messenger of Allah. Oh Allah, forgive me my sins and open for me the doors of your mercy. Allah maghfirli dhanbi wa aftahli abab rahmatik. And when he would exit, he would say in the name of Allah, may salutations be upon the Messenger of Allah. Oh Allah, forgive my sins and open for me the doors of your bounty, the fadl. And that fadl is in Surah Jum'ah. So when you read the Surah Jum'ah at the end of it, فَإِذَا قُضِيَةُ الصَّلَاةُ فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَابْتَهُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ This fadl, the bounty of Allah. So look into that ayah when you have time, inshallah. Sending prayers upon the Prophet ﷺ when gathering together with others in a sitting, like we're doing now. We started off with salawat. Sending prayers uh, uh, when writing his noble name. This was a thing that I was taught 20 years ago from my teacher. He said, every time you have a book or something, find a corner, write salawat on the Prophet. Why? He said, because Imam al-Tabarani narrated from Abu Hurairah radiallahu who said, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, whosoever sends prayers upon me in a book, the angels will continue to seek his forgiveness so long as my name is in this book. And so I did mine like this. I always write in the corners there. Allahumma salli wa sallim baraka ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Any salawat you love that you know, comes to heart. So your whole book is full of salawat by the end of it. The next one he gives as an example, that was six so far. Seventh one, uh, um, sending prayers upon the Prophet وسلم, with all good words and matters of concern. Everything that we're doing, you know, salawat is, is, becomes a part of it. Sending prayers upon the Prophet وسلم, when beginning a sermon or exhortation or when disseminating sacred knowledge, especially when reading the noble prophetic hadith reports. Sending prayers upon the Prophet at, at both ends of the day. And this is amazing because if you do wear the latif, in the morning you do 10 and at night you do 10. Khalas, you have it all taken care of there. Because the Prophet ﷺ said in the narration of Sayyidina Abu Darda, whoever sends prayers upon me ten times when he enters the morning and ten times when he enters the evening, my intercession will include him on the day of judgment. SubhanAllah. We have the intercession of the Prophet ﷺ. Sending prayers upon the Prophet ﷺ when retri retri retiring to sleep and when suffering from insomnia. Abu Qirus uh, Safa radiallahu anhu said, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, whosoever retires to his bed and then reads, blessed tabarak alladhi biyadihil mulk, and then says four times, O oh Allah, Lord of the lawful and unlawful, Lord of the pillar and the pr prayer place, maqam, Lord of the sacred precinct, by the right of every verse revealed to, uh, by you in the month of Ramadan, convey greetings and salutations to the spirit of Muhammad. Allah will entrust two angels to look after him until they come to Muhammad and say to him, Verily so and so sends you greetings of peace and mercy from Allah. And I say, Greetings of peace, mercy, and blessings from Allah upon so and so, the son of so and so. 
Subhanallah. That's amazing. Subhanallah. Yeah, th th there's so many like this. Allah. The 11th one is when walking in the middle of the night. He has that. When one's ears begin to ring. He says that what you should say is say Muhammadur Rasulullah and then say salawat. This is on page uh, 80 and 81 for anyone referring back to it. Sending prayers upon the Prophet when forgetting what to say. Everyone does this name. They're, they're trying to say, oh, Allahumma salli ala say no. Then subhanAllah they remember it. Sending prayers upon the Prophet والسلام, at the end of the prayers. Salat al maktuba which we do. Um, when finishing a complete recitation of the Quran al kareem Inshallah, for the day of Arafah, we're doing a khatm of Quran, and at the end, we'll do istighfar and salawat on the Nabi Sending prayers upon the Prophet during times of stress, tribulations, and difficulty. This is the Ummah, this is, this is the state of the Ummah now. We should be in salawat. Sending prayers upon the Prophet when praying with the supplication of need, salat al hajjah When a man proposes to a woman in marriage, they should do that. Everything. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His name is وَشَقَّ لَهُ مِنْ إِسْمِهِ لِيُجِلْ لَهُ فَذُ الْعَرْشِ مَحْمُودٌ وَهَذَا مُحَمَّدُ The scholars, they say that it's as if Allah took his name Mahmud and then from that name, he derived the name Muhammad. Spell out Mahmud. And you see the name Muhammad is in that. And you spell the name Ahmad and you see Ahad in it. Ah. So this, all these things are there, subhanAllah, because Allah loves them so much. Sending prayers upon the Prophet ﷺ on the day and night of Jummah. We know this. This is, a, this is like practice of everyone is now getting into it. Alhamdulillah, may Allah spread it all over. So that's, that's uh, there's a 20th one. When fulfilling the rites of Hajj and Umrah. Then he goes on. And he, there's one story in here that I'll uh, bring to your attention. There's a, a related to that. Um, Allahumma salli alayhi. Maybe it'll come back to me. Um, but alhamdulillah, that covers uh, chapter one and two. So alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept. We have a small break. Um, yeah, please don't be shy. You have questions, things like that. Before we start the next session, we can answer it. But alhamdulillah, we're on page 97 now. وصلى الله على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين حبيب القلب نعم السلام عليكم in the prayer in the صلاة المكتوبة uh, so th this question was in terms of the uh, the prayer, uh, the the formal prayer. If you're inside the prayer, formal prayer, and the name of the Prophet ﷺ is mentioned, can you send prayers upon him? From what I learned in the Hanafi school, you cannot, but in other schools they allow it. I've heard in the Shafi school they allow it. Um, but there's something we can look into for you, inshallah. We can look into it to make sure that that's what it is. Um, but yeah, generally uh, your heart feels it. But your tongue is supposed to only be, you know, for the formal prayer, it's just only the things that are allowed in the prayer. So that's a good question. Yes. It would make, yeah, exactly. So this goes back to uh, the uh, the methodology of the the, uh, the scholars of a legal uh, and sacred law, right? That's how they arrive at the conclusions that says, oh, was this something that we can do, or is this something that we can't do, or is this something that was done for some time and then stopped? We we have to know that. So that that goes back to usul. And I wish we can have so many more things where we have scholars of usul to teach these things more so we can appreciate how they arrived at these conclusions. So that's the, that's the beauty of it. And that's one of the reasons that um, you have the four schools, the dominant ones, because they use the, their usul. The, it's their human attempt, their best attempt at to trying to de deduce what is the ruling of Allah for that. Does it allow it, doesn't allow it, right? And that's the beauty of it because let's say imagine a book came and told us everything, right? All the answers were there. Then the human endeavor would be cut off. 
and Allah wants to uh, allow us to shine. So imagine, look what this ummah did and their love of Allah, the love of the law, love of the spirit of the law, love of spirituality, love of the uh, outward form. All of the things in Islam is beautiful. So that the scholars, they worked on all of these things. Allah gave us these amazing, it's as if He's given these amazing projects. Go work on them and show the world how you engage with my word, how you engage with the words of my prophet, how you, you, you brought to life these, uh, these, uh, these forms that I gave you. Imagine just the prayer of the Prophet ﷺ that they worked so much on to try to deduce everything, to get it all perfectly right. That he did this. The Shammai, look how, how they dis describe the Prophet ﷺ. It's amazing. I feel that for me, that's the part that Allah is allowing us to shine. He's allowing us to say, look at this, that amazing ummah. That they love this so much that they spent all their times perfecting every aspect of it. So that's, that's one thing. But inshallah, it's a good question. Uh, two questions. Inshallah, we can um, remind me, okay? Jazakallah khair. Sidi Mahdi, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Yes. They say that the, the mind is, is as if it could speak, it's saying, Give me knowledge. But the spirit is giving nasheeds. So now our spirits need nasheeds. I won't say, Mashallah. Alhamdulillah.
So in these sessions with uh, Sidna Tariq, <laughs> Alhamdulillah, it's beautiful to see the fusion of, of love and knowledge. Say mashallah. It's a, it's a, a unique offering that uh, it's very exciting in, this, in these moments, in this initial moment. Alhamdulillah. But one of the things we want to achieve today is we want to all of us learn and memorize, inshallah, the one specific salawat formula, sira, which is the which is the salawat as sirajiya. Okay, the salawat by this author. So this author, uh, Sheikh Abdullah Sirajuddin from Halab, uh, may Allah have mercy on him. Say Amin. So he uh, he he wrote this beautiful salawat, and inshallah, by the end of today. You'll have it memorized, inshallah. and inshallah you'll incorporate it in your life. And this is one of the gifts that we're receiving today. And so we'll say it in every in every break. We'll say it a few times, inshallah. inshallah. And it's a it's a beautiful, beautiful sirah. It's a beautiful sirah. Open open doors and closed doors, and then a verse from the Quran. Inshallah. Because the best dhikr is the is the Quran. Inshallah. And so the sirah from the Sheikh Sheikh Abdullah Sirajuddin includes the Quran. Inshallah. So how amazing! And so it's open doors, closed doors, and verse from the Qur'an. So inshallah, we'll do it a few times, inshallah, just to practice it. And by the end of, by the end of today, you'll have it memorized, you'll teach it to your kids, you'll practice it on Fridays, you'll practice it when you're walking at night, and when your ears ring. Say so, amin. Uh, this was amazing. I mean, this, the, the access to this knowledge from teachers. Teachers bring book, books to life, and they're the keys, they're the miftah. So inshallah, we'll say it a few times together, and then Sidi Tariq, inshallah, will... If, if he sees appropriate and the time is, is, is befitting, then he can expand on some of the meanings of this, inshallah. So say it, say it with me, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim taslima. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim taslima. صلاة تفتح لنا صلاة تفتح لنا أبواب الرضا والتيسير أبواب الرضا والتيسير وتغلق بها وتغلق بها أبواب الشر والتعسير أبواب الشر والتعسير أنت مولانا أنت مولانا فنعم المولى ونعم النصير فنعم المولى ونعم النصير Two more times. صلاة تفتح لنا صلاة تفتح لنا أبواب الرضا والتيسير وتغلق بها وتغلق بها أبواب الشر والتحسير أبواب الشر والتحسير أنت مولانا أنت مولانا فنعم المولى ونعم النصير فنعم المولى ونعم النصير So you open the doors of rida of your being pleased with us and تحسير and ease and you close the doors of شر of evilness and difficulty أنت مولانا you are our protector, our master. You are our protector. What an amazing protector. And what an amazing one who gives us victory. Inshallah, one more time. Allahumma bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim taslima. Salatan taftahu lana abwaab ar-rida wa taysir. وتغلق بها أبواب الشر والتحسير أنت مولانا فنعم المولى ونعم النصير Okay, you heard it three times. Who memorizes poetry when they hear it three times? <laughs> Who, anyone? The last three lines. Who memorized it? Bismillah. Anyone can try it? Huh? Anyone want to try? Bismillah. صلاة تفتح لنا أبواب الرضا والتيسير وتغلق بها أبواب الشر والتعسير أنت مولانا فنعم المولى ونعم النصير الحمد لله إن شاء الله we'll we'll come back to it سيدي how are we doing on time الحمد لله الحمد لله okay so if we go back to the um, if we go back to the beginning uh, we, this is for the people that uh, didn't catch this part. If you want, you can take a, a screenshot of this uh, or yes. can take a pic. We passed that. Okay. 
Okay, so we, um, well, the main thing is we're going to try to finish everything by 12.30, inshallah. Um, but so far we've cha covered chapter 1 and 2. We had a break and now we'll do two, uh, 3 and 4. And 3 and 4 are actually the shortest chapters in the book. And this is a beautiful praise of the Prophet ﷺ that was written by Imam Juzay al kalbi He was an Andalusian scholar from... Uh, from the days when uh, southern Spain was Muslim. Radiallahu anhu. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. So, that, remember we, we read that if you write the prayer on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in your book, if you have it, this is the chance. If you didn't write it, write something. Allahumma salli wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad or whatever salawat you want to write, inshallah. One of our uh, brothers, he's uh, requested that we make dua uh, for, please make dua for my father who is in the ICU today. SubhanAllah. Al-Fatiha ila hadrati Nabi Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wallahu fi a'awna al-abd ma kana al-abdu fi a'awni akhi. Allah is in the assistance of his servant as long as the servant is in the assistance of his brother or sister. And someone asks us, Dua, we, we try to do something for them. Oh, SubhanAllah. That's the, uh, the aid of Allah. So if you ha haven't done that exercise, that's something to do. And then you can teach it to others. Please share it. It's amazing. Hadith Imam al Tabarani narrates it. Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We're going to start chapter 3. Um, we talked about Fada'il. Uh, and then Fawa'id is the, the, the similar word. So chapter 3 was going to be on the virtues of the prayer on the Prophet ﷺ. Chapter 4 is a warning to those who neglect it. And it was already uh, touched upon in chapter 2 from page 48 to uh, 56. So Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, uh, chapter 3 is going to be on page 97. The author Rahimullah Ta'ala says, The virtues of sending prayers upon the Prophet ﷺ are many. The pen is incapable of enumerating them, and books are unable to delineate them. Here we shall mention some in brief. Allah sends pr ten prayers upon the person who sends one prayer upon the Prophet ﷺ. Imam Muslim rahimahullah ta'ala and the compilers of the Sunan collections reported from Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu that the Messenger of Allah wasallam said, Whosoever sends one prayer upon me, Allah shall send down send ten prayers upon him. And then he says, the, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam, uh, our Master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is related from Anas that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he who sends prayers upon me, his prayers will reach me and I will send prayers upon him. And besides that, there shall be written for him ten good deeds. The angels... Uh, of Allah Most High sent prayers upon the Prophet ﷺ. It is narrated from Anas, the Messenger of Allah ﷺ said, Send abundant prayers upon me on Friday, for Jibreel salam came to me just now from his Lord who said, There is no Muslim upon the earth who sends one prayer upon you except that I and my angels will send ten prayers upon him. Number four, on the virtues. The one who sends prayers upon the Prophet ﷺ will have his levels, his degree raised, his good deeds increased, and his bad deeds effaced. Imam al Nasai in Tabarani rahimullah narrated from Abu Burda bin Nayyar radiallahu anhu, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, Whosoever of my ummah sends a prayer upon me sincerely from his heart, Allah shall send ten prayers upon him on account of it, on account of it and he will raise him ten degrees. Write for him ten good deeds, and efface for him ten bad deeds. Then the Imam goes on in, on page 100. Those aforementioned hadith reports inform us that Allah sends ten prayers upon the one who sends a single prayer upon his Prophet ﷺ, and that Allah's mention of the servant is greater than multiplied good deeds. For just as Allah did not make the reward of remembering him anything save his mentioning of the person, Subhanallah. Fadkuruni adhkurkum. Allah says, remember me. I'm, Subhanallah, what more reward do you want? That Allah will mention you. So he's saying that the fact that you're receiving, you're sending salawat on the Prophet ﷺ and Allah is sending you something back, that is a, an amazing. For just as Allah did not make the reward of remembering him anything save his mentioning of the person, 
And if he mentions me in himself, I mention him in myself. And if he mentions me in a gathering, I mention him in a gathering much better than this or than his. Similarly, he made it the same reward for mentioning his beloved Wasallam. So whosoever sends upon Allah's beloved, Allah shall send him, uh, mention him with his mercy and praise and honor and kindness. The Eurydite Sheikh Burhan al-Din bin Abi Sharif rahimullah ta'ala said, Whosoever ponders and meditates deeply, the messengers of delight come upon him with the gifts bestowed upon him by his master, subhanahu wa ta'ala, gifts of goodness and happiness. Oh, what splendid th tidings that penetrate the paths. How can the prayer of the servant be any way compared to the prayer of the king and the owner? How can there be any comparison when the servant sends one prayer upon the Prophet and Allah the Exalted sends ten prayers? Oh, what manifold rewards and immense recompense his master bestows upon him. Like I mentioned in the uh, chapter one, this was all by Allah's invitation. If Allah didn't want to, he wouldn't have said the second part. He would just informed us of the khabar. Inna Allahu malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Period. But then Allah invited us, welcomed us to do this. And look at the rewards that He's giving us. It is related from Anas radiallahu anhu, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, There is no servant who remembers me and then sends prayers upon me, except that Allah will write for him ten rewards, efface for him ten sins, and raise him in ten degrees. This, this, to me, this is not repetition, even though it sounds like it. This shows that so many people knew about this, and they're all narrating it. You see, this was important in their lives. Implicit in the tremendous rewards, huge recompense, and manifold prayers and salutations upon the one who sends prayers upon the Prophet والسلام, is Allah's immense honor for his beloved and declaration of his virtue over the rest of the prophets and messengers. When Jibreel السلام, informed the Prophet of that, he prostrated out of gratitude to Allah for this unique gift and lofty position. The one who sends prayers upon the Prophet والسلام, shall have a reward that is equivalent to freeing ten bondsmen for the sake of Allah. SubhanAllah, in a time where you know many people cannot even free a slave, imagine you, you have the reward of freeing ten of them. It is related from Bara bin Azib radiallahu anhu that the Prophet والسلام, said, Whosoever sends one prayer upon me, Allah will write for him ten good deeds, efface ten sins, and will raise him ten degrees, and they will be equivalent to freeing ten bondsmen. Sending prayers on the Prophet والسلام, is a cause for the forgiveness of sins, and that is commensurate with a believer's faith and his love and sincerity in his prayers upon the Prophet والسلام. See, the love is important, because there's this family that when their kids reach uh, adulthood, they have a prayer on the Prophet ﷺ that they give to their children. And when they do that, that night they see the Prophet ﷺ. And the son, one of the sons, he, he was gifted that. And he wasn't seeing the Prophet ﷺ. And he came to him that after so many, that, no, it's not happening. He said, you're not doing it with love. You have to do it with love. That he's the beloved of Allah. That you, you have to know the Prophet. Knowing, his, knowing him is to love him. So after he did it with love, then he saw the Prophet ﷺ. This was the sixth virtue we're, we're on now. Ibn, Ibn Abi Asim in Tabarani reported from Abu Khalil who said, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said to me, O Abu Khalil, or, uh, Allah, Astaghfirullah, Abu Kahil, Kahil, whoever sends three prayers upon me each day and night out of love and longing for me, it is a right upon Allah that he forgive him his sins for that night and day. This was mentioned by Al-Mundhiri, Imam Al-Mundhiri, Allah. With the wording, it was reported and it was mentioned in Jala Al-Afham with its chain. So we have an amazing scholar of Sheikh Abdullah Sarajini's caliber. He gives you all these gems from all these books because he's Muhaddith Al-Hafidh, radiallahu anhu arda. The seventh virtue, the prayer is sent upon the Prophet sallallahu seeks forgiveness for its companion. It is reported on the authority of Aisha radiallahu anha who said, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi said, There is no servant who sends a prayer upon me save an angel comes out on account of it until he brings it to the All-Merciful and our Lord, blessed and exalted as he says, Take it to the grave of my servant so that it, it may seek forgiveness for its companion and bring coolness to his eyes. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi will intercede for the one who sends prayers upon him. Ibn Abi Dawood reported from Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, very rare again to get a narration from Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq. We got one from Sayyidina Fatima al-Zahra radiallahu anha, who said, I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa say in the farewell sermon, indeed Allah does away with your sins when forgiveness is sought. 
So whosoever seeks forgiveness with a true intention will be forgiven. And whosoever says there is no God but Allah will have his scale made preponderant. That is, his good deeds will outweigh his bad deeds. And whosoever sends prayers upon me, I shall be his intercessor on the day of his intersection and resurrection. Number nine, a prayers upon the Prophet repel poverty and outpour goodness and blessings. This is mentioned in multiple routes of transmission with numerous chains that strengthen each other. Abu Nu'aym reported from Samara bin Jundub radiallahu anhu said, A man came to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa and said, Ya Rasulullah, what are the closest actions to Allah the Exalted? He replied, True speech and faithful rendering of trust. I said, Ya Rasulullah, tell us more. He said, Night prayer and fasting during the hot midday. I said, Ya Rasulullah, tell us more. He said, Abundant remembrance and prayers upon me repel poverty. I said, Ya Rasulullah, tell us more. He said, He who leads others in prayers might, must lighten it. For among you are the elderly, the sick, the weak, and those with needs. SubhanAllah. This rahmah. You know, it's like that's when you, you think about it that in the haram sometimes you're praying and the, the kids are crying so much. But they're just, you know, I don't know what's happening, but the prayers are longer and there's so many people think. But the, if you think about it, it could be shorter. Just to get, give the thing and the, this, this command of the Prophet system to lighten it, make it easy for people. The tenth virtue, whosoever persists in sending prayers upon the Prophet والسلام, will be the closest of people to him. At tirmidhi rahimahullah ta'ala reported from Anas radiallahu anhu in a narration he, he declared authentic that the Prophet وسلم, said, the closest people to me on the day of resurrection shall be those who send the most prayers upon me. Ibn Hibban said in, his, in, his, said, in this hadith report there is proof that the most important, that is the closest people to the Messenger of Allah وسلم, on the day of resurrection shall be the scholars of, of hadith. For there are none in this ummah who send more prayers upon him than they. And maybe at that time you know that was what was true. But now if, if there's more lay people and not as many scholars, there's an amazing amount of people that are sending salawat. Right? There's people that send salawat in the thousands a day. Right? And then out of the mercy of Allah Ta'ala, there's people that one salawat can equal so many thousands. So there's, there's all these favors of Allah. Every time it becomes difficult, Allah sends mercy. Allah sends ease. Allah sends so many blessings. And if we want to maximize our salawat, always start it with Quran recitation first. Then do salawat. And if you can't recite a lot of Quran, do one ayah. لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولُ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ The last two ayahs of, of Surah Tawbah, number nine. And then do inna atayna kal kawthar, and then start salawat. Our teachers say that instead of you longing for the Prophet, if you do it this way, the Prophet will long for you. His heart will long for you, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because we read in the previous tradition, right? He said that the angel will say, This prayer came from so and so, the son or daughter of so and so. That means the Prophet will know you, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You he will you will, will be known to him, khalas. He will know you. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he, he, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Bahru Safa and Bahru Al Wafa. He is the ocean of purity and the ocean of loyalty. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You never forget anybody. And then the eleventh one, the last one on this one, uh, prayers upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam reached the sender and his or his or her children and grandchildren. It is reported by from Hudayfa radiallahu who said the benefits of sending prayers upon the Prophet والسلام, reach the sender, his child, and his grandchild. O Allah, send prayers and salutations upon our Master Muhammad as you commanded us to send prayers upon him, and as you love that prayer, uh, prayers be sent upon him, and as he loves that prayers be sent upon him, and as he deserves with you and upon his household and companions, and as uh, and us along with them. Now here's the shortest chapter, number four. A warning to those who uh, attend gatherings from neglecting to send prayers on the Prophet ﷺ. He uses the word yambaghi. He's saying it is imperative that no one sitting in a gathering leaves before remembering Allah and sending prayers upon his messenger ﷺ. Whosoever neglects that will experience severe regret for that, for that gathering on the day of resurrection. There will be a hasra. There will be a regret. Oh, I wish that I would have not done that. Oh, well, I wish that I would have made a dhikr and then the whole gathering becomes expiated. Any mistakes in it would become expiated. Abu Huraira reported that the Prophet ﷺ said, no people sit in a gathering while, fa while failing to remember Allah or sending prayers upon their Prophet therein except that they will have a regret and reckoning. 
If he Allah, if he Allah wills, he may punish them, and if he wills, he may forgive them. So they fall into the Mashiach. They fall into uh, if Allah wants to or not. So it's better to do it. So as soon as you know finishing a gathering or you're in the middle of gathering, ha do some dhikr. Subhanakallahumma ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. That's one of the duas. There's many others. And then you say durud sharif or salawat on the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And then bismillah, you leave. So right now we're sp we're we're, we're going to be wrapping up chapter uh, four, and then our reflection session will inshallah begin. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu said, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, no people sit in a gathering while failing to remember Allah or send prayers upon me, except that it will be a source of severe regret for them on the day of resurrection, even if they enter paradise with reward. Ibn Hajar al-Haytami radiallahu anhu, so we have Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani and we have Haytami radiallahu anhu said, they will experience severe regret at the plains of divine judgment for having negle neglected to send prayers upon the Prophet And if you think about it, right, is, is it a burden? No, it's just a state of mind. All it is is a state of mind. We just have to open up our, our awareness to that. Because it's so simple. Allahumma salli wa sallam baraka Sayyidina Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Sallallahu ala Muhammad. I mean, subhanAllah, it's the easiest thing. But if our mind is not there, we don't have a practice of keeping a subha, then dhikr is not something that we're consciously doing. So we have to go into that mindset, the salawat mindset. The growth mindset is amazing, but the salawat mindset is even better than that. That all your whole life revolves around prayers on the Prophet I mean, look at the rewards. Look at the rewards. Allah loves you. The, all these amazing angels are sending your names. SubhanAllah, one message comes and your name is in it, you're happy. Right? From a beloved. Imagine these notifications are be sent by angels to the Prophet ﷺ. And he knows you by name. Says, this message came, this message came. And nothing gets lost in his message to Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Like the ama most amazing angelic technology ever. No message will get dropped. Nothing will be lost. No system can ever match it. And he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Bahru Safa, Bahru Al Wafa. Wasallam. We're gifted with this, so it's easy. Nothing that this, this deen brought is hard. Everything is yusr, 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 Allah. Al-Hakim, radiallahu anhu, reported from Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhu, the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, there are no people who get up from a gathering in which they fail to engage in Allah's remembrance or send prayers upon the Prophet, alayhi salatu wa except that they stand up from the most putrid of carcasses. It's like a dead flesh. It is a recommended sunnah for all who are uh, seated in a gathering. See, here we go. I think we found the answer. The Sunnah Makkah that was not in that chapter, it came out in chapter uh, 4. Okay, so I'll have to look up the Arabic to make sure that that's what the Shaykh said. It is a recommended Sunnah for all who are seated in a gathering to occasionally remember Allah with glorifications or praises or exaltations or by seeking forgiveness, etc. And to send prayers upon the Prophet wasallam too. It is a highly recommended it is highly recommended to especially remember Allah and to send prayers upon the Prophet والسلام, when one desires to depart from a gathering. The Imam al-Munawi, the Eurydite scholar Imam al-Munawi said, it is highly emphasized to remember Allah and to send prayers upon the Messenger of Allah وسلم, when there is desire to leave a gathering. The sunnah practice of remembrance and sending prayers is achieved by any wording there is. However, in the remembrance, it is more complete to say, Glorified are you, O Allah. To you is all praise. I bear witness that there is no God but you. I seek your forgiveness and repent to you. That is due to the hadith report mentioning this wording. And for sending prayers upon the Prophet, والسلام, it is more complete to say what is found at the end of the testification of faith said in the prayer, the Ibrahimi Salat. So Shaykh Abdullah Sirajuddin is narrating Imam al munawi saying, do that, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika, ashadu an la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk, and then Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad, or Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad, to the end of Salat al-Ibrahimiyya. And that concludes uh, chapter 4, so we're on chapter 5 next, inshallah, but now we have a, a session for some tafakkur, inshallah. And Allah says about tafakkur, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Imran, Ayah 191, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار Those who remember Allah standing, sitting and lying on their sides and reflect 
on the creation of the heavens and the earth and say, Our Lord, you have not created this in vain. Immaculate are you. Save us from the punishment of the fire. And a narration says from the Prophet Sallallahu that uh, it says, تَفَكُّرُ سَاعَةٍ خَيْرٌ مِّنْ عِبَادَةِ سِتِّينَ سَنَةٍ and, and that a moment or an hour of reflection is far superior than 60 years of voluntary worship. And that's another blessing of reading and studying together. Because we're, we're reading, we're learning, and we're reflecting as all of it. So imagine all that khair that's happening in one gathering. SubhanAllah. You can never do that by yourself. SubhanAllah. You know, the, the blessings are higher and more, the, more awareness is happening when we're all together. And we know that the angels are here. For all the words of the Prophet ﷺ told us that when you're in the gatherings of dhikr and remembrance and study, the angels envelope them and encircle them. And, and the Allah SWT is pleased with their gathering. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. alaykum. Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sidi Tariq uh, shared in the beginning, he said, he said, we are a spiritual being having a human experience instead of being a human being having a spiritual experience. Let's take a moment to just actually soak that in. Each of us is a spiritual being. And we're only having a human experience while we live here on, planet, on this planet. But we're a spiritual being. We're, gonna, we're a spiritual before and after this human experience. And so it's the body and the spirit that we're composed of. And so this tefekkur exercise, contemplation, reflection, we want to jump into that spirit and pause the body for a moment. We want to forget the humanness to the extent possible and go into the spirit, to the heart, to the extent possible. And I'm, I'm glad that Sidi Tariq is incorporating this because, you know, as we, as we, in the Muslim community, we are we're often taught the various means of worship um, is you know prayer and fasting and charity uh, and and dhikr and and service, but there's there's a, a a very it's a large component of one of the ways of worshiping God is tafakkur. Can everyone say that on your tongue? One more time. Tafakkur. One more time. Good. And it has that. You know, that shadda where it, 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 it takes a moment, tafakkur, you know, and, and so we have to, and tafakkur is this, con, this contemplative exercise. And so, مَا نَفَعَ الْقَلْبُ مِثْلَ عُزْلَةٍ تَدْخُلُ بِهَا مِدَانَ فِكْرَةٍ Nothing benefits the heart like being isolated and entering into one idea. Nothing benefits the heart. So we're talking about we want to have a tefekkur reflective exercise right now. And it's going to be a guided reflection meditation exercise. But the idea is that we want to enter the heart. Like Sidi Tariq put the hadith. And have this moment of reflection which can be greater than 60 years of worship. And so we want to actually have this. And we don't know which moment is going to be our moment of enlightenment. We don't know which one of our moment is going to be a moment of opening. Our, we don't know which moment is going to be our moment of ma'rifah. It might be today. It might be sitting in this room. As you, as each of us, as you connect with God and connect with Allah and are di directly with Allah, it might be your opening. Right? And so, مِثْلَ عُزْلَةٍ تَدْخُلُ بِهَا مِدَانَ فِكْرَةٍ So, as we do this reflective exercise, inshallah, and it's not going to be 30 minutes. It's just going to be a few minutes, even a few seconds, right? And it's just to, to taste this tefekkur exercises. And for any teachers here that you teach Sunday school, Saturday school, or Islamic studies, uh, I encourage you to practice this with your students. That if you meet your students 30 times a year, they should have 30 tefekkur exercises. And each one should be 60 seconds. That's it. And each one can be about a different concept or a different notion. But all of a sudden, after 30 times, now they've been trained into tafakkur, right? Into tafakkur, into this contemplation and learning how to 
Turn off the world and be with the creator of the world. Turn off the body and turn on the heart. And we can do that in a sea of people. In an ocean of people, we can do that. We can be alone with Allah in an ocean of people. And nobody knows. Nobody knows how intense or how the passion that we're having in that moment. And all they see is this little soft smile like Sidi Tariq's smile. <laughs> Everyone say, MashaAllah. I'm enjoying his teachings, but that little soft smile, mashallah. I'm wondering from where he got it, but it's beautiful. Mashallah. 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 May this be a beautiful, beautiful beginning for circles of light. Say Ameen. So we're going to do this uh, simple reflect, reflection exercise, inshallah. And we're going to review the Salat al Um And we're going to open it up for your reflections. So after we do this exercise, Everyone has to share something, right? Inshallah. Everyone, you know, share how was that, where'd you go? You know, maybe you can say, you know, I was just thinking about lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about the carpet. Or you can say something else. You can say whatever you want, but everyone share it because we're in this circle together with the angels, the circle. It's called the circle, circles of light. And you're part of that light. And your light will carry the secrets and the heart. And so bring your light into the group and share it with others, inshallah. And then we'll do the Salat al-Sirajiyah and no one is allowed to go home until you memorize it. <laughs> inshallah today. So Bismillah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alayhi wa sallam. So Bismillah. Let your eyes close. Forget that there's anyone in this room. Stillness of body allows the heart to wake up. Let your shoulders be loose. Be with Allah. Allah is looking at you. Seeing you, proud of you, inshallah. Boasting to the angels about you. Remember that you are a spirit. You're only riding in this body. as you are alone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I want you to think of the hadith that our teacher shared with us when they asked the Prophet وسلم, when were you a prophet and he replied when Adam alayhi salam was between the mud and the clay and let your thoughts go around that for a moment and now let your thoughts take you to the birth of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the light and the light that was witnessed by our Blessed Mother Amina In that moment and what that light means for you and me and for the world and for humanity and now I want you to imagine what we learned today when you send one salawat that same light when Adam السلام, was between mud and clay and that same light that was emitted born into this world and then when you do one salawat Allah does ten sends ten to you so you are removed from darkness into light ten times and I want you to 
dig deep and imagine that. I want you to imagine light filling your body. Nothing else matters. No one else matters. Everything is, else is irrelevant. The world has vanished. Imagine your heart being filled, light filling your heart, light filling your body, light filling your fingers, light filling your eyes, light filling your ears. So whatever I may have done to bring some darkness or sins that they're being effaced and erased and illuminated, I want you to imagine that. I want you to imagine yourself walking with light. I want you to imagine yourself reflecting that light, radiating that light. Imagine it. Now I want you finally to imagine yourself inviting the Messenger of God, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to visit you. How you yearn for him with shok. How you yearn. Imagine inviting him to your dreams. Invite him. He doesn't reject an invitation. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And imagine he accepts your invitation. And when he comes, he smiles. And you see that smile. And your whole state melts because of that smile. And you feel safe. You feel you have everything and you need nothing. Because of that smile. A smile of wisdom, a smile of love, a smile of care, a smile of protection, a smile of gentleness and kindness. And I want you finally to imagine anything you've learned about the features of our Prophet وسلم, his blessed hair, his blessed cheeks, his blessed neck, his strong statue, his blessed turban, his hair that was black and wavy with olive oil, and his large forehead, his wide forehead وسلم, his beautiful teeth, a small little space with light being emitted, large hands and features and strong arms and joints. And wherever he was, he always seemed taller. Even though he was the perfect balance, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he arrived, he came, he accepted your invitation. Who am I that he came? He accepted my invitation. And feel the yearning and the longing and how we yearn to see him at his fount, the howled on the day of judgments. And how we will drink from his hand and sit next to him because we followed him, because we knew him and we loved him and we followed him. And imagine walking through the doors of paradise with him because the paradise doors only open for him. And when all, every human being is desperate. And the day of judgment is not starting. And then he goes into that blessed prostration. And I'll take care of it. I got you. I got you. And then he has the shafa'a, the intercession. He knocks on the door of paradise and it only opens for him. And he's scared to sit on his pulpit because he's scared to go to heaven before taking us. Salallahu.
and in this last minute, go wherever you want to go. Alone, no one else is with you. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Gently let yourself back into your body. Spiritual being, having a human experience, come back gently into this room, back into this moment, back into this program, back with our teacher, back with each other, back as servants of Allah, back as an ummah, back as a community. Sometimes we need to be alone, sometimes we need to be with the ummah. <laughs> And both are beautiful. But whether we're alone or with the Ummah or with Allah, <laughs> always. So welcome back. Come on back. This is a, this is a meditation. Our, our teachers, sometimes they do a daily death meditation. A daily death meditation. They imagine the, the tiny little steps. And, you know, there are actually chapters that talk about the details of how to do in our, in, our, in our civilization, Islamic books, of how you imagine the process of the, of the janazah and going into the grave and, and all these things and how what happened to my dreams and, and all these things and my aspirations and my ambitions and what happened to my... And then you just... So it's the daily death meditation because it's actually medicine. It's actually medicine and it brings us happiness and joy brings us happiness and joy because then our problems melt away. The dunya problems melt away because when you zoom out, problems shrink. When you zoom out with time and space, your problems shrink. Why are problems so big? Because we're zoomed in. And so we're zoomed in, that's all we're thinking about. So when you zoom out, time and space, the problem shrinks. Whatever the problem is, no matter what it is, it shrinks with that. And so that's the, one of the benefits of these tafakkur exercises. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. So uh, now, opening, opening up the floor, we'd like a few people to share. Please be generous. They say uh, one of the signs of the wali, Sakhiyun nafs, salamatu sadr wa husnul dhan bi ibadillah. The three signs of the wali, he's, he's generous of the soul. <laughs> so generous not just of money, but he's generous. Let me take care of people. I'm generous with my being. If you ask me for my soul, I'd give it to you. But generous. So be generous with your sharing, with your contributions. So how is this reflection exercise? Is this the, have you ever done something like this before? Is this the first time? Where did you go? Was it weird? Was it difficult? Was it intense? Was it soft? Were you thinking about pizza for lunch? So anything you want to share, let's get just a few people to share. One, two, three, four people. Bismillah. And whoever shares first gets the reward of everyone who shares after. That's right. Aisa, bismillah. <laughs> Amazing. Beautiful. That's a beautiful. Thank you. You love that state and you don't want to leave it. Allah, Allah, Allah. So you went somewhere. You went somewhere. MashaAllah. Beautiful. Yes. That's right. That's right. Beautiful. So you get distracted, you come back. Allahu Akbar. Thank you. Just dip in, let the current take you away. And I felt this was the Shia's invitation. Take me with you, student. Ameen. Ameen. Yes, please share. Tawadali. You want to come here? Tell me. It's my younger daughter. Tell, tell me. 
Okay, that's what happened. Any of the sisters? Bismillah. We're going this way, see? Bismillah. Would like to share? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing. Alhamdulillah. <coughs> Mm, mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. MashaAllah, SubhanAllah. Wonderful, wonderful. Yusuf. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's amazing. You know, um, we, I want one more person to share, but as a reflection from the use of what he's saying, you know, what we're getting today is knowledge, and knowledge is light. Mm -hmm. And when we do salawat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says 10 in response to us to remove us from darkness to light. So we're getting 10 lights. And lights, al anwar, mataya, al qulub, al asrar, lights. Are the, care, are, the, are the riding mounts of the hearts and the secrets. So when we are exposed to those lights through knowledge and through salawat, then our heart starts to expand and open and we start to get realizations of the truth, of the haqq. Why am I actually here? What am I actually doing? So we, and, and from the distractions of the, and this world can actually pause away. So it comes back to this light, which is very real. That's how we're a spiritual being. So it comes back to that. That's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. It's very difficult to Shauk, longing. Jazakum Allah khair. Santiago? Mm. It was hard to do that to like just 
You know, I was talking to a doctor uh, last week, and they told me that medically, vibrations are are used for part of uh, healing. <laughs> vibrations are healings, and so uh, you know, to to share to, to to hear what you're saying is just pretty remarkable, and also the Quran and the vibrations, even of Alif Lam. Like meaning all the way through every single letter, and the, it's just healings from the Quran and vibrations. So that, that was amazing. MashaAllah. Bismillah. In the beginning, my mind was being distracted. And I was thinking about the things that you were spreading throughout your body. It was kind of like a light switch. Mm. I actually felt it. I kind of like woke up. Allah. Amazing. Um, it did feel like it was present. Allah. And, um, Allah. Mm, that's oh, right. That's amazing. right. That's right. That's right. Beautiful. Sometimes it's hard to come back. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah. Thank you for sharing. Okay, we have to move on, but one more sister. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Pizza. Alhamdulillah. 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 Okay. Alhamdulillah. Let's. Uh, we're we're back on track with timing. Uh, let's practice the salawat sirajiyah three times, inshallah, and uh, and then and then we'll and then we're gonna and then we'll inshallah. So three times. So let's remember the formula is very beautiful. Open doors of ease, close doors of difficulty. Ni'ma al-Mawla wa ni'ma al-Nasir. So let's say it together, inshaAllah, three times. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim taslima. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim taslima. Salatan taftahu lana. Salatan taftahu lana. We need everyone's voice here. صلاة تفتح لنا أبواب الرضا والتيسير وتغلق بها أبواب الشر والتعسير أنت مولانا فنعم المولى ونعم النصير Two more times, a little slower. صلاة تفتح لنا أبواب الرضا والتيسير وتغلق بها أبواب الشر والتعسير أنت مولانا فنعم المولى ونعم النصير Last time إن شاء الله 
صلاة تفتح لنا صلاة تفتح لنا أبواب الرضا والتيسير أبواب الرضا والتيسير وتغلق بها وتغلق بها أبواب الشر والتعسير أبواب الشر والتعسير أنت مولانا أنت مولانا فنعم المولى فنعم المولى ونعم النصير ونعم النصير بسم الله final session before the 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 lunch break إن شاء الله So we are now, alhamdulillah, beautiful uh, reflections and um, we'll inshallah dive into chapter 5 now, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We are on page... One oh seven. So inshallah, anybody who's following along, page 107. This is the longest chapter of the book, and that's why we saved it. So we're 11.30 before uh, 12.30, inshallah. Uh, one exercise we should do, though. This Imam Zaid taught me this, and I really love it. It's um, something we should do more often, is just for a minute or two, just a stretch yeah. exercise. That's really beautiful. Imam Zaid always reminds us, do a stretch exercise. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al-mursaleen Sayyidina wa habibina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in One of the greatest gifts we can give each other Is the gift of time Alhamdulillah And all of you has you know, gifted us with your time to be here Paying attention uh, attentively, mashallah Participating in the exercise May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless your time Bless everything in your life Inshallah, allow us to meet many times like this. Inshallah, we have half of the day covered. We hope everyone, inshallah, will stay with us until we finish the closing du'as. And then we have some other events coming up, so we want to do more things together. Inshallah ta'ala, and make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Habib pleased with us, inshallah. So chapter uh, 5 is on uh, 107. Alhamdulillah, we'll be able to perfectly cover this, uh, this is the longest chapter like I mentioned. So he calls it the benefits. فَوَائِدُ الصَّلَاةِ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وسلم. He says, no dear brother or sister who believes in Allah and His Messenger وسلم, that sending prayers upon the Messenger of Allah وسلم, possesses benefits of virtue and goodness and has a recompense of excellence and kindness. No one knows its true measure and amount but Allah who link these benefits and this recompense to the prayers sent upon his noblest beloved Here we shall mention a number of these benefits so as to educate the ignorant, awaken the forgetful, and remind the intelligent. The Allah the Most High said, and remind them, for indeed the reminder benefits the believers. That's why I added that to the ayah, because this is the greatest thing. We should never feel that Alhamdulillah, no one is pontificating, no one is preaching. We're, all we're doing is trying to remind each other, benefiting each other. And you would be surprised how many things benefit. Look at uh, uh, the reminder of tafakkur. What did it do to us? Imagine we did that every day. We just stopped for 5-10 minutes and we did this. Imagine we, we, everything we did. Our, imagine our, our, our stillness reminded people before our words. Our states move the hearts before our words. That's the way we, we should be. Because when they saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they said, Wallahi, ma, this is the face of, of truth, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? The people who knew, because they knew his stillness. Uh, they, they said, they, they, amazing. His stillness was beautiful. His stillness was reminder and talk and speech, let alone his beautiful speech, how much more eloquent and beautiful it was, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The first benefit, Sending prayers upon the Prophet ﷺ is a means of drawing close to him on the day of resurrection. See, we, we're at the Hawd. We want to be at the Hawd. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu related the Messenger of Allah ﷺ said, The closest of people to me on the day of resurrection shall be those who send the most prayers upon me. And Abu Umamah radiallahu anhu related that the Messenger of Allah ﷺ said, Send abundant prayers upon me each Friday, for the prayers of my Ummah are presented to me each Friday. Those of you who send the most prayers upon me will be the closest to me in station. Now think about that. We know the Day of Judgment is very terrifying. We know what is a scary day. But where the Prophet ﷺ is, that's amazing and safe and in a celebration. It means that these people, right, 
they're graduating. They, they're promoted now because they did all this hard work and now they're, they're, they're blessed, right? Imagine those people who will enter without even being reckoned. Imagine those people who are the closest to the Prophet ﷺ, they're going to drink from his hawd, his basin, sallallahu alayhi wa Ibn Hibban radiallahu anhu said in this hadith report, there is a proof that the most important, that is the closest people to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa on the day of resurrection shall be the scholars of hadith. For those are none in this ummah who send more prayers upon them than, than they. And I mentioned that that might be a, a certain time. But look at our time now. We have more lay people probably than we've ever had in our, in our, in our nation. Right? The amount of lay people. That means they're not scholarly community, but subhanAllah, once they find the, the, the treasure chest of, of salawat, they're never going to leave it. Because, the, because they say, man dhaqa araf, the one who's tasted, they know. And that's why Shaykh ibn Arabi rahimahullah says, after you've tasted honey, don't ever go back to vinegar. Once you've tasted it, khalas, this is it. So we know, and the spiritual path, the reality of the spiritual path is all at the end of the day, dhawq. It's all about tasting. If you experience it, the whole world could say it's not true, but it's true for you. And that's what the, 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 the why do you say ashhadu? Did you witness Allah? Oh, ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasul, did you witness it? But because you taste it in your heart, you know it. That's why we say ashhadu. And it's also as if it's a hopeful thing that we will witness it. We're hopeful, we're, we're saying it now. Right, and they, they even if you see now some other spiritual traditions will say they put it out into the heaven, say what you want to happen. But this is rooted in the true religion. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. I witness, I bear witness that there's only Allah. See, this is what happens. So this blessing of tasting is what we want to achieve. Because imagine you didn't know all these hadith. But the moment you know one part of, part of it and you start practicing it, that's enough for you. you will, you'll know, you'll get all the benefits. They say, Mawlana Rumi radiallahu who says, he says, all of the ocean is in the drop of that ocean too, right? Isn't that true? Subhanallah. So if you have a drop of it or if you have all of the ocean, it's still, and then when that drop falls in the ocean, is it a drop or is it an ocean? That's why Mawlana says, Qatrayi daunish ki bakhshidi zipesh. He said, that drop that you gave from pre-eternity, he said, allow it to join the rest of the lake, the rest of the ocean, the rest of it. But protect this nafs from its, 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 its lowly part. Because we have a beautiful part, and then we have the low. That's, the, that's where the test comes. He didn't say good. He said, ahsan. Who's going to be the best in deeds? And we know that one of the greatest of deeds is the prayer on the Prophet because it'll transform us. Our character will transform, our heart will transform, our actions will transform, the things that we will not really realize how it's happening. But this is the way that Allah has put the benefit in it. It's a, it's a medicine. He said, Radhi Anhu Abu Naim said, this noble merit is uniquely possessed by the narrators and transmitters of the reports for there is no other faction of scholars known for sending as much prayers upon the Prophet والسلام, as is known for this faction in writing and upon the tongue. Then he goes on to say um, that Sufyan al-Thawri said that if the, if the companion of hadith had no other benefit save that of sending prayers upon the Prophet it would suffice. For he sends prayers upon him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, so long as it is written in the book. May Allah send prayers and salutations upon him. As for the exact definition of abundance, abundance of now we got the we got we know the the, the benefit. How can we be abundant in it? He says the great Shaykh and Gnostic Imam Abu Talib al Makki, radiallahu anhu, the author of Qut al Qulub. He said the minimum number for something to be abundant is three hundred times. So every day, uh, t t divide your day into three parts. 100 in the morning, 100 in midday, 100 at night, or towards the evening. But, or you could do more, right? But the aqallul kathir, the, the, the least of the most, is 300. Shaykh ibn Hajar al-Haytami radiallahu who said, I say, abundance and remembrance is not obtained except by dedicating the majority of one's time and worship to it. That is, in sending prayers upon the Prophet as was said regarding the statement of the Most High. 
the men and women who remember Allah abundantly. It is probable that the rule of thumb for abundance is that a person manifests it to the point that he is known for it. Now, Shaykh ibn Arabi, عنه, he has a, a, one of his teachers he mentions in his travels in Andalusia, southern Spain, Portugal, uh, North Africa. He met a person and his name was Allahumma salli ala Muhammad al Haddad. He did salawat to the point where his name was only known as Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. See this point? That he said, they said, when one, from one of my teachers is Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, last name al Haddad. <laughs> SubhanAllah, that's one of his teachers. So number two benefit. So the firstness, first one is closeness. Sending prayers upon the Prophet ﷺ is a cause for earning the Prophet's special intercession, the shafa'a we want, a shafa'atul uzma. It is related from Ruwayfi, Ruwayfi bin Thabit al-Ansari anhu that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, whosoever says Allah, O oh Allah, Allahumma send prayers upon Muhammad and cause him to descend upon the place nearness to you on the day of, uh, of resurrection, then my intercession will be obligatory for it. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa anzilhu al-maqad al-muqarrabam indaka yawm al-qiyamah. If you just memorize that, immediately is guaranteed shafa'ah for the person. At-Tabarani reported from Abu Darda radiyan who said, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, whosoever sends prayers upon me ten times upon awakening and ten times upon entering the evening, my intercession will reach him on the day of intersection, uh, the day of resurrection. Three, sending prayers upon the Prophet alayhi is a charity zakat in purification. Ibn Abi Shayba, Abu Shaykh and others reported from Abu Hurair radiyallahu anhu said, and this reminded me of the vibration that we were talking about, right? Abu Huraira is the cat, and cats purr, and they're a medicine for people. If you have one, you know. When, you, when you're not feeling, just get your cat bring you close to your heart. Allah, their purr takes away everything. This vibrate, Allah made everything a mercy. And the Prophet ﷺ is the greatest mercy, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So do, do, hold your cat and do salawat. That's the best. Allahumma salli alayhi. He said, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, "Prayers upon me, send prayers upon me, for prayers sent upon me are charity for you." And Ibn, Ibn Abi Asim narrated from Anas radiyallahu who said, "The Messenger who said the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, prayers upon me, send them for prayers upon me is an expiation for you. Whosoever sends ten prayers upon me." And then he goes on to the ending of the hadith. In the first hadith report, it explains that sending prayers upon the Prophet والسلام, is a charity for the one who does it. It is well known that zakat connotates growth. Because the word zakat, right, in its root meaning means growth. Okay? Because Allah says, will you zakihim? The Prophet will purify them, meaning allow them to grow to their what? To their full potential, inshallah. So he says, growth, blessings, and purity as it is with the zakat of wealth, for it purifies money and causes it to grow. In the second hadith report, it explains that the act of sending prayers upon the Prophet ﷺ serves as an expiation, and this indicates the effacement of sins and their harmful effects from the soul of the sinner in his account. We know from the rahmah of Allah, right, is that if someone sins, how long does it take for that sin to be written in their book of deeds? Yeah. Six hours. One of the narrations says six hours. The angels on the right side says to the angel on the left, don't write it. Wait. Maybe they'll make tawbah. Maybe they'll ask for forgiveness. Six hours. Rahmah of Allah. And then even if then, then, then the salawat faces it. Allah. How can someone, you know, we have this Prophet Sallallahu He says, you know, there's a poem I used to read with my kids at, at sleep. He said, from sin unredeemed, not a soul can abide. Who has such a leader before him, uh, who has such a leader before him? A guide. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is from Sadi. Namanat ba isyan kasi dar guru kidara chunin sayyide pe shiro. Chinati pisandi da goyam tura. Alayka salam ay nabi al wara. He says, who, who, From sin unredeemed, not a soul can abide. Who has such a leader before him as guide? What suitable praises to you can I pen upon you be, be safety, O Prophet and friend? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This was our, not one of our night uh, sleep, uh, duas. That we have this Prophet Sallallahu Look at by his barakah, Allah is effacing sins. Allah is giving us blessings. Just say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Just do the prayers of the Prophet every day. 
Do the simple things, the, the easy. Not the, if you can't do the abundant uh, amount, which is 300. The people who are very deeply in love with the Prophet ﷺ, they do at least 500 a day. That's the least of the ushak. May Allah make us from the ushak. And then he says, these two hadith reports prove that by sending prayers upon him وسلم, the soul is purified from its evil and filth and is made to enjoy growth and increase and its perfection and goodness. And in this lies the emptying uh, and adorning. Then we have the takhalli and tahalli, right? That lead to the perfection and felicity of the soul. Right? We always talk about that. The, removing the, 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 the bad and, 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 and adorning us with the good. From this it is understood that there is no perfection for a soul except by sending prayers upon the Prophet ﷺ, for it is from the implications of loving him, following him, and giving him precedence over all of creation. It is for this reason that the realized knowers of Allah, or knowers by Allah, because their gift of knowing Allah is through Allah, they said, he who does not find a shaykh, a, a spiritual guide, who, uh, who is a completed spiritual guide, must see that he sends prayers upon the Prophet ﷺ, for they, the prayers, will stand for him as a completed spiritual guide. Of those who brought this to attention was the knower of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Sidi Ahmad Zarruq radiallahu who mentioned it in his principle 114 of his uh, maxims of Sufism, Qawaid al Tasawwuf. And Ismail al Qadi reported in his book, Fadl al Salati ala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with his chain up to Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, who said, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Send prayers upon me, for prayers sent upon me are charity for you, and then ask Allah to grant me the wasila. For it is a level in paradise that is not but for a servant from the servants of Allah, and I hope it is for me. And that's what we do when we hear the adhan. After the adhan, we say, we ask Allah for him, for him to be granted with wasila. Number four of the benefits, that uh, sending prayers upon the Prophet ﷺ assumes in reward and divine recompense the position of charity for the one suffering straightened means. Ibn Hibban reported in his rigorously authentic collection from Abu Sa'id al-Khudri from the Messenger of Allah وسلم, who said, any Muslim man or woman who is without charity should say in his supplication, O oh Allah, send prayers upon Muhammad, your servant and messenger, and send prayers upon the believing men and women and Muslim uh, men and women, for it is a zakat. Abu Sayyid radiallahu anhu related the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Perhaps there is a man who earns wealth from the lawful and feeds himself, and a man who has wealth from which is charity due. The first man says, O oh Allah, send prayers upon Muhammad, your servant and messenger, and send prayers upon the believing men and women, and Muslim men and women, and it is a charity for him. Every, there's always a way for everybody. You know, there's a group of companions, they came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and they said, you know, give us a, a dhikr. And then the Prophet ﷺ gave him a dhikr. And then the rich companions that were wealthy, they also did it. And then the poor companions, they said, Ya Rasulullah, they found out and they're doing that. Now they have wealth that they can give charity. And they have this amazing dhikr, right? And the Prophet ﷺ said, this is the grace of Allah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, subhanAllah. You know, that's the thing. But imagine they're, they, ha they have wealth and they're giving it. And then somebody who doesn't, they feel heart, uh, hurt. I, why can I do? The Prophet ﷺ gave him this as a charity. Sending prayers upon the Prophet ﷺ is a cause for being relieved of the stresses of the worldly life and the hereafter. Reported with an authentic chain by Imam al-Tabarani from Muhammad bin Yahya bin Hayyan from his father, from the grandfather uh, radiallahu anhum that said, Oh, uh, said, Ya Rasulullah, should I dedicate a third of my prayer to sending prayers upon you? He replied, Yes, if you like. The man asked, What about two thirds? He replied, Yes, if you like. The man then asked, What about my entire prayer? My, meaning my entire devotional time to prayer upon you? He replied, In that case, Allah will suffice you of that which stresses you of your worldly and afterworldly affairs. Yeah, so the, the wording is, In one, one narration. When in, uh, uh, this is the famous hadith that I knew, but this other narration I didn't know. But this one is from Ubay bin Ka'b. When a quarter of the night would pass, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi would arise and say, O oh people, remember Allah, remember Allah. The, the convulsing blast of the horn has come. Followed by the subsequent one, death has come with what it contains. See, death meditation. Sallallahu Alaihi is doing that. He's saying that Israfil is about to to blow the horn, meaning the world's coming to an end, it's closing. SubhanAllah. 
And then he's saying, um, death has come with what it contains. I said, Ya Rasulullah, I send abundant prayers upon you. How much of my prayer should I dedicate to sending upon you? As much as you like, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I asked, should I, have, uh, should I have you in half of my prayer? He said, if you like. And if you wish to add to that, it will be better for you. If I, I asked, so what about two-thirds? He replied, if you like, and if you wish to add to that, it will be better for you. I asked, Ya Rasulullah, should I have you in my whole prayer? He replied, if you do that, your stress will be relieved and your sins will be forgiven. He then took fahammak wa yughfar dhambak. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imam al-Hafidh al-Mundhiri radiyallahu anhu said, this was reported by Ahmad al-Tirmidhi al-Hakim radiyallahu anhu, who declared it rigorously authentic. Al-Tirmidhi said, is a Hassan Sahih hadith. Al-Mundhiri said, in a narration from Ahmad, it mentions, a man said, Ya Rasulullah, what do you think if I dedicate my entire prayer to sending prayers upon you? He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, replied, in that case, Allah will suffice you of that which stresses you of your worldly and afterworldly affairs. The chain of this narration is authentic. See, subhanAllah, this, number six, sending prayers on the Prophet is a tremendous means of being free from hypocrisy and hellfire. Anas radiallahu anhu said, re related that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, whosoever sends one prayer upon me, Allah will send 10 prayers upon him on account of it. Whosoever sends 10 prayers upon me, Allah will send 100 prayers upon him. And whosoever sends 100 prayers upon me, Allah will write between his eyes. Allah will write between his eyes. What does this mean, subhan, the divine pen? Free from hypocrisy and free from the hellfire. And Allah will place him among the martyrs on the day of resurrection. This is a tremendous virtue and a noble benefit. Freedom from hypocrisy entails complete faith. And freedom from the hellfire entails being protected from disobedience and being placed among the martyrs in paradise entails the greatest good pleasure of the all-merciful. Number seven, uh, salawat is a tremendous means for having one's worldly and afterworldly needs met. Hafidh uh, Abu Musa al-Madani who reported with his chain from uh, Jabir anhu, that the Prophet والسلام, said, whosoever sends 100 prayers upon me after he prays the morning prayer and before speaking, Allah will fulfill for him 100 needs. 30 will be hastened for him in this world and 70 will be held back for him in the hereafter and the like for after the sunset. Number eight, salawat opens the doors of goodness and repels poverty. Abu Naim reported with his chain from Samara bin Jundib radiallahu who said, a man came to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Ya Rasulullah, what are the closest actions to Allah, the, the, the exalted? He replied, true speech and faithful rendering of trust. I said, Ya Rasulullah, tell us more. He said, night prayer and fasting during the, night, during the hot midday. I said, Ya Rasulullah, tell us more. He said, abundant remembrance and prayers upon me repel poverty. I said, Ya Rasulullah, tell us more. Do you want more? He said, yes. He who leads others in prayer must lighten it. For among you are the elderly, the sick, the weak, and those with needs. His concern, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is amazing. Harisun alaykum. Allah says, Harisun alaykum. He's so avarice and worried about you, taking care of you. Ma alayhi ma anittum. Harisun alaykum. Bil mu'minina raufur raheem. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then the Imam goes on to say in page 115, sending prayers upon the Prophet ﷺ is a tremendous cause for the descent of mercy. Al-Bazar narrated from Anas who related the Prophet ﷺ said, Indeed to Allah belong caravans of angels who seek out the circles of remembrance. When they approach one, they surround them and they stand with their hands outstretched towards the heavens, entreating the Lord of might, saying, Ya Allah, Ya Rabb, we have, a hap we have happened upon servants from among your servants who are magnifying your bounties, reciting your book, sending prayers upon your Prophet Muhammad and asking you with regards to their hereafter and worldly life. Allah, the Blessed and Exalted says, envelope them in my mercy, for they are an assembly in which no one will be wretched. Humul qawm la yashqa bihim jaleesuhum. SubhanAllah. Anybody who's with them, they're all uh, forgiven and, and protected and given mercy. There was something I wanted to say about this, but now I'm Yeah, look at the minaret. It's almost as if the design of the minaret is outstretched to the heavens. It's all long, it's all stretched, right? That's what it's doing. We're all going to the heavens. When we make dua, right? The qibla of dua is what? Sama, the heavens. It's all up. But then the beauty of the, the dua itself, the, 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 the way we hold our hands in dua is, is like the zero. It's like empty. It, this is our bowl. Every single one of us is a pauper before Allah. 
We all are needy, so we take our bowls to Allah. Look, everyone takes their bowl to Allah. You look, you come to empty to Allah. This is the benefit. And now you have your dua, you're sit facing qibla, you have the qibla of sama, you have, and you're doing prayers on the Prophet ﷺ. You're making dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illa Allah, akbar. This is the baqiyat al salihat in the Quran. These are the everlasting uh, good deeds. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illa Allah. And they manifested on the four companions. So the, the state of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq was la ilaha illallah. That manifested on him. That was the dhikr that he did all the time. That was on his tongue all the time. He would be talking and as it would stop, he would say la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. Sayyidina Umar radiyahu is Allahu Akbar. Sayyidina Uthman radiyahu is Subhanallah. And Sayyidina Ali radiyahu, the door of wisdom and the door of the, the city of knowledge, alhamdulillah. So all of them are reflecting these beautiful names and the beautiful dhikrs and the way that we, we have it. But then the salawat is, the, is, is the, the practice of everybody. So we have pra, 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 uh, uh, certain wordings for praise of Allah, certain wordings for the praise of the Prophet wasallam, and then like that. So many other things that are going to continue to add uh, to our uh, tremendous light. Because in the end of the day, our, all we're taking to our next journey is light. That's what Sidi Mahdi said in the exercise. We're taking our light with us. Nuruhum yasabayna aidihim. Simahum fi wujuhim min athar is sujood. Allah is saying that their their light is on their face. Their light is on their forehead. Because they did sujood. They did now that's the sujood of the physical. What about the sujood of the heart? What about if we're totally in submission to Allah? That's that's what's going to happen. Then the Imam Radilan who goes to uh, one eighteen. Sending prayers on the on the Prophet ﷺ is a means for the name of the person sending them to be presented to the Prophet and having his name mentioned in his noble presence. Imam al bazar reported from Ammar bin Yasir radiallahu anhu said, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu said, Verily Allah has entrusted an angel at my grave to whom Allah has given the names of creation. No one sends prayers upon me until the day of resurrection except that he, the angel, conveys to me his name and the name of his father, saying, So-and-so, the son of so-and-so, has sent prayers upon you. Then the imam goes on to say that the salawat is a mighty means of having one's prayers answered. Imam Al-Hafidh Abdul Razak, radiallahu anhu, narrated with his chain from Abu Ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu, said, When one of you wishes to ask Allah, the exalted, I'm going to say this very slowly, when one of you wishes to ask Allah, the exalted, let him start by praising and, and extolling him as he deserves. Then let him send prayers upon the Prophet ﷺ. After that he may ask, for it is more likely to succeed or reach. Be, in other words, to be accepted. Then the Imam goes on to say a beautiful story about sending prayers on the Prophet ﷺ in all circumstances. Being busy with it. Right? There's, a, there's, there's, this, there's the people who are worrying about the count. But then there's the people who are drowned in, in, in him, so I said, they don't know how many they're doing. They're just doing as many they can, okay? So he tells a story. Abu Ibn Nu'aym and Ibn Bashkawal anhu, reported from Sufyan al-Thawri who said, Once when I was performing the pilgrimage, there was a young man who came upon us. Never did he raise one foot and lower the other, save that he would say, O oh Allah, send prayers upon Muhammad and upon the household of Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. I asked him, do you say that with knowledge? Yes, he replied. And who are you? I said, I'm Sufyan al-Thawri. He said, oh, the, the Iraqi. Sufyan al-Thawri was one of the imams like Abu Hanifa. The Imam, but his madhab died out. So he was known as a scholar. He said, yes. He asked, do you know Allah? Because he said, do you, do, you, do you say that with knowledge? Now that man is asking Imam Sufyan al do you know Allah? Yes, I replied. He asked, how do you come to know him? I said, by the fact that he causes the night to enter into the day and causes the day to enter into the night and by the fact that he fashions a child in the womb. He said to me, oh Sufyan, you have not known Allah with true knowledge. I asked, how then do you know him? He said, by the spoiled resolves and aspirations and the, by the breach resolutions. I had aspirations, but they were spoiled. And I had resolves, but they were breached. And from that, I knew that I have a Lord who manages me. You see? So this is, what, this is another way to know Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? That all these things that I lined up, it didn't work out. Who's managing it? Who's making it happen? This Allah. 
Now you know. And, it, and it, it's beautiful because it puts us in the true servant state. Before Allah, we see that, oh, we're not in charge of it. All of these things that we thought was going to, you know, line up. You know, A plus B and this it gets, no. <laughs> There's a, something else happening. Allah is managing. So he said, that's how I know Allah. I asked, so why are you so dedicated to sending prayers upon the Prophet ﷺ? He replied, once I was performing the pilgrimage and my mother was accompanying me. She asked me to escort her to the sanctified house when suddenly she fell down and her stomach swelled up and her face was blackened from the severe pain and illness. So I sat at her side in a state of sadness and raised my hands to the sky and said, Ya Rab, th is this how you treat those who enter your house? Immediately after that, lo and behold, there appeared a dark rain cloud that ascended from the direction of Tihama. And there was a man wearing white garments. He entered the house and passed his hand over his, over his mother's face and it became white. And then passed his hand over her stomach and it became white. And the illness went away. Then as he left, I grasped his garment and asked, Who are you that brings such delight? He said, I am your prophet, Muhammad. I am your prophet, Muhammad Wasallam. I said to him, Ya Rasulullah, counsel me. He said, do not raise one foot or lower the other, save that you send prayers upon Muhammad and the household of Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa may, may Allah send perpetual prayers upon him. It's a beautiful story that he sends. Now he's talking about the rewards. Um, and in here he has a quote which is beautiful also because we always talk about dhikr. Remember when we defined it, we said it's a remembrance. But he has a beautiful line of poetry. He says, I am astonished at the one who says, I remembered my beloved. And do I forget that I must remember what I forgot? How is that person your beloved that you forget to, well, I have to make remembrance of them? No, it becomes a part of you now. It's, it's who you are, right? The, the story of Layla and Majnun is so beautiful because that's what it is, right? That's total annihilation in the love of the one you love. That's why everybody narrates it. Right? That's why that story is, is, is going to be there forever. And there's many, many stories like that. Right? That we need those, those love stories. Allah made the human love uh, so that we can taste a little bit of what the divine love will be like. Do we need those examples? And then he goes on to say, other benefits of sending prayers upon the Prophet, Prophet ﷺ are that they are a means for an expansive life and a blessed and happy existence. Abu Musa al-Madani reported from Sahal bin Sa'ad who said, once a man came to the Messenger of Allah ﷺ and complained of poverty and a difficult life. The Messenger of Allah ﷺ said to him, when you enter your dwelling, send salutations, whether someone is inside or not. Again, when you enter into your home, send salutations, up, uh, whether someone is inside or not, then sal send salutations upon me and say, uh, Surah Al-Ikhlas, once. The man did that and Allah bestowed so much provision upon him that it flowed to his neighbors and relatives. So we enter the home and say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Right? Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam or something like that. And then, Qul huwa Allah ahad. Al-Hafidh al-Sakhawi said after citing this report, Abu Abdullah al-Qastalani rahimahullah ta'ala reported that he said, he saw the Prophet sallallahu in his sleep and complained of poverty to him. So he sallallahu alayhi wa said, Say, O oh Allah, send prayers upon Muhammad and upon the household of Muhammad. O oh Allah, grant us of your lawful, pure and blessed provision, that which will safeguard our faces from ingratiating ourselves to any of your cre creation. O oh Allah, grant us an easy way onto, onto it without fatigue or toil, without receiving favors from others and without bad result. O oh Allah, turn us away from the unlawful wherever it is and whom, whom, so, whomever it is and with whomever it is, and they place, they place a barrier between us and its people and remove their hands from us and they turn their hearts away from us so that we engage and not save that which pleases you and we do not seek aid with your bounty, uh, with, with, with your bounty save for that which you love, O oh, most merciful of those who are merciful. So this is on 131. And then he mentioned, so the Prophet ﷺ receives the prayers of those who send prayers upon him and they are conveyed to him as reported by Abu Dawood and Ahmad from Abu Huraira from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who said, there is no one who sends salutations upon me except that Allah is returning my soul. Now this is where, see, all the previous narrations is saying is being conveyed to him. Now we're going to see a different uh, layer of meaning. Except that Allah is returning my soul to me so that I can respond to the salutations and say, and salutations be upon you. 
So honor and do good by the one who sends prayers and salutations on the upon the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam returns salutations upon him. All of this proves that he sallallahu alayhi wasalam is alive in his noble grave with a life that is more complete and more tremendous than the life of this uh, lower world. Because he's in the barzakh and he has a hayat barzakhiya. So he's in the inner space or that, that world between now and the akhirah sallallahu alayhi wasalam and he has the more complete life than he had in this world. Imam al-Bahi compiled a complete volume on the life of the prophets in their graves and he established this point with several hadith reports. Of these reports is the one narrated by Imam Muslim rahimullah that the Prophet wasallam said, I passed by Musa on the night of the ascension and he was atop a red hill praying in his grave. <laughs> Where was Musa alayhi time in the Prophet But when he's going on the Isra and Mi'raj, he sees Musa in his grave praying. There is also the hadith report concerning his gathering with the prophets on the night of the miraculous journey in his statement, so the time for prayer came and I led them. He led them, all the prophets. Also there is the hadith, the prophets are alive in their graves offering prayer. Al-anbiya'u ahya'un fi quburihim yusallun. Awkuma qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Regarding the aforementioned hadith from Abu Huraira who there is no one who sends salutations upon me except that Allah returns my soul to me so that I can respond to the salutations saying and salutations be upon you. Imam al-Subki rahimahullah ta'ala said, his noble soul is occupied with witnessing the divine presence and the higher assembly above this lower world. This is because his last words, what were the last words of the Prophet? Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. he said, O oh Allah, the higher assembly. O oh Allah, but Rafiq al A'la. So when salutations are sent upon him, his noble soul directs itself toward this lower world to receive the salutations of the one who greets him. And he returns it. That in no way entails that it takes up time because of the constant prayers and salutations upon him around the world. That is because the matters of the hereafter are not comprehended via the rational faculty. That is to say, the rational faculty is limited to the wor lower world and the states of the intermediate world, barzakh, more closely resemble the states of the hereafter. And we saw that like w one of the brothers were saying that they were in the reflection and they didn't want to come back, right? Imagine the Prophet Wasallam when he was in this world, right? He went to the Divine Presence, he went to all those places and he still came back. Right? That's a part of the prophetic mission that even he was engulfed in those blessings, he still wanted to come back and be in the world and help and be of benefit to people. But when Allah took him away, now his, his, his blessed uh, salawat are sent. He said that is when the Prophet wasallam, right? He, he his noble soul directs itself toward this lower world. Even then he's directing his soul to the lower world, even though his body is, uh, you know, is not there. Then the Imam goes on to page 137, were it not for the fact that the prayers and salutations sent upon the Prophet and reach him, we would not have been commanded to say in the testification of the prayer, salutations upon you, O Prophet, and the mercy and blessings of Allah. We directly address him. Allah the Exalted could unveil to him to whom he wills, allowing him to hear the Prophet's response to the salutation, just as it was unveiled to Sayyid ibn al-Musayyib. Sayyid ibn al-Musayyib was from the Tabi'een. They say he was from the leader of the Tabi'een, who heard the call to prayer and the times of the prayers. Ibn Abi Dunya and al Bayhaqi reported in Hayat al Anbiya and al Shu'ab, respectively from Sulaiman bin Suhaim, who said, I saw the Prophet in a dream and I said, Ya Rasulullah, do you sense the salutations of those who come to you and greet you? He replied, Yes, and I respond to them. So there is some people that say, oh, the the, the, hiyat, the way we do it, that that was only for the time of the Prophet ﷺ, but after he passes away, then you're supposed to say, As-salamu alayhi. That's, that's, that doesn't make sense. Because the Prophet ﷺ told them that, and on top of that, the Prophet ﷺ has the other hadith where he's alive in his grave, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he's, he has complete, in the intermediate realm, he's completely alive, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this As-salamu alayka is what we continues to do. Assalamu alaikum, you. And then um, in his masjid, the only place, right, where you're actually in front of him and you say assalamu alaikum, right, and you're still facing qibla, is if you sit at the ashab al-sufa. 
because then you'll be his his, his uh, noble back is there, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he's facing qibla. So when you say assalamu alaikum, he's literally in front of you, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That's the only place in the in the entire mosque, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then the Imam goes on to say a few du'as. He says, "Oh Allah, grant, uh, oh, uh, oh Allah, grant the Prophet Sallallahu heart kind feelings towards us whenever we are, uh, wherever we are, and however we are." This means that the, we, we said there's longing from us and longing from him, but the longing from him is what we want. So he says, "Allahumma attif alayna qalb Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ayna ma kunna wa haythu ma kunna wa haythu kunna ya Maulana." On page 140, the Imam says, A group among them, such as Shaykh Abu Mansur al sabagh in his uh, book Al-Shamil, has mentioned the famous story from al utbi I was sitting by the grave of the Prophet ﷺ when a Bedouin Arab came and said, Salutations upon you, Ya Rasulullah. I have heard that Allah said, If they had only, when they were unjust to themselves, come unto thee and ask Allah's forgiveness, and the Messenger had asked forgiveness for them, they would have found Allah indeed, Oft returning, most merciful, Surah Nisa, I have uh, 64. So I have come to you asking for forgiveness for my sin, seeking your intercession with my Lord. Then he began to recite poetry. O oh, the best of those whose bones are buried, buried in the deep earth, and from whose fragrance the depth and the height have become sweet. May I be ransomed for a grave which thou inhabit, and in which are found purity, bounty, and munificence. Then he left. And I went to sleep and saw the Prophet ﷺ in my dream. He said to me, O oh, Utbi, run after the Bedouin and give him glad tidings that Allah has forgiven him. This is one of the famous one. If you look inside, as you're walking to the grave of the Prophet ﷺ, on the left side it's written there. They have it on beautiful calligraphy. Ya khayra man dufinat fil qa'i a'zumuhu fataba min tibihin al qa'u wal akamu. Anta al-nabiyu alladhi turja shafa'atuhu inda al-sirati idha zallat al-qadamu. Nafs al-fida'u li qabrin anta sakinuhu. Fihi al-afafu wa fihi al-judu wal-karam. He said those beautiful, I think about this, a better one could say such eloquent words. What kind of time were they living in? SubhanAllah, if someone wrote that now, everyone would be like, SubhanAllah, that's beautiful poetry. That was a better one person came and he said these amazing, you know, freestyle, these amazing emotions to the Prophet and then, and then he got what he wanted. SubhanAllah. Then the Imam goes on to say that um, it was related, it reported by Hatim al-Assam. Hatim al-Assam who was one of the noblest of the ascetic and Gnostic sheikhs, stood in front of the noble grave of the Prophet and said, O oh Allah, Indeed, we have visited the grave of your Prophet and Beloved, so do not turn away, us away bereft, empty-handed. Because we come to him empty-handed. But we want to take something back. That's the, that's the secret of why we put our hands in our, in our, uh, hands in our face after the dua. Because we don't go away empty-handed. So when we say this, we come empty-handed. But we, we, our opinion of Allah is so amazing that after we finish it, Alhamdulillah, we got, we got what we wanted. That's the, the one of the secrets of it. So th this is all a part of the devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said that, radiallahu anhu, that, oh, oh, so do not turn us away bereft. A call cried out to him saying, we have not allowed you to visit the grave of our beloved except that we have accepted you. Go back, you and the visitors with you having been forgiven. The angels surround the noble grave. When we mention this, now Isa is going to be mentioned and the angels. Imam al darimi said in his Sunan collection chapter of the things which Allah has honored his Prophet after his passing. Then he narrated a report with his chain to Nubay, Nubay bin Wahb that Kaab went to, say, to see Sayyida Aisha radiallahu anha and they mentioned the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to which Kaab said, there is not a day that rises save that 70,000 angels descend surrounding the grave of the Prophet rubbing it with their wings and sending prayers upon the Messenger of Allah When the evening arrives, they ascend and a similar group of angels descend to do the same. And this will continue until the earth is cleft open for him and he comes out with a group of 70,000 angels carrying him in a procession and in another narration exalting him. Now this is a good tafakkur exercise. Right? Another one. Sidi Mahdi said we should have many of them, right? Think about this. What is happening at the grave of the Prophet? He is the, the locus. 
<laughs> of all of creation. Everything is there, right? Subhanallah. And between Mecca and Medina, you know, Mecca is, is where he's born. And the blessed Kaaba is there. And then Medina is where he's buried. So the, all the khairat and all the blessings are between those cities. Subhanallah. And then he said, Consider this hadith very well, dear believer. The noble angels descend from the heavens to the noble grave in order to seek blessings from it, rub it with their wings, and send prayers upon it, the noble Prophet. ﷺ. When our master Isa, ﷺ, the son of Mary, Mary, descends, he will take honor in visiting the Messenger of Allah, ﷺ, sending salutations upon him and being buried in the blessed and noble chamber. So there's four places. The fourth place is empty. That's for Isa. ﷺ. That's what, according to this. Al-Hakim reported and authenticated from Abu Huraira who said, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, Isa ibn Maryam alayhim as -salam, shall most certainly descend as a just ruler and imam. He will travel in multiple groups in Hajj and Umrah. And he shall come to my grave and send salutations upon me and I shall respond to him. It is known with certain knowledge that our Master Isa salam, will descend during the last days and this is established in Quranic verses and mass transmitted prophetic hadith reports and is agreed upon by consensus. So that's why some of the scholars also, you know, to go off of this topic, they say that the end of times is the time where we do a lot of seeking forgiveness and salawat on the Prophet. And then others have joined the two in one salawat. So it's as if in the salawat you're doing dhikr, dua, and the act of the prayer on the Prophet ﷺ. So anybody who wants to memorize that, I will say it slowly. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala dhati al-Muhammadiyya wal-al wa ghfir lana ma yakun wa ma qad kan. They say this is the salawat of the end of times. People should practice this because this is seeking forgiveness and sending prayers on the Prophet, which is a protection for the people towards the end of time. And Isa ﷺ is coming towards the end of time. Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam, the Messenger of Allah, uh, may, may prayers and salutations be upon him and our Prophet and his mother will undertake a journey and visit the noble grave and send salutations to our master Muhammad وسلم, the seal of the prophets and messengers later on he goes on to say and when he descends during the last days all of his statements and actions and rulings will be according to the Muhammad and sacred law after his time comes to uh, comes he, after his time comes, he will uh, die in Medina, the illuminated, and shall be buried in the confines of the purified prophetic chamber. This was reported by Imam at Tirmidhi from Abdullah bin Salam. Abdullah bin Salam, everyone should know him. He was one of the chief rabbis of, of Medina, and he became Muslim at the time of the Prophet, وسلم, who said, Written within the Torah is the description of Muhammad, وسلم, and therein it is mentioned that Isa bin Maryam shall be buried with him. It's in the Torah. The biographers quoted Sa'id ibn al-Musayyib who saying, Remaining within the house is a grave space in which Isa ibn Maryam shall be buried and his grave will be the fourth. On the angels that are, of the angels that are entrusted with the children of Adam and those, are those whose job it is to write down the prayers sent upon the Prophet. Imam Abu Jarir, Abu Ja'far bin Jarir, may Allah have mercy upon him, reported with his chain from Kinan al-Adawi, who said, Uthman bin Affan radiallahu anhum went to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Ya Rasulullah, inform me about the servant and how many angels are with him. Each person, how many angels are with him? He said, there is an angel on your right for your good deeds, and he is in charge over the one on your left. So when you do a good deed, it is written ten times over. And when you do a misdeed, the one to the left says to the one on the right, Shall I write it? The other angel says, No, perhaps he will seek forgiveness and repent. So the angel on the left seeks his permission three times. And after the third time, the angel on the right says, Write it. May Allah relieve us of him. What a bad companion. How little is his vigilance and shyness before Allah. Allah says, He utters not a word save that with him is Raqib and Atid. And there are two angels before you and behind you. Allah says, for him, there are successive angels before him and behind him, protecting him by the decree of Allah. There is also an angel that grasps your forelock, nasya. That's why the scholars of Azhar, they have the nasya, and they put it on their imama. To remember that their, 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 their <laughs> forelock is in the hands, you know, in the grasp of, 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 of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, metaphorically. There is an angel that grasps your forelock when you humble for the sake of Allah, he raises you, and when you are arrogant against Allah, he lowers you. And there are two angels upon your lips. They do not record anything from you save the prayers sent upon Muhammad. 
They don't record anything. Those angels only want salawat. If they, they get salawat, they record it. And there's an angel entrusted to your, uh, to your uh, mouth. And he guards you lest something harmful enters it during sleep. And there are two angels entrusted to your eyes, protecting him from all that would harm his uh, eyes with Allah's permission. These are ten angels that are with every human being. The angels of night descend upon the angels of the day because the angels of the night are different from the angels of the day. Therefore, that makes twenty angels with every human. May Allah have mercy upon the one who said, A beloved has journeyed to Taiba between its domes. A beloved who is a medicine for the hearts, a doctor. If we do not seek treatment in Taiba with the goodly one whose goodness spreads the world across, then from where do we seek treatment? So it's a play on words. It doesn't come out in good in translation, really. Uh, you know, the, the Arabic is beautiful because Taiba and Tib and Tabib and all of them, they're all related. So he's playing words with the poetry. And may Allah support the one who said, Unto you the caravan's journey, and if not, then the speaker is lying. May my, uh, my, uh, the speaker is lying. My way is love of the abodes for the sake of their inhabitants, and the people have multiple ways of showing their love. Right? So that's why, because they asked, they, they asked Majnoon, why are you kissing these walls? He said, Layla passed by here. What do you think? It's not, it's not the walls. Something like that, right? And then he says, He said, because the one who will live there. So the, the traces of the Prophet said, anywhere there are people want it. For this reason, the companions would send abundant prayers upon the Prophet at his noble grave. Of them was Abdullah ibn Umar. Abdullah ibn Dinar said, I saw Ibn Umar standing at the grave of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi sending prayers and salutations upon him and supplicating for Abu Bakr and Umar. Because <laughs> they're there too, right? So, and then he goes on to say, and we're about to finish this chapter, inshallah. Yeah. Just a few more pages and we have uh, five more minutes. On the adab, the fine etiquettes observed by the Salaf with the Messenger of Allah. Qadi Iyad Rahimullah Ta'ala said, You should know that this his sanctity and respect and exaltation due to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after his passing is necessary just as it was during his life in the world. That is because he remains as the Prophet and Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This respect and exaltation is to be shown when he is mentioned, when his hadith and sunnah are mentioned, when his name and life are heard, and when interacting with his family and progeny and his family and companions should be exalted. And then he goes on to say that Qadi Iyad rahimullah, reported with a rigorously authentic chain from Humaid, one of the narratives used by Imam Malik rahimullah ta'ala, who said the leader of the believers, Abu Ja'far, better known as Al-Mansur, once debated Malik in the mosque, meaning the mosque of the Prophet and raised his voice. Imam Malik said to him, O leader of the believers, do not raise your voice in this mosque. Allah reprimanded a people saying, do not raise your voices above the voice of the messenger. And he praised the people saying, Indeed, those who lower their voices in front of Allah's Messenger, they are the ones whose hearts have uh, Allah has tested for piety. And he rebuked the people saying, Indeed, those who call out to you from behind the apartments, most of them do not understand. Because this one man, he came and he started yelling out the name of the Prophet and telling him to come out. Ya Muhammad, come out, come out. He said, "Inna dhammi lashain wa inna madhi lazain." He said, "If he said, come out. If you don't, my praise is bad, and my praise is good, and my blame is bad." And the Prophet Sallallahu came out and said, "Dalika hu Allah." He said, "That's only Allah. That's not you." Subhanallah. And then uh, the Imam goes on to say. Malik was asked about the noble follower and Imam of the Jurist and Hadith scholars, uh, Ayyub al-Sakhtiyani, who narrated from Malik and Sufyan authority and others. He said, I have not narrated to you from anyone, save that Ayyub is the better of the two. Ayyub performed two pilgrimages and I, and I watched him closely. I heard nothing from him except that when he would mention the Prophet, he would cry so much that I would feel pity for him. After I saw him from him, after I saw from him what I saw in his magnification of the Prophet والسلام, I wrote hadith from him and narrated from him. Subhanallah. Before that, he's like, I don't know. 
But when I saw that, uh, the love of the Prophet in the true form, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So we're we're completing Alhamdulillah chapter five now. I'm not sure what uh, happened with the. Uh, it probably went into save mode. Let me see. Bismillah. Yeah, so we're we're done now. Alhamdulillah, with chapter five, we're inshallah going to now go into the meanings of the Ibrahimi prayer after we have lunch and 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 salat al dhuhr inshallah. So chapter six, uh, inshallah, hope to see all of you back. Let me see if this oh it's logged out. Yeah. Yes. Unfortunately, no. I heard it from another uh, scholar, but it, it wasn't in the book. Yes, inshallah. Inshallah, we can write it or. Uh, um, yes, inshallah. Yeah. But I'll recite it slowly now. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala dhatil Muhammadiyya wal al wa ghfir lana ma yakunu wa ma qad kan. And then we can reference it, inshallah, again. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alam. And while, while they're coming back, then I'll mention a few things. One is that, the, look at the blessing of the, the intention and the niyyah. Because when we came here, we in our hearts make the intention that we're doing i'tikaf in the masjid. So we've been here since 9 o'clock. Alhamdulillah, you get the reward of i'tikaf. And we, we're waiting for dhuhr prayer. So all that time we were here, we're actually in salat. And we're doing salat al nabi and we're doing salat al nafil SubhanAllah. So this is the blessing of intention that... You know, book, Sahih Bukhari starts with intention. That this amazing thing that we've been gifted because it shows the pr supremacy of the heart. Because the, that's where the repository of intentions are. So heart is the sultan, right? And there's, you know, songs written about, you know, how the heart is the, you know, the sultan. And, but they, they get their object wrong, right? That the, the heart belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by, because of the love, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his prophet, you love his prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And, and like that. So we're blessed to, to be able to make that intention and be in a good gathering. And also the other uh, amazing thing is that we what we're, we're seeing in, from his writings is that at tajriba to burhan, that experience is proof. So when we start to practice salawat and we experience those blessed things that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has promised uh, and in the small amount of hadith that we read, you can start to experience it khalas. It becomes a reality for you, and you know that. Um, and that's why uh, I'll say one more thing before we... I think more people are coming in, but uh, uh, Jami, he says a beautiful poem in, in Persian, and I'll translate it, inshallah. He says, Jahan roshanas az jamali Muhammad Dilam taza gasht az visali Muhammad Khusha majlisu masjidu khanaqahi he said the whole cosmos became in, enlightened from the beauty of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu And my heart became refreshed from my connection to Muhammad Sallallahu He says how blessed are those gatherings and masjids and uh, spiritual retreats like Khanaqa or Zawiyas where they're in it, people are saying Muhammad said and it was said. He said, or, you know, there's all talk of the Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu reports because he's the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Everything he's saying is truth. Everything that he's saying is taking us to Allah. So imagine this. You're reading one hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's Musil ilallah. Mm -hmm. One word of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi statement is Musil ilallah. It will take you straight to Allah. Mm -hmm. That's the power of his Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's words. Mm -hmm. And that's why he was given Utitul Jawami al-Kalim. I was giving compre comprehensive speech. And all of this is simply commentary, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Everything we could say is just commentary. The source and the reality of it is on the tongue of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where Allah inspired his blessed heart and tongue to say those be beautiful sayings, which inspires the hearts like no other, subhanAllah. And then, of course, his silence, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How much more could hearts sit swayed and moved, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to, to the point where people could count... You know, how much, what things he said. SubhanAllah. It's amazing, SubhanAllah, that his, his speech was very little, but his impact was great. And that's, that's another proof. at tajriba to burhan So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, give us tawfiq and inshallah, Habibi Sidi Mahdi, inshallah, will take it from here.
Nesta. Anything, Sidi, it's all yours. Before we uh, start the next session. Bismillah. Allah. No. Just a short one, inshallah, all we gather. Salatullah, salamullah, ala taha rasulillah. Salatullah, salamullah, ala yaseen habibillah. I envy the sand that met his feet. I'm jealous of honey, he tasted sweet Of birds that hovered above his head Of spiders who spun their sacred webs Salatullah, salamullah Ala taha rasulillah Salatullah, salamullah Ala yaseen habibillah To save him from his enemies I envy clouds born from the seas That gave him cover from the heat of a son whose life could not compete. Salatullah, salamullah, ala taha rasulillah. Salatullah, salamullah, ala yaseen habibillah. He taught us all to be God's slaves, and he will be the one who saves humanity from sinful pride. Muhammad has God on his side. Salatullah, salamullah, ala taha rasulillah. So on this day be blessed and say For he was born to grace our spring With lilies, flowers, life's ring earth In a dome of peace like his on earth Salatullah, salamullah Ala taha May Allah bless you, Sidi. Allah. And the last part, he says, uh, w with a green dome like his on earth, our teacher, he said that he was driving 580 on Dublin. He saw those hills, and then that was the last line that he needed to finish that poem. Oh, so he says, I saw those hills, he says, like his on earth, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And those beautiful hills, that's all. It reminds me of green dome. Everybody can see what they want to see. But, you know, it says, Al-Madad ala qadr al-mashhad. You gain according to how you see. So if you see these things with the sacred light and the sacred vision, khalas, Allah is the giver. And now the amazing thing is that we are also celebrating and enjoying the blessing. But it takes us to the next level is to celebrate the bestower of those blessings. Mm -hmm. That's the key. The al-mun'im subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
that Allah is providing all this. Allah has made all this. This whole world, alam, it's a ism ala. It means it's the tool by which you know Allah. So when we look out, that's what we see. Everything is pointing to Him. Everything, everything, subhanAllah. Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al-mursaleen. Habibina, shafi'ina, maulana Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. So, alhamdulillah, we are on session six. Before we dive into the book, which is uh, page uh, 154, where we left off, I want to share a little bit about, you know, obviously we're trying to memorize the Salat uh, Surajiyah, which is Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim taslima. Salat and taftahu lana abwaab al rida wa taysir wa tughliqu biha abwaab al sharri wa taysir. Anta Mawlana fa ni'am al Mawla wa ni'am al Nasir. And as we're memorizing this, we should, this very beautiful statement, uh, this memorization uh, uh, and, you know, inspiration that says, Hevlus satrain khayrum min qira'ati wa qira'in. He says to memorize two lines of something, two lines of something, and something little, is better than two camels full of knowledge. وَفَهْمُ سَطْرَيْنْ خَيْرٌ مِنْ حِفْظِ وِقْرَيْنْ But to understand two lines of something, two lines of poetry, two lines of something, right? Two lines of sacred knowledge. خَيْرٌ مِنْ حِفْظِ وِقْرَيْنْ is better than to memorize two loads of camels full of something, of knowledge. وَمُذَاكَرَةُ إِثْنَيْنْ خَيْرٌ مِنْ هَاتَيْنْ But two people sitting and studying together is better than all of those. This is what we're doing. We're doing mudhakara. I could be sitting in my office and just reading this. You could be reading this anywhere you want. You could be in front of the beach and reading it. But does it have the same flavor that we're setting or we're doing madhakara? I, I get inspiration from you. You get inspiration from me. Allah is doing all these things. The angels are here because of jama'ah. Yadullah ma'al jama'ah. Allah is with the group. Allah is with the group. His assistance, support, everything is with the group. One of our sheikhs from Mauritania, may Allah bless him, he's still here. Alive more than 100 now, alhamdulillah. We were driving, and this was the uh, first time he'd seen the uh, uh, express lane or the, you know, uh, what's another name for it? The express. Uh, yeah, the carpool. The express lane or carpool, right? And he said, Why are we going and they're waiting? And they, we told him, Sheikh, this is how it works. He said, Yadullah ma'al jama'ah. Allah is with the people. Allah is with It even shows it in the dunya. Allah. So that's the, this is the key. So mudhakaratu ithnayn, mudhakaratu ithnayn khayrun min hatayn. So people think, what's gatherings for? Gatherings is for this. The madad of Allah is with gathering. Allah made salatul jama'ah for what? Allah made salatul jama'ah fard for what? The, because yadkhul al musi'in fi barakat al muhsinin. Because on the day of Jummah, all the people are made. The walid, everybody, every, the righteous people and the most sinful people, they all have to come to Jummah, right? And because of the righteous people, the sinners are forgiven. They're all together. Allah looks at them as one eye. Allah looks at them as one way. And He forgives all of them by the barakah of those people. He's like, There are people that Allah will never, never make wretched the people who sit with them. This is the blessing of jama'ah. This is the blessing. We, we ne can never forget that. Al-jami'ah, Allah's name, the one who gathers. You have to gather our hearts, gather our distractions, move them all, make it one. Every time, make one. That's tawheed. Tawheed is about making one. The meaning of tawheed doesn't mean it's one. It's making one. Constantly make one. From multiplicity, come to one. From multiplicity, come to one. If you take your focus and you make it one. If you take all your worries and make it one. If you take... Anything, the creation, all the multiplicity, and you see that it's Allah, the one who did it all. He created it all. He's, you're making one. Now you're tasting tawheed. Now you're living it. And that's what this po poem, you know, all the meanings that could come from it. And then the other is the ayahs. We have to memorize them. In Allahu Malaikatahu, to the end of it, Surah uh, Ahzab, Ayah 56, and its relationship with this other ayah that SubhanAllah Sayyidina Abu Bakr uh, mentioned, and then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala revealed it, Ayah 43. هو الذي يصلي عليكم وملائكته ليخرجكم من الظلمات إلى النور وكان بالمؤمنين رحيما. And salawat that should be memorized. Of course, everyone should review salat al-Ibrahimiyah. And there's many wordings of it. 
There's many wordings of it. So the one that the Shaykh narrated is probably not as common. It says, Allah salli ala uh, Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad kama salli ta'ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad kama barik ta'ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ala Sayyidina Ibrahim fil alameen inna ka hamidun majid. So different wordings, but enjoy all of them. Learn what you can, practice it, make sure that you do it. And one of the things that one of our teachers mentioned was, if before you do your salawat, recite Quran. And then when you do your salawat, start with Salat al-Ibrahimiyah. Then do any other kind and at the end do Salat al-Ibrahimiyah. So you package it beautifully. You package it with, you're starting with Quran and the Sunnah of the Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Everything else is other people's love letters. Because the salawat is love letters. Salat, Shaykh Ibrahim, uh, Shaykh Abdullah, uh, it's, it's a love letter. He's showing his love for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he's making his duas fitted within the, the template of the salawat. Beautiful uh, way to do it. And then uh, some of the salawat that I regularly rec re recite, or we can share more, people, we can go around and, and mention that. Um, and we'll see based on time how we're doing with that. And that's, uh, like I mentioned, Salat al Munjia, which is a very famous one. You can look it up, Salat al Munjia. But it starts with Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Sayyidina Muhammad, Salat al Tunjina biha min jami ala huwali wa lafat. And it's very famous in North Africa. So each place ha tends to have a certain way that that you know gives them inspiration and they just stick to it and pass it on do that salawat inshallah it's a beautiful one and then some of the books that are dedicated to sira and salawat which some of them are here and i'll sh start to share some of those inshallah mm -hmm. so salat uh, sirajiya uh, uh, the prayer of sheikh abdullah sirajidin uh, we'll review it one more time. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim taslima. Salat and taftahulana abwab al rida wa taysir wa tughliku biha abwab al sherri wa taysir. Anta maulana fani'amal maula wa ni'amal nasir. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim taslima. Salatan taftahu lana abwaab al-rida wa taysir. Wa tughliku biha abwaab al-sharri wa taysir. Anta maulana fani'amal maula wa ni'amal nasir. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim taslima. Salatan taftahu lana أبواب الرضا والتيسير وتغلق بها أبواب الشر والتعسير أنت مولانا فنعم المولى ونعم النصير and then the books so some of the, obviously Sheikh Abdullah Sarraj Jadeen is dealing with the subject as a whole and trying to introduce it another one is these are all from the sunnah the, the salat and salam that came from the sunnah somebody already packaged it and it's a beautiful salat salam. And what my thing is that if I can't do it all the time, at least once in my life I've done all of them. So you know, so I will. This one I would recommend people try to get that. Inshallah. By the way, I'm not <laughs> endorsing or you know I'm not getting anything for this. It's just books that I benefit with that I would share. The other one is Sayyidina Habib Omar bin Hafiz, may Allah bless him, protect him. He has one where he joins between the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and prayer on the Prophet So that's another one. It's called Prayers Upon the Beloved. So for example, um, Allahumma ya basir, salli ala abdika wa habibika Sayyidina Muhammad Nabi al-Basir wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam taslima wa bihi basirni bika ya abdika tabsira. Oh Allah, all seeing and O oh Allah, you are the all-seeing. Send prayers and abundant peace upon your slave and beloved, our Master Muhammad, the Prophet of strong sight, and upon his family and companions, and through him, enormously grant me insight into you. So things like that. The other one is a very interesting new Sira book that I've benefited from a lot. It's called The Glimpses, uh, The Life of the Blessed Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Very interesting, very well written, mashallah. Um, enjoyed it a lot. And so it's a different uh, angle and much shorter than uh, some of the other Sira books. Because I feel like Sira and, and Salawat, everything, because Allah says in the Quran, Am lam fahum lahum He says, don't they know their Prophet and that's why they end up rejecting him? So knowing him is to love him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So knowing about him is, is tremendous and it increases our love in Salawat. And as the days of Hajj are coming on, prayers for forgiveness. This is the istighfarat of Sayyidina Hassan al-Basri radiallahu anhu. They say Sayyidina Hassan al-Basri met Sayyidina Ali. 
Yeah, and, and if you look in the chains of the spiritual paths, it goes to Sayyidina Hassan al-Basri, then Sayyidina Ali. So he's an amazing uh, 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 figure in the Muslim uh, uh, life. And alhamdulillah, everyone should learn about it, but also do the istighfarat, especially these uh, days of the hajjah that are coming, inshallah. Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We'll go to 153, inshallah. So here's a list of those again, just for everyone. I put them there. I forgot to mention actually Dalai al-Khairat, obviously. That's a, I don't know if it's been translated in English, but um, I thought I've seen one. But uh, Arabic, definitely it's famous and people read it uh, as a devotional practice, like I mentioned, like a word. Poem of the Cloak by Imam al-Busiri, the Bord al Sharif. Um, remembering the Beloved, if you can find it, it's a PDF. It's really amazing, mashallah. A lot of dhikr gatherings use it. And, um, you know, it's, it's something that is e easily accessible. Yes, good good question. So if you see the uh, bullet point two and the last one, Shimmering Light is a Diyal Lama by Sayyidina Habib Umar bin Hafid. He wrote that as just a Mawlid or Sirah story, um, much short. The Remembering the Beloved is a full with, with other poems, um, so many other things that are added alongside of it. But it starts with Shimmering Light. That's the thing. And Shimmering Light, this is another... Uh, uh, yes, see, you have a question. There's a blessing of, 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 you know, uh, being away from your home. So Sayyidina Habib Omar, right? He was in exile when his country was in war, and he was in Oman, and that's when he wrote this poem. Uh, if you see all the amazing things that have been done in Islamic history, many of them are people that they're away from home. And what will happen to us? The story of our life, right? is going to be because we were taken away from Jannah, brought to this earth. So we're writing our own book. Every single one of us, we are all writing our book. And that's what we want to return to Allah, because Allah says, Iqra kitabaka. Read your book. And if our book is going to be open, it's all Quran, it's all Salawat, it's all good things. We are istighfars, right? Amazing. Our book is going to be full with that. So that's the thing, is that when people are away from their comforts, then amazing things happen. You know, and that's that's a, one of the sunnas that we see, uh, some of the patterns that we see. So I was saying, Habib Omar wrote that, um, and many other things. Imam al Busiri went through a very difficult time in his life, and then Subhanallah, out of that came this amazing gem. For hundreds of years, all of the Muslims are benefiting from it. Similar things like that, and the life of the Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's a life of so much, so much struggle, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But all of his struggle is for the sake of Allah. He wouldn't change it, right? And all his ummah benefited from seeing all those stages of his life and, and knowing what he went through. And it's a solace for us. And that's why they said, Kullu musibatin ba'dika jalal ya Rasulullah. Everything, every calamity, every suffering, every anything after you, ya Rasulullah, it's nothing. The, his salah, see, it's a solace for the hearts. He, he وسلم, went through all these things that nobody could imagine. So that knowing him, understanding him, and his life is such an amazing story. That's why the seerah, it changed the hearts. They say that the, the Arabs that were educated, they were affected by the rhetoric and the, the eloquence of the Qur'an. But the non-Arabs, through the seerah, through the personality of the Prophet that's how they got it. They came through the through a fold of, of him, sallallahu alayhi wa That's why I read Jami just earlier. I said, Jahan Roshanat as Jamal, uh, Jahan Roshanat as, as Jahan, Jamal Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa This whole world became bright from him, sallallahu alayhi wa uh, uh, Even uh, Atar says, Ba'd azin goyim na'ati Mustafa, anke alam yaft az nurash safa. Sayyidi kawnayin, khatm al-mursaleen, akhir amad bu'ad fakhr al-awwaleen. He came last, but he's the pride of the first, sallallahu alayhi wa See, so everybody felt it. And that's how they expressed it. Alhamdulillah, on time we're doing good. Salat al-Ibrahimiyya, inshallah, 153. <clears throat> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The Shaykh uh, titled this chapter, Al-Kalam ala ma'ani al-Salat al-Ibrahimiyya, on the meanings of the Ibrahimi prayer. In the third point, in the third point, Mentioned regarding the statement of Allah Most High, indeed Allah and His angels sent prayers upon the Prophet we mentioned various wordings given to the Ibrahimi prayer. 
Now we must speak on its various meanings to educate the ignorant and remind the forgetful and complete the benefits. This prayer is sought after in the prayers offered to the Lord of the world so the person of prayer should endeavor to understand the meanings of the legislated statements in it just as he gains awareness of the secrets and objectives of the prayer. Here we shall mention only some of the meanings of the Ibrahimi prayer lest we overburden with details. Allah willing, we shall endeavor to explain the meanings of each word of the Ibrahimi prayer so that its meanings are made clear with each. We say and with Allah is all success. On the statement, so every, every, it starts off with Allahumma. He says, Allahumma, the meaning of Allahumma is O oh Allah. The letter meme at the end of the name replaces the Ya in the beginning. And this is from the unique qualities of the supreme name, Allah. Likewise, the supreme name can take on the Hamza when called saying, Ya Allah. Of its unique quality is that its Lam must be enunciated with Tafkhim. And which is, uh, you know, uh, as he calls it val valorization, and the particle of calling enters it along with the definite article. There are many uh, other uh, unique qualities for the supreme name mentioned and the appropriate uh, uh, sources. The opinion that the meme in Allahumma replaces the ya of calling is the view of Sibawaykh al Khalil and other scholars of the language. So we say, Allahumma, ya Allah. He goes on to say, al farra and those who followed him, these are the Imams of, of the language, among the Kufans, because there's two schools of, of language, the masters of Basra school and the Kufan school. Opine that the origin of Allahumma is, O oh Allah, grant us safety with goodness. That's what it means, Allahumma. Ya Allah, ummana bi khair. That is, grant us goodness. Then the particle of calling was omitted to make it lighter on the tongue. Then bi khair was omitted, then the object, us, the na and Allahumma, right? Allahumma, or no, and, and the na in amman, ummana, or uh, ammana he wrote, was omitted, so there remained umma, and the estimation was, Ya Allah, umma. Then the Hamza and umma was omitted due to the frequency of usage and supplication, and thus there remained Allahumma. SubhanAllah, it's a beautiful thing that Shaykh explained. Where are you going to find this? Some scholars said that the meme is like the wow, that indicates a plural. So when the supplicant prays saying Allahumma, it is as if he is saying, O oh, you who have gathered all of the beautiful names. It's as if we're saying that. This is because the wow is like the meme in that it is a letter in which the speaker places his two lips together during a pronunciation. So the Arabs use it as a sign for a plural and said that the first person plural pronoun, antum, and the third person plural pronoun hum, and so on. So th that, that meme is, is indicating that. And since the phrase Allahumma is an address, which is a type of request, it is not said Allahumma, all forgiving, all merciful. We don't say that. What is said, Allahumma ghfir lana warhamna. Allahumma ghfir li warhamni. Oh Allah, forgive me and have mercy upon me. Rarely does the particle of calling up enter upon it. As the author of the Khulasa, the Alfiya ibn Malik said, mostly it is Allahumma as a replacement, and irregular is Yallahumma. That's irregular in poetry. And this is found in the statement, uh, and he goes on to say a few other things. To supplicate with this name, Allahumma, is to supplicate with all of the divine names. Another bin Shumail said, whoever says Allahumma has called upon Allah with all of his names, glorified is he. Al-Hassan al-Basri, which, which we just mentioned, he said, Allahumma gathers the supplication with all of the names. Abu Raja al-Urturadi said, the meme is in his statement, Allahumma contains 99 of Allah's names. It is for this reason that the scholars and the Gnostics say, it is the supreme name, which if called upon with it, Allah will respond, and if asked by it, he will give. Salli ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa We mention elsewhere that the meaning of Allah sending prayers is as Abu Alia said, his lauding or praise of him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the presence of the angels. And Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhu, said, the prayer from Allah is mercy, and the prayer from the angels are their seeking of forgiveness. Of course, the prayer from Allah includes Praise, exaltation, mercy, affection, and generosity. All of these things are included in and part of his prayer. 
and it is commensurate with the rank of the object of prayer and his status, love and closeness with Allah. Now since our Master Muhammad وسلم, is the most beloved of those beloved to Allah and the closest of those close to him, and see, since he is the most noblest of the first and the last with the Lord of the worlds, it was uniquely chosen with a station shared by no others, the station of the Wasila, that is for no other servant but him, our Master Muhammad وسلم, who is alone in that station because of all of this, the prayers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon him are unique to him and commensurate with his lofty station that is above all other stations. No matter how much people attempt to comprehend it, estimate it, or perceive its true reality, they will not encompass its true description and light. As for Allah's prayer upon the believers who follow this noble messenger, it is according to their level of faith. They have obtained it by means of their following of the greatest master, sallallahu alayhi wa and the virtue of the follower is proportionate to his following of his leader. Abdullah bin Humayd ibn al-Mundir reported from Mujahid who said, when the verse, indeed Allah and his angels send prayers upon the Prophet was revealed, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said, Ya Rasulullah, never did Allah reveal any good upon you save that he caused us to share it with you. Afterwards the verse was revealed, it is he who sends prayers upon you as do his angels. Now if we go back a little bit, to Ibn Juzay al-Kalbi's, wallahi, this is one of the most beautiful uh, praise of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Let's look at it together. He says, I desire to extol the chosen one, but my, in but my ina inadequacy in comprehending his rank prevents me from doing so. How can I encircle the vast and overflowing ocean? How can I enumerate the countless grains of sand and stars? And even if all my limbs transformed into tongues, yet I would not approach even a fragment of his deserved praise. If entire universes were to compose tributes for him, still they would not fulfill even a sliver of his rightful due. So I remain silent, born of awe and reverence, and out of trepidation and esteem for the most distinguished one. How often eloquence is found within silence, and often speech leads to the censor of the speaker. He wrote this, see, probably in the 13th century, right? at the end of the 13th century. Ibn Juzayl Kalbi, he wrote an amazing tafsir of Quran too. And um, you know, he said, Habib Ali bin Muhammad al-Habshi who has a poem, he says, حَوَلْتُ أَنْ أَصِفَ الْحَبِيبَ بِبَعْضِ مَا فَهِمَ الْفُؤَادُ مِنَ الثَّنَى الْقُرْآنِ فَوَجَدْتُهُ لَا يَفِئُ بِذَرَّةٍ مِنْ عُشْرِ مِعْشَارِ الْعَطَرْ رَحْمَانِ He says, I tried to praise the Prophet Sallallahu right? Based on what my heart feels and knows. He says, but I, I found out that I cannot even do a tenth or a fraction of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did in the Quran for him. In Allahu malaikatu saluna. So many, so many. Right? One fifth of the Quran is mentioning the Prophet directly or indirectly. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yeah, so uh, so, so the hadith ends with Sayyidina Abu Bakr saying that, and then the hadith ends by the ayah being revealed. Afterwards, the verse was revealed. And then that was it, subhanAllah. So, yeah, Sayyidina Abu Bakr, very sagacious, and he knew. This is this is the, what I'm noticing. We, sh we should have a share in this too. Sallallahu alayhi wa So, then he goes on. So he said, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. And then here, he, now he puts them on t together. So Allahumma salli ala Muhammad or Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Now he's going to address something that is, is his uh, view on this. We have already presented the evidence for the recommendation to add Sayyiduna, our master before his noble name. As for the meaning of his name, noble name, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the scholars said that this noble name Muhammad is his most well-known name and has appeared in the Quran in numerous places. Allah Most High says Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Muhammad is not the father of any of you, rather he is the messenger of Allah in the seal of the prophets and Muhammad is but a messenger So in the earlier chapters, Shaykh was trying to get us to think that you know, it's good to say Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Now, no, the, 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 the wording in the hadith came as Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. So it depends on how people feel, but no matter what, his name is praise itself, he's the most praised. He's automatically praised. 
Yeah, the, the the companions automatically their name is praised. Everybody's all, those people are already praised. Radiallahu anhum, radiallahu anhum, radiallahu anhum. Allah says in the Quran, right? Allah was pleased with them. So in that case, you know, the Sheikh wanted to you know share his opinion. He he says we should add that, and this noble name is taken from an adjective, and it means that he is the one who is praised time and time again without end. And the praise given to him is not subject to limit. This honorable name indicates an, abs an abundance of praise in a large number of those who praise him. And it also indicates an abundance of things within him that merit praise. This is because his name falls under the pattern of uh, Mufa'al, with a double enunciation on the middle letter. Muhammad Mufa'al. That's the wazn. It is said that someone is Mu'adham. Same, same wazn. Same pattern. Mu'adham, Mubajjal, Mukarram. Right? Makkatul Mukarrama. Right? When, uh, uh, same thing. Uh, there's an, uh, many others. When his exaltation, veneration, honor, and praise is abundant and oft repeated time and time again. Now, that's, you know, imagine like it's proof that all these centuries, right? SubhanAllah, what do, how do, you know, what, what's making people do it? Subhanallah, right? Because it could be like that time's over, no one's going to remember it. But Allah is doing it constantly, praising Him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And now all of the creation, there's so many millions of salawat every day. So many people mention Him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's a sign that He, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is, is what a fa'na like a dhikrak. He's always remembered and, and praised. And then the Imam goes, on to say on page 162, the leader of the believers, Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Wajha Waradiyan, who described the Prophet Sallallahu saying, I saw neither before him nor after him anyone like him. Abu Huraira said, I never saw anything more beautiful than the Messenger of Allah. It was, it was as if the sun shined from his face. Rubaiya bin, Mu, Mu, uh, bin Mu'awad was asked, Describe for us the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She said, O son, had you seen him, you would have never seen the sun rising. Uh, o son, had you seen him rising, you would have seen the sun rising. Sunan al-Tirmidhi. Hind, uh, Hind bin Abi Hala said the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu had great and stately attributes and was honored as such by others. His face shined like the light of the full moon. Our Lady Aisha radiallahu anha said, of all people, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had the handsomest face and the brightest color. No one would describe him without comparing his face to the full moon. The beads of sweat on his face were like pearls and more fragrant than musk. When the inhabitants of Medina received the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the day of migration, they sang Tala al Badr alayna. Should we do it? Tala al Badr alayna min thaniyat al wada wajab al shukr alayna mada alilahida. You've heard this poem many times, and it says that we, we from the valley of wada, right? No one translates it. But wada in Arabic means departure, where you say salam, where you say goodbye to someone. But the Prophet is entering Medina, why are they meeting him at the place of departure? It's a beautiful thing that Allah designed. Because it's as if it's saying that they're saying goodbye to their old selves. The Prophet is coming now, they have a new self. Everything about them is new. The city is even new. His light is coming in. And the whole city is brand new. It's a. It's not. A, it's yet. It's not Yathrib no more. You can call it historically Yathrib, but now it's Medina Munawwara. And the people that are, are getting in contact with them, they become Munawwara. They become enlightened. They become shining. They're not, not the same person again. They see. They see themselves in a way that they they never thought imaginable, because the Prophet Sallallahu He's the light, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So circles of light, one of the meanings is the light is the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So it's the majalis of Rasulullah, it's the majlis of Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And one of the inspirations for this was, there's this amazing student of Sayyidina Habib Mumar, one of the early students, his name was Habib Mundir al-Musawa, and he lived in Jakarta, Indonesia. And he, was, he said that he was far from anything religious. But something happened, and uh, SubhanAllah, next thing you know, he's, uh, he's at the door of Habib Mumar. 
Subhanallah. And he becomes from one of his best students. And then he uh, went back to give da'wah and help people and benefit the community. And Subhanallah, when they asked him, what should, he, what should we call the gatherings? He said, he thought about it, he said, Majlis Rasulillah, it's the gathering of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Let's just call it that. To the point where every gathering was millions and hundreds of thousands of people coming to benefit. And that was how I benefited so much from his watching his, his, his gatherings. SubhanAllah. It's, it's incredible. Uh, just one heart that moved. One heart that, you know, had the pure intention, inshallah, our intentions are pure. To, may Allah make them so that this effect can happen. Change the people's life. Give them hope. Give them a new vision because the valley of wada, it's not gone. We can continue to do it. And that's why in the Mawlid at the standing we say, Marhaban ya nur aini, marhaba. We're welcoming the Prophet. To what? Because we're saying departure to our old self. The person that you were even an hour ago, if you had something that you didn't like, you have a chance to re renew yourself. Tajdeed, what we talked about. Tajdeed of ourself. We could do that anytime we want. Anytime you make istighfar, anytime you do any of the dhikr that you have, you're renewing yourself. And it's all through the door of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he's the door of Allah. He taught everything. So everything is coming back to him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then Sayyidina Shaykh Abdullah Siraj al-Din goes on to talk more about the Salawat. So we reached ala Sayyidina Muhammad. He says, the scholars have disagreed over who is meant by the household of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in the Ibrahimi prayer. The majority of scholars say that they are those who are forbidden from accepting zakat. They, or, uh, I mean, uh, charity, he says, in this case, sadaqah. They deduce this position from the narration of Al-Bukhari in his rigorously authentic collection from Abu Huraira, who said, freshly ripened dates would be brought to the Messenger of Allah وسلم, by different people until he gathered a large quantity. And once Al-Hasan and Al-Hussein were playing with the dates when one of them took a date and it placed it in his mouth. So, I, and then the Prophet وسلم, said, no, you shouldn't do that because that could be sadaqah. And the story of Salman al-Farsi is the same thing. Because Sayyidina you know, Salman al-Farsi, he traveled right all over the world trying to look for the righteous people of his time. Finally, when he let, met the last person, he told them, I'm very you know, close to death. You need to go somewhere else. He said, go to the place where there's date palms and this and that, basically describing Yathrib of that time. So he goes there and on the way, he becomes enslaved. SubhanAllah. His, look at that. Right? And that's why they say, you know, that sometimes love brings those, those things about. You have to be, right, the, the, the path of love has those, those tests and tribulations. So he's going there, and then he's, you know, working on these date palm trees as a, for, you know, for this person. And one time he's up there, and they're talking about it, and he, he knows they're talking about the Prophet. So then finally he comes down, and he says, what are you guys talking about? And the guy gets mad, and he slaps him. And he tells him, this is not your thing, go. And so Sayyidina Salman, you know, tries to find a way. And finally, he finds a way to the Prophet Sallallahu And he goes, and the first time he meets him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he takes dates and he says, this is Sadaqah. And the Prophet Sallallahu passes it to the companions. And then the next time he takes it, he says, this is Hadiyah, it's gift. And then the Prophet Sallallahu partakes and gives the companions. And then when he was leaving, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, he said, what about the third sign? He wanted to see the seal of prophethood. He said, here is that, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is the beauty of the, the seerah. We have to always be reading the seerah. And then he says about this, um, that one of the scholars mentioned, Zaid replied, indeed his women folk are from his house, household, but the people of his household are also, also those who are forbidden from accepting charity after him. He asked, who are they? He replied, they are the household of Ali, the household of Aqil, the household of Ja'far, and the household of Al-Abbas. He, Ibn Sabur, asked, are all of them forbidden from accepting charity? He replied, yes. Some of the scholars were of the view that the household of Muhammad وسلم, in the Ibrahimi prayer are his wives and offspring. This opinion was mentioned by Ibn Abdul Barr and Tamheed, and the evidence for which they deduce it is found in the rigorously authentic collection of Imam Muslim and others from Abu, Abu Humayd al-Sa'idi. Some scholars were of the view that the household of Muhammad وسلم, mentioned in the Ibrahimi prayer are the entire Ummah of response, Ummah al-Ijaba. Because the Ummah of the Prophet is split into two categories. There's the people that 
need to be invited, Ummatul Da'wah, and then there's the people who accepted the invitation, Ummatul Ijabah. So he said, whenever you say Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad, in this opinion it means all his entire ummah that accepted. So we all get that. On top of that, huwa alladhi yusalli alaykum wa malaykat. Then he says, the author of Jala al-Afham said, this was mentioned by Ibn Abdul Bar from some of those people of knowledge. He said, the earliest of those from whom this opinion is reported is Sayyidina Jabir bin Abdullah. And Al-Bayhaqi mentioned this on his authority. It was also re reported from Sufyan al and others. It was the preferred opinion of some of the colleagues of Imam al-Shafi. And this was reported from al-Shafi too by, and he goes on to say many things. Radiallahu anhum ajma'in. So we have Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Now, kama. Now what does the, the kama mean? On the similarity, just as you. He says, on the similarities found in the Ibrahimi prayer, um, in the supplication of this, uh, of this prayer, the author of Fathul Bari said, Ibn Hajar, thereafter uh, mentioned, um, he said the first answer, the aforementioned likening is only with regards to the basis of the prayer and not in the stature and modality. So he's saying, just as you prayed on him, pray on, on the Prophet ﷺ, right? But it doesn't mean that it's, it, it, they're equivalent. It's just same prayer. It's prayer, prayer, but what kind of prayer? They're not the same. This is akin to Allah's statement, indeed, we revealed unto you as we revealed unto Nuh and the prophets after him. So was it the same? Can we compare? No, subhanAllah. This likening is with respect to the basis of revelation and not in the stature or superiority of the one receiving revelation. This is also similar to Allah's statement, and do good as Allah has done good unto you. Undoubtedly, no one is able to do good in the same amount of Allah's goodness towards him. So what is meant here is the basis of goodness. Allah says, Hal jazawul ihsan illa ihsan. Is the ihsan of Allah the same as our ihsan? Never. So that's why he's saying it's on that basis. Then he goes on to say, radiallahu anhu, why Ibrahim alayhi salam was even mentioned in that like, so why our master, the intimate friend al-Khalil, Ibrahim alayhi salam was mentioned to the exclusion of the other prophets? The scholars responded to this issue with many different answers. Here we will mention some of them bearing in mind that each of them has the possibility of being the intended meaning and that they are not mutually exclusive. One, the reason that the reason why the intimate friend was mentioned in the Ibrahimi prayer, now I want you to be very careful, listen to this, was in order to requeet, right, or to pay him back in full for his having sent salam upon this Muhammadan ummah along with the master of mankind, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, during the night of the miraculous journey. This is mentioned in the hadith reported by Imam al-Tirmidhi rahimullah from Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu who said, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, I met Ibrahim alayhi salam on, on the night in which I was taken on the journey. He said to me, O Muhammad, convey my salams to your ummah and inform them that paradise possesses good, fertile soil and fresh water and its saplings are planted by saying, Subhanallah, all praise belongs to Allah. There is no God but Allah and Allah is the greatest. And if At-Tabarani added in his report, and there is no might or power saved by Allah. So if we do the same thing, we can do it in Salat al-Tasbih. People should do that at least once a year. Right? SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, Wa la ilaha illa, Wa Allah Akbar, Wa la hawla, Wa la quwata illa billahi la illa. So this is the, the kama, he's saying, one meaning is that it's because we want to uh, pay him back, uh, uh, alayhi salam, for that salam that he gave us. And what some of our teachers would say, then we should also give him salam back. So we should say, Wa alayka salam, Ya Sayyidina Ibrahim. That you gave us a salam, we, at least once in our life we return his salam. That Ibrahim alayhi salam thought of us and sent us his salam. Then he goes on to give more details about that and says, The fifth reason, the reason why our master Ibrahim alayhi salam was chosen specifically for mention and likening is because he is the best of the prophets after our master Muhammad alayhi salam. He is a merciful father because the name Ibrahim is a Syriac word that in Arabic trans translates into a merciful father. So Ibrahim salam means merciful father. And he is the intimate friend of the all merciful. He's Al-Khalil, Khalil al-Rahman. As Allah informed us, and he is the elder of the prophets. Allah called him a leader 
And when his Lord tried Ibrahim with words and he fulfilled them, he said, Indeed, I am going to make you a leader for the people. He also called him a nation unto himself. Indeed, Ibrahim was a nation unto himself. The meaning of nation here is a completed example and a teacher of goodness. He also called him devoutly ob obedient. He was devoutly obedient and upright. The devout person is the one who obeys the commands of Allah and is careful to stick to his obedience. The upright person, Hanif, is the one who turns completely to Allah and turns away from other than him. Undoubtedly, the leader of leaders and the nation above all nations is our master Muhammad Sallallahu behind whom all of the prophetic leaders prayed, the prophets and messengers entirely on the night of the miraculous journey to Jerusalem. Likewise, he Sallallahu is the leader of the leaders in the world and he is their leader in the hereafter as he openly announced when speaking of Allah's bounties upon him on the day of resurrection, I shall be the leader of the prophets, their spokesman and their intercessor and that is no boast. So we got two meanings out of many. Now on the meaning of barik, wa barik. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Sayyidina Muhammad kama sallaita ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali Sayyidina Muhammad. The etymology of blessings, barakah, indicates two things. One, establishment and continuance. What a, a blessing that comes one time and doesn't come back again, right? Imagine that it's, it's Allah is giving you it permanently, that blessing. And two, increase in growth. Everything that is established and set is, bla is blessed, is, is Mubarak. And al-birka, birka with a kasra, on the letter ba is like a basin it's for water. It is said that it is given that name because of the presence of water within it. Now it is said that something that has baraka if it possesses increase in growth. And tabrik is to pray for barakah. So instead of saying like, you know, congratulations, a congratulations in Arabic would be tabrik. It is said Allah increased it, barakallahu, that the people of the hellfire and those around it are increased. It is also said Allah places blessings in it, barakallahu fihi, in which we, we place blessings. He placed blessings upon him. And we place blessings upon him in his haq. And it is said, May Allah bless him, barakallahu lahu. And same dua of marriage, right? Barakallahu lakuma wa baraka alaykuma wa jama'a baynakuma fi khair. All these are meanings of baraka. Then the Imam goes on to say, the statement fil alameen. So he, we did it. So, wa baraka ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad, kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. In Hamidun Majid, another narration says, Fil Alameen in Hamidun Majid. So what does the Alameen mean? Fil Alameen. Al Hafid Imam al Sakhawi Rahimullah Ta'ala. This was the student of Ibn Hajar Asqalani. He said, Radiallahu an, in his statement, in the worlds, Fil Alameen, he alluded to the spreading of prayers and blessings upon Ibrahim in the worlds and the spreading of his nobility and exaltation, and that what is sought for our Prophet is a prayer that resembles that prayer, and a blessing that resembles that blessing in its famousness and dissemination among the creation. Allah the Exalted said, and we left for him among the latter ones, peace be upon Ibrahim. So Allah honored his intimate friend, made him famous, and spread his praise in the world. However, Allah elevated the mention of his noblest beloved above all and place his praise in all of the world from the first to the last as he وسلم, said I am the noblest of the first and the last in the sight of my Lord and that is no boast the word alamin is joined with a plural its singular form is alam by which something is known such as the word khatim seal by which something is sealed tabi' stamp by which something is stamped the word for world is given the name alam because it is a sign for its creator who made it. So it is an alam, something by which its a creator and sustainer is known. So somebody who, 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 who uses the alam right to know that, then they become what? Any guesses? The young people? Huh? Yeah. Alim. alim. They become an alim. SubhanAllah. They become alim. Then he goes on to say, Radiallahu 
So the word alamin includes every category of creation. The physical realm, the alam al-mulk, the spiritual realm, alam al-malakut, and the divine realm, alam al-jabarut. So he's saying fil alamin in all of those realms. It also includes the angelic world, the human world, and the world of jinn. It also includes all of the souls in the spirit world, the world of creation, the world of command, alam al-amr, and the worlds whose numbers cannot be enumerated by any save Allah. SubhanAllah. The Most High said, and none know the hosts of your Lord save He. Further investigation into types of these words shall sh appear in a separate book, inshallah. And I don't know if he, he ever got a chance to write it. A world is a sign that points, points to its creator and by it Allah's tremendous power, His encompassing knowledge of all things, and His wisdom over everything are known. The Most High said, It is Allah who created the seven heavens and earths like them. He reveals the command between them that you may know that Allah is all-powerful all powerful over all things and that Allah has encompassed everything in knowledge. The Most High said, The creation of Allah who per perfected everything. And this is the creation of Allah. That is, this is the creation of Allah that you witness. So how can you fail to attest to the right of its creator and bear witness that there is no God but Allah? For it is the truest and most veracious statement or testimony because its signs are innumerable and its corroborating witnesses cannot be delineated. Researching this long and drawn out, so we will discuss it in its appropriate place, Allah willing. Then he has in the Hamid Majid to wrap up this on the conclusion of the prayer. This research covers two issues one, the meaning of Hamid and the name Al Majid and the distinction between them and the two relationship between these two names and the closing of the Ibrahimi prayer. As for the meaning of Al-Hamid and Majid, Hafidha Imam Abdurrahman al-Sakhawi, radiallahu anhu, he was blessed actually to die in Medina. He's buried in Baqiya. One day I was passing by Baqiya and all, all, only thing was coming to me, Abdurrahman al-Sakhawi. His name was just coming to us. I just made dua for him because we make dua for everybody in general. But at that day I felt, you know, a special love for him. He wrote Al-Qawl al-Badi'ah for Salati al habib al-Shafi'ah. A lot of this book is based on that original work. Al-Hamid comes from the morphological scale of Fa'il. It matches that pattern and means the praiseworthy, praiseworthy but is deeper in meaning than, uh, than, than but, it, but is deeper in meaning than it. Um, and the praiseworthy is the one who possesses the most complete attributes of praise. It has also been said that it means Al-Hamid who, al -hamid, who praises the actions of his servant. And Al-Majid is from the world, word Majd, which is the attribute of generosity. It is also possible that the meaning of the name Al-Hamid uh, is Al-Hamid, for he has always and shall forever praise and laud himself. That's why that, that, that famous uh, start or... Praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Subhanaka la nuhsi thana'an alayk, anta kama athnayta ala nafsik. We can't, glor glory be to you, we can't praise you as you have praised yourself. And the humanity was incapable of praising Allah until Allah showed us in the Quran and said, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Say it. Then we follow Allah's pattern. And in all the other patterns, we follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right? But when it comes to salawat, we follow Allah in that. In Allah wa malaykatu yusalluna ala nabi. This is an amazing uh, thing also, that we're following the, 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 the pattern that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala left behind for us to follow. And then he said, and the Prophet sallallahu said, Exalted are you, I cannot enumerate your praises, you are as you have praised yourself. Allah is al-Hamid praising his servants when they do good works and when they are righteous and sincere. He praises and lauds them and thanks them for that. As he said, what does Allah have with punishing you if you are thankful and believe? And Allah is gracious and all-knowing. He says to the inhabitants of the paradise, indeed this is a reward for you and your efforts are thanked. SubhanAllah, Allah is shakur. And Allah praised his good doing servants saying, those who spend in times of difficulty and ease and those who can control their rage and those who pardon the people and Allah loves the good doers. As for the meaning of al-majid, it is etymologically derived from the word majd, which in indicates the attributes of divine rigor and tremendousness and encompassment and nobility. It corresponds to the morphological pattern fa'il, which takes the meaning of the subject doer fa'il. So when we say Majid, we actually are saying Majid, like it's Fa'il. 
Allah said, and by the magnificent Quran, Quran Majid. Quran Majid. And it also permissible for it to take the meaning of an object that is magnified in the higher and lower assembly. Just as he is exalted and declared transcendent, in the hadith it reads, so when the servant says, the master of the day of judgment, when we say in Fatiha, Maliki Yawmiddin, Allah Most High, what is his response? My servant has magnified me, so he is the glorious, the glorified. Then the Imam closes here with the wisdom behind sending prayers on the Prophet ﷺ when sitting in the ritual prayer. So why, why, why do we do it when we're standing? Why do we have to do it when we're sitting? Uh, the School of Islamic Teachings, SIT. That's what Shaykh Abdullah Sarajuddin named it. Sit. Why? What, what's the secret in that? He says, the believer who endeavors to gain insight into the legal commands of Allah might be confused about the reason why salutations during the sitting of the ritual prayer are sent upon the Prophet ﷺ before prayers. As the Messenger of Allah ﷺ taught, salutations are sent upon him within the testification of the prayer, and the prayers are sent upon him after that. And that gives precedence to the salutations over the sending of prayers upon him. So how can this be reconciled with the command to send prayers upon him before salutations? He goes on to say, um, so, uh, this, uh, this is the, um, he goes on to say, firstly, there are tremendous wisdoms for mentioning the salutation before the sending of prayers. Prayers offered to Allah gather worship and servanthood for the entire body and all of the parts and senses as well as the heart. And each body part has its own unique portion of worship and servanthood for every part of the person engaged in prayer moves in worship of Allah out of humility, lowliness, and servanthood. So when the person engaged in prayers completes these acts of worship and these movements of standing, bowing, and prostration, his prayers concluded by sitting before the Lord of the worlds. See, like, for example, you know, the, there's a very powerful word, namaz. Namaz comes from an old Sanskrit word which the same, shares the same word as namaste. It means I bow to you, I respect you. So this is a, when we do it formally, we're doing it devotionally out of worship for Allah. It's a part of bowing. That's why we call it namaz or salat. So he said we have all these movements in there. And these movements of standing, bowing, and prostration, his prayers concluded by sitting before the Lord of the worlds with a sitting of worship containing humility, brokenness, and lowliness before the exaltedness of, the, of Allah, the sitting of a lowly servant before his mighty Lord. Then permission is granted to this servant to praise his mighty Lord with the loftiest praises of uh, forms of praise, at tahiyyatu lillah, wa salawatu, wa tayyibatu. Okay. And if you see, look at that, of uh, the, 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 the sitting, right? It's also because it's, it's completing the whole prayer. Completing the whole prayer. And we found out when you're doing dua, right, that you should uh, do prayers, uh, praise of Allah and prayer on the Prophet ﷺ. And then when we're finished, it's also recommended, right, don't rush away from your prayer. Mm -hmm. Now sit quietly, sit humbly, lowly, and wait for your prayer to be accepted before you rush away. So that's why we say, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. Like what we just put forward, <laughs> has mistakes in it. It's deficient. But that's what we can do right now. So we're asking you for forgiveness and acceptance. Then we walk away from the prayer. So it's all these etiquettes, these manners that the adab is what the, what the key is. You know, in Turkish mosques, if you enter many of them, they say, adab yahu. Mm -hmm. Say, oh Allah, give us adab. Mm -hmm. Anytime we enter in sacred places, it's asking adab yahu. Mm -hmm. And if you take the word adab and you Spell it backwards, it, it's alif, dal, ba. But if you spell it backwards, it's ba, da, alif. That means to start. That means that ev, the, ad, the proper adab is to start with adab. Everything should be start with adab. The adab is to praise Allah. The adab is to praise the Prophet The adab is to treat each other like everyone is khidr. Everybody is important. Everybody is respected and loved. Then he says, Secondly, the prayer is, as, as the Prophet ﷺ said, the prayer is a ritual act of drawing close. Fasting is a shield, and charity extinguishes misdeeds just as water extinguishes the fire. So prayer is a mighty act of closeness, drawing one near to Allah, the exalted. Prayers offered to Allah contain many levels of worship that draw the servant close to Allah. Within his prayer, the servant moves from one spiritual level to another, and from one state of closeness to another, and so on 
as the Prophet وسلم, said, the closest a servant is to his Lord is when he is prostrate. So every state in the prayer is closeness to Allah, but the state in which the servant is closest to his Lord is during his prostration. Then the person engaged in prayer sends salutations of peace upon himself from his Lord. Assalamu alayna. All of us. And upon the righteous servants of Allah from the inhabitants of the heavens and earth. He begins by sending salutations of peace upon himself before, uh, before them because that is more important. That is because man is to begin with himself and then his dependents. We have to, right? We have to, in that station, you have to save yourself. Assalamu alayna. Prayer, all, peace be upon all of us. He says, salutations of peace upon us and upon Allah's servants. In other words, from the inhabitants of the heavens and the earth, as was mentioned in the rigorously authentic hadith. And this same thing we don't forget in the in the Surah Fatiha, because uh, Surah Fatiha is it plural or or or, or, or uh, is it uh, singular or plural? When we say iyak and abudu, we say we, if it was singular, it would be iyak abudu. But we say, we worship you. So who's the we? The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is the Imam. He's the leader of all of them. Then all the Prophets. And then, and then, and then I'm just this person that's in with that circle. The circle of light of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we're, we're that one person, but I'm with them. هُمُ الْقَوْمْ لَا يَشْقَى بِهِمْ جَلِيسُهُمْ No one, not, when you're with them, you're safe. So we say, we worship you. And Shaykh Abdullah, uh, Shaykh Al-Islam Abdullah Ansari of Herat, he said, this is a claim. Iyak and Abudu is a claim that we worship you. How could you claim that you worship Allah? Have you? He said, but Allah got us out of it. What But the support and aid is from you. So we alhamdulillah got out of it. We just, we're doing what, our servanthood, but we're making no claims. We do our love, but we make no claims. That's why, you know, Jami has that Tanam Farsuda John Para, Zihijran Ya Rasulullah, right? And then he comes and says, uh, uh, he says the, Allahumma salli alayhi. Basically, he's saying the same thing. I make no claims. I'm talking about love, but I don't know what love is, and I'm not claiming that I'm a lover. Right? Yeah. Something like that. And then he says, radiallahu anhu, then the person engaged in prayer utters the testimony, ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad rasulullah, and, ask, and asking Allah his messenger, when, uh, bearing witness and asking Allah, His Messenger وسلم, and all of the righteous servants to bear witness to His testimony that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad is a servant and messenger of Allah. In other words, the Prophet is His servant brought nigh and His uh, beloved Messenger who attained the noblest station of worship, servanthood, and inner servitude to Allah. He is the master of the servants and the leader of the devout worshippers. That's why in the Isra Mi'raj, Subhanallah Asra, bi Nabihi, bi Rasulihi, bi Abdihi. By his servant. He took his servant. Glory be to the one who took his servant. The Prophet ﷺ is the most blessed servant of Allah. Then all those other things, yeah. Then he goes on to uh, talk about the secrets of the salutations upon him. From the secrets of the salutations upon him found in the testification is that its wording is in the most complete and best of forms. It gathers the various forms of salutations, mercy, and divine blessings. This entails the great honor and exaltation of his status, which is above the station of fathers, the self, and all people entirely. As the Most High explicitly said, the Prophet is more worthy of, the, of believers than their own selves. And then a poet said, Your likeness is before my eyes and your mention is on my lips. Your abode is in my heart, so to where will you disappear? And how excellent is the one who said, Indeed, you reside in a heart, a heart without need for lamps. Indeed, you visit the sick, and Allah has granted him relief. Your face that is longed for is our proof. On the day people come with proofs, your pure law is our direction, the best path of the traveler. Yeah. Wajhuka al See, that's the one. Wajhuka al that, that's a famous nasheed. Maybe we can sing that one. But that's that's where that poem comes from. And then he goes on, he talks about other poetry, mashallah, and praise of him. It's so beautiful. May Allah have mercy upon the one who said, O you who resides in my heart through the vicissitudes of time, O you who are distant from my looking and my vision, 
You are unto me as my soul, for if I see it not, it's it is still nearer to me than everything, every close thing. The righteous uh, Sheikh Musa Darir informed us that he was once riding upon a ship in the sea. He said, We are assailed by a powerful wind they had called Al Iqlabiya, and which seldom left people survivors behind survivors who did not drown. As we were battling against the fierce winds, I was come overcome by sleep, and in my sleep I saw the Prophet ﷺ and he said to me, There's your answer. You, you had asked, Who wrote this Salatul Munjiya? This is the answer. <laughs> Now he's telling us, so it came that Al-Fajr al-Munir by Sheikh Musa Darir informed us that he was the one on a ship. And he said, I, because of that worrisome event, I was overcome by sleep and in my sleep I saw the Prophet ﷺ and he said to me, tell the passengers in the ship to say the following uh, prayer upon me 1,000 times. O oh Allah, send prayers upon Muhammad, a prayer that will deliver us from every, uh, from every tribulation and terrifying affair, which will fulfill for us every need, which will purify us from every sin, which will raise us to the loftiest spiritual degrees, and which will cause us to attain the most laudable aims in all matters of goodness in this life and after death. Okay. So there you go. That's the answer to it. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولو دوا فذا بارك إن شاء الله مسلا على سيدنا محمد وعلى سيدنا محمد صلاة تجينا بها من جميع له وعلى ولا فات وتقضي لنا بها جميع الحاجات وتطهرنا بها من جميع السيئات وترفعنا بها عندك على الدرجات وتبلغنا بها صلوات من جميع الخيرات في الحياة وبعد الموات وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا إنك على كل شيء قدير وبالإجابة الجدير وأنت حسبنا ونعم المكيل نعم المولى ونعم النصير. and to close here the Gnostic Sheikh uh, uh, Sayyid Ahmed al-Sawi said in his commentary on the prayers of, the, uh, of Imam al-Dardir that the reason why the book Dalail al-Khairat was written was because its author, Sheikh Muhammad bin Sulaiman al-Jazuli rahimullah, was preparing for the prescribed prayer which had entered. And he had stood up to perform ablutions but could not find a bucket for fetching water from the well. Right at that moment he looked up and saw a young girl atop a building and she asked him, who, who are you? He told her who he was and then she said, You're that man everyone keeps praising, but here you are flustered because you cannot find a way to get water out of the well. Right at that moment the young girl spat into the well, whereupon water overflowed from it and spilled out onto the ground. After he completed his ablution, Imam al-Jazuli asked the girl, "How, uh, I adjure you by Allah, how have you attained the station of yours? She said, by sending abundant prayers upon the Prophet SubhanAllah. Abundant prayers on the one who, when he would walk upon the dry earth, the beasts would trail behind him, seeking blessings. Hearing this, Imam al-Jazuli swore an oath that he would write a book on prayers upon the Prophet, and that's why he did Dalai al-Khairat. And the author now concludes by saying, Says Abdullah, the author, the one pour unto Allah, al faqir al Allah. Allah the Most High inspired me to compose some pu couplets of divine entreaty and praise of the Prophet. Space does not allow me to quote it in full, but I will mention a portion thereof. When Allah Most High honored me to reside near our Master, Muhammad وسلم, and the supreme soul of our souls, in light of our visions and apple of our eyes, the supreme beloved, وسلم, I said, he calls him Al-Habib Al-Azam Sallallahu O heart, glad tidings to you for days of good pleasure returned in this abode of the choice servants that has gathered. Do you not behold the gentle breezes of the living that waft with fine fragrant scent and resplendent flashes of love? Live happily with never-ending union with the one you love, with the veils of distance raised. Witness the other beauty of the one for whose sake the hearts of the lovers split asunder from its light. Be of good cheer for attaining what you hope for upon the brow of the elect prophet as the sun of the forenoon shined. Be joyous over the grace he gave you from his generosity for you would ask of him and lo, the clouds have released their downpour. Convey your salutations from up close, from direct witnessing to the son of being whose lights are resplendent. Gather your heart together, be present and listen carefully with propriety for perhaps you hear the glad tidings of response and what is in store. 
wa sallallahu ala sayyidina wa mawlana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin jazallahu anna sayyidina Muhammadan sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ma huwa ahlu jazallahu anna sayyidina Muhammadan sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ma huwa ahlu jazallahu anna sayyidina Muhammadan sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ma huwa ahlu wa afdala ma huwa ahlu subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala mursalin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin inshallah we'll leave the closing dua for later but uh sidi mahdi will maybe some nasheed sidi bismillah and when we do the the summary, we want your thoughts to see. Inshallah. If you want to stretch your legs and then join me, inshallah. Bismillah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad Ya Rabbi salli alayhi wa sallim Allahumma salli ala Muhammad Ya Rabbi salli alayhi wa sallim Inqila zurtum di barajatum ya
يا رسول الله خذ بيدي مسنجرز إمام and prophecies and Allah Allah you're the door to God on you on you I depend so in the hereafter and in this land Allah Allah messenger of God take me take me by the hand ya Imam al-Rusli ya Sanadi Allah Allah anta babu Allah One of the sons of Aleppo, mm -hmm. in the Sheikh Abdullah Siraj al Din's land, blessed land. Mawlana Rumi loved Aleppo. He had a beautiful time in there. Subhanallah. Amazing land, mashallah. May Allah bring peace to the Levant. Inshallah, all the brothers and sisters and, and people that are suffering in Palestine, everywhere else, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring relief to the ummah of the Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inshallah, that they can rejoice in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that they have the peace and security to be able to think and reflect. And on the blessings of Allah ta'ala, may Allah remove their difficulties. May Allah bring unity and happiness and joy to the ummah of the Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to all of humanity. Wallahi, everyone needs the light of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Everyone needs to know the teachings of the Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's light, it's cure, it's guidance, it's everything. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli alayhi. So before inshallah we wrap up because we're very close to closing inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all for your patience, for you know being on this journey with us. Alhamdulillah we covered a you know, the abridgment of a full book alhamdulillah. And uh, inshallah we'll continue to do more things. Um, before we do a quick summary, here's some, inshallah, upcoming events, inshallah. So a beautiful book on the life of Sayyidah Fatima Zahra radiallahu anha wa alayhi wa salam. Uh, first time in English, that's a comprehensive book that was done by uh, the, the uh, Mecca Books and Ihya Publishing. Alhamdulillah, we're going to partner with them to do the book launch in two weeks, inshallah. We'll have a hundred copies of the book. The book is stunning. SubhanAllah, if you see it, the quality, mashallah, that's why it's like two months late because it was in the publishers and, and printers in Turkey. But Alhamdulillah, it's coming out. And inshallah, we'll have a beautiful event. Habibi uh, Ustad Mahdi will be there. Sidi Uthman will be there. Sidi Marlon, you're going to be there, right? 
Inshallah. All the brothers and sisters that, you know, participate in nasheeds and all those things will be there. And I'll do a talk on the highlights of the book. And inshallah, it's going to be amazing. Uh, the the per person who did the work is stunning. Mashallah, Sidi Khalid Williams did the translation. Um, and I had a small little tiny portion in it. It's all, it's all, you know, the Habib Omar wrote a poem. She say, he said, "Yartah qalbi dahat qad dakart Fatima." He said, "My soul is is brought to peace if anybody mentions Fatima." Bint in Nabil Mustafa Anwarun Adaima. He says, "She he is the daughter of the Al Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and she is our light forever." Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, Radiyallahu Anha wa Ardaha. Uh, and, and then after that, inshallah, also the same day, we'll do the day of Arafat. Inshallah, we have a, a beautiful gathering, Quran recitation, khatm of Quran is our goal. First thing, reflections, salawat, seeking forgiveness, supplications, inshallah. So we would love that everyone participate. He'll be here at MCC, mashallah. My brother Zahir, may Allah reward him and all the people at MCC, may Allah facilitate for them and make it easy. And this is the light of the Prophet We're None of this is any of us. It's the Prophet doing the work. We're just the means for the to, to, to spread, inshallah. Um, alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. The other thing is that if you can, uh, the, the, the right side is the QR code. If you can just uh, scan, uh, take a picture of it, that's the, our, our feedback form. It's going to help us a lot to know uh, your feedback and your thoughts, inshallah. The left side is Circles of Light, we, our Instagram page, so you can just follow and we can uh, share events with you. Um, I'm shy to say those things, but it's a part of us to be connected, inshallah, that we can uh, be able to do that. And then we'll, we'll do a, a quick summary for those who missed the gathering, and then we'll do the closing du'as, inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. Did everyone get it, uh, or you still need time? Mashallah. Santiago, mashallah. Your story was amazing, Allah. All these amazing stories, but subhanAllah, he, he, he said he felt it a lot. The tafakkur time. So, anybody want to share anything, uh, something new or insightful that they learned before we do the summary? Anybody want to share uh, what, you know, something you said, subhanAllah, I didn't even know about this hadith, or I didn't even think that this ayah had something, you know, that, you know, you read the English, and you're like, okay, I understood it, but subhanAllah, something today stood out for you. Don't be shy, Zahra, maybe you can tell me. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Beautiful. So the, so the relationship between Ayah uh, 56 and Ayah 43, please look it up. Have a really good relationship with the Quran to the point where the translations, you, you're connected with them. Translation of Dr. Khattab is amazing. The clear Quran. Dr. Thomas Cleary's translation, unfortunately, is out of print. Uh, but that, it's a miraculous story how I got it. Ajib story, subhanAllah. So, so many things like that. Find these things, read them. These people did amazing work. Uh, Shaykh Abdullah Yusuf Ali, this man of Allah, he was overwhelmed with the Quran. He was, he was engulfed in the Quran, love of the Quran. You know, their works did so. Even if there's minor mistakes here and there in translation, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive them and uh, allow us to have better understanding. But the, as a whole, they're amazing things. And that's just in English. So if you know Arabic a little bit, you can even look at the, some of the easier tafsirs, like tafsir Jalalain, and have better relationship with the Quran. That's so, so important. Um, yeah, so that's, I think, there. So now let's do a quick recap, right? Inshallah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So chapter one on the meanings of the salawat, the author, Imam Abdullah Sirajuddin, starts the chapter by explaining the verse uh, of Ayah 56. At one point on page 18, he also makes mention of what the verse Ayah means. Means the estimated meaning of the word is that indeed Allah sends prayers upon the Prophet and indeed the angels sent prayers upon the Prophet too. The reason for this estimation is due to the different realities of these two prayers. The prayer of Allah and the prayer of the angels. The prayer of the angels in no way resembles the prayer of the Lord of the worlds. God Most High allowed and thereby honored the inhabitants of the lower assembly, the, the world, the dunya, to partake in sending prayers upon the Prophet ﷺ. Performing salawat when complying with the divine command is a clear sign of faith, not a favor empty non to the Prophet ﷺ. He further elaborates on the meanings of the verse on page 34. The prayer of Allah is his praise and exaltation of the Prophet ﷺ and the prayer of the angels is their supplication of increase of praise and exaltation for him. The companions asked, how then do we perform prayers upon you, Ya Rasulullah? He replied with the Ibrahimi salawat or salat. Chapter 2 on the rulings. Obligation is fulfilled when one is commanded is done once. When what is commanded? 
Our author, Imam Abdullah Sirajuddin Rahimullah, provides proofs for the Prophet's station of supremacy to, to call him Sayyiduna Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is Sayyiduna. And he has another book where some people that were not, um, you know, in love with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in that way, they said, just call it Muhammad Rasulullah. Why do you call it Sayyiduna Muhammad Rasulullah? Mm -hmm. And then at the end of it in volume two, he tells the story of what happened, how he saw a dream, and in the Kaaba it was announced that it's Sayyiduna Muhammad Rasulullah. And then he said, I'm leaving it. I'm leaving it Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah. Again, this is our own feelings. It, we, you know, if somebody says it the other way, alhamdulillah. But, you know, whoever feels that way, then they should feel that, that they can say Sayyidina Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Obligation, awajib when the name of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is mentioned. Scholars differ on whether the obligation repeats each time he is mentioned. More piously cautious position, al-ahwat, is that it repeats. The official position of the Hanafi school is that it is recommended to repeat the salawat when his name is repeated in a single gathering. Makes it easy, alhamdulillah. That is, it is obligatory to do it once, though it is recommended to repeat it. In instances when it is recommended sunnah to send prayers upon the Prophet Sallallahu after the adhan, beginning, middle, and end of supplications, when entering and exit the masjid, when a Muslim meets a fellow Muslim. And I know only two people who do that with me. I didn't even know it myself. And there's one person that does that, and all, every time we meet, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. That's from there. And in a gathering, when writing his name, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, did anybody write it in their book? If you didn't, inshallah, Allah Akbar. Uh, mashallah. So write it in your books. Get this practice going. Every time you get a new book, every time you have a new page, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. And let the angels be busy working for, asking for forgiveness. Allahu Akbar. When writing his name, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when beginning a sermon or talk at both ends of the day, and so on, our author goes on to list 20 instances. Chapter 3 and 4 were the shortest. On the virtues or fada'il, and in, in some languages they say faza'il, same thing, fada'il. Allah Most High will send 10 prayers for each one sent to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Our author says, enumerates some of the vast number of virtues in sending prayers upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Salawat reaches the Prophet. One's level or degree is raised. Good deeds are increased. Wrong actions efface. Reward of freeing 10 bondsmen. Receiving the interse intercession of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Repelling poverty and outpour of goodness and blessings. Closest of people to him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Benefit even reaches one's family. And in four, chapter 4 he says, Failing to remember Allah or sending prayers upon the Prophet ﷺ in a gathering will result in regret and reckoning unless God wills otherwise. Failing to remember Allah or send prayers upon the Prophet ﷺ in a gathering is, is, as if they are standing, is as if they stand from the most putrid of ar carcasses. Like they just got up from something that's, you know, just bad, right? SubhanAllah. It's like, the stench of right? Nobody wants to be near a carcass. Imagine the gathering that's turned into a carcass because the dhikr of Allah in Salat ala Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not there. Chapter 5 on the benefits. The topic is vast and the author mentions some of the benefits which can overlap with the virtues mentioned in chapter 3. Some of the benefits of sending prayers on the, upon the Prophet والسلام, are a means of drawing close to the Prophet is charity and purification, relief from the stresses of the worldly life in the hereafter, free from hypocrisy in the here hellfire, light upon the sirat, descent of uh, mercy, your name being mentioned before the Prophet increase of reciprocal love to and from the Prophet Salawat in all circumstances, he said, I am astonished at the one who says, I remembered my beloved, and do I forget that I must remember what I forgot? No. It becomes a part where we can't even think to say that we remember. It's just constantly doing what we're doing. But as the poet says, you know, إِذَا مَرِدْنَا تَدَوَيْنَا بِذِكْرِكُمُ فَنَتْرُكُ الذِّكْرَ أَحْيَانًا فَنَنْتَكِسُ He said, we, when we become sick, we, we remember you. Right? And when we lapse, <laughs> that's when we forget, right? But basically, the point is that we all have that moment where we get, you know, we're our human nature. We just go and then, oh, we need to do this. Come back to it. Allah. Re returning of the soul of the Prophet ﷺ in its relationship to Salawat on page 134. Visiting the noble grave of our Prophet ﷺ. Angels constantly surround his noble grave. Angels constantly noting who sends prayers upon the Prophet ﷺ. Prophet Jesus, the son of Mary ﷺ, after he returns to earth, will visit the Prophet ﷺ. Adab of the Salaf towards the Messenger of Allah ﷺ on page 147. Salat al-Ibrahimiyya, meaning of Allahumma, salli ala Muhammad, 
Prayer from Allah is mercy. Prayer from the angels is they're seeking forgiveness. Meaning of the name Muhammad Wasallam. one example, the one who is praised time and time again without end. Who are the Al of Muhammad Wasallam in the Ibrahimi prayer? Page 169. Similarities found in the Ibrahimi prayer. One example, likening is only with regards to the basis of, of the prayer, not the maqam, not the stature. Why Prophet Ibrahim is specifically mentioned? One example, to requit uh, him for his ihsan of sending us salam on the mi'raj. On the meaning of bless, barak, one example means increase in growth in their blessings. On the meaning fil alameen, every category of creation, alam al mulk. Alam al Amr, Alam al Malakut, Alam al Jabarut, all these worlds that exist, fil alameen, and he is Rahma lil alameen, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then on the meaning of uh, Hamid and Majid, uh, God will always and, sh and shall forever praise himself. Wisdom being, see, that's why that this poem, there's a famous poem that says uh, that God is not waiting for us to praise in him, and the Prophet sallam, is not looking for praise of anyone. We're doing it for our own benefit. The Prophet is enough to praise Allah and Allah is enough to praise Muhammad So then he says Muhammad astu me khoham khudara ilahi astu ishqi mustafara Oh Muhammad, I want Allah from you Oh Allah, I want the love of Muhammad so this is the relationship. Wisdom behind sending prayers in the, in the Salat in the form of prayer. Glad tidings to those who send abundant prayers upon the Prophet Muhammad May Allah make us from those. Ameen. Fi khair wa lutfa afiyah. And then, yeah, we talked about that. So now we do the closing du'as. Habibi Ustad Mahdi, please with the closing du'as. Siri. Wa min Allah tawfiq Allah musalli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad. No, 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 for this I want, I want to be in with you. No, 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 I, I want to say two things uh, with Brother Tariq's permission. Bismillah, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. The first thing is um, every one of us has to take one thing with us that we will do for the rest of our life. So um, whenever we attend any session, we get ilm, knowledge in our mind, and then it penetrates our heart, and we get love and hal, and then it manifests on our devotions, limbs. And we all, even if we sit in a class for 60 minutes, 90 minutes, two hours, eight hours, we have to choose one thing we'll do forever. So, like, I remember a friend who sat in a 90-minute session of our beloved teacher, Sheikh Faraz Khan, when he was teaching Book 20 of the Ihya, which is about our Prophet wasallam. And after that 90 minutes, this friend said, I'm going to do one thing the rest of my life. What was it? I'm going to reciprocate a gift for a gift. In 90 minutes... We covered a hundred things. He took one for the rest of his life. That, that friend, he came and attended another session with Sheikh Faraz Khan, 90 minutes the next week. And he said, I took one thing I'm going to do the rest of my life. What was it? He said, I'm going to accept the excuse of the one who gives me an excuse. <laughs> That's it. So we all have to take one thing that we'll do the rest of our life from the 20 that we learned from Ustad Tariq. Anything you want. One of the things that I liked was when you walk in the home, you say, Salaamu Alaikum, Salawat, and Surah Al-Ikhlas. Is that the one you're going to do? Whatever, make intention to choose one thing that you're going to do the rest of your life. So we're always incrementally upping for the rest of our life. We're always growing. We're always growing. So that's the first thing. Choose one thing. Don't leave this room until you choose one thing you're going to do for the rest of your life. The second thing I want to share is, this is actually a very, very big moment. Because uh, this is the in, in, inaugural session of Circles of Light, Takbir. Allah. Takbir. Allah. Takbir. Allah. We are all lucky that we are in this first session of Circles of Light. May Allah bless Circles of Light. Say Ameen. Uh, th this is, inshallah, a momentous thing, a momentous big project, inshallah, Circles of Light. And we are very, very grateful and excited for Circles of Light and what it can be and what it is. 
And inshallah, we have big, big al-madad bi qadr al-mashhad. So we have big intentions that circles of light will illuminate the globe. Say ameen. And all the alameen. Say ameen. So this is a very, very big thing. And we ask Allah to bless Brother Tariq and his family. Say ameen. Ameen. That's the second thing. And then we'll, uh, inshallah, I have a gift for Tariq. We have a khatim of Quran, inshallah. Allah. So as, for, our, for our closing prayer, we'll do a khatim Quran and we'll do dua, inshallah. And, uh, and then after that, we'll do one qasida. So inshallah, we'll, we'll conclude with uh, dua, we'll, uh, with a khatim Quran. So everyone join in, inshallah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق ومن شر غاسق إذا وقب ومن شر النفاثات في العقد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا اللهم إنا نسألك بأننا نشهد أنك أنت الله وحدك لا شريك لك الأحد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد اللهم إنا نسألك ونتوجه إليك بنبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم نبي الرحمة توجه نبيك إلى ربنا في عاجاتنا فيقضوا لنا فيقضوا لنا في حاجاتنا فيقضوا لنا اللهم فشفعه فينا يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم يا ملك يا قدوس يا سلام يا مؤمن يا مهيمن يا عزيز يا جبار يا متكبر يا خالق يا بارئ يا مصور يا غفار يا قهار يا وهاب يا رزاق يا فتاح يا عليم يا قابض يا باسط يا قابض يا رافع يا معز يا مذل يا سميع يا بصير يا حكم يا عدل يا لطيف يا خبير يا حليم يا خبير يا حليم يا خبير يا علي يا كبير يا حفيظ يا مقيت يا محصي يا مبد يا محي يا مميت يا حي يا قيوم يا واجد يا ماجد يا واحد يا أحد يا فرد يا صمد يا قادر يا مقتدر يا مقدم يا مؤخر يا أول يا آخر يا ظاهر يا باطن يا والي يا متعال يا بر يا تواب يا منتقم يا عفو يا رهب يا مالك الملك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام يا مقصد يا جامع يا غني يا مغني يا مانع يا ضار يا نافع يا نور يا هادي يا بديع يا باقي يا وارد يا رشيد يا صبور يا مجيب يا واسع يا حكيم يا ودود يا مجيد يا باعث يا شهيد يا حق يا وكيل يا قوي يا متين يا ولي يا حميد يا الله 
صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد في الأولين صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد في الآخرين صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد في الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين يا الله يا الله we turn to you in this moment we thank you for the the enormous blessings that we are immersed in, Ya Allah. We thank you for this day, Ya Allah. We thank you for letting us know your name, Ya Allah, your sweet name, your beautiful name, Ya Allah. Thank you for letting us know you, Ya Allah. And thank you for letting us know your mess your beloved messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who we take as our beloved master, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ya Allah, we ask you to let these meanings manifest in our lives, Ya Allah. Manifest in our hearts, manifest in our character. Ya Allah, let us let us know the Prophet وسلم, let us love the Prophet وسلم, and let us follow the Prophet وسلم. Ya Allah, let us know him and let that knowing him lead to loving him. And let that loving him lead to following him. Let us submit, Ya Allah, to you and following him more than we submit to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Submit to you, Ya Allah, where we trust you more than we trust ourselves. Where we love you more than we trust ourselves, Ya Allah where we embrace you more than we embrace ourselves, where we look at you more than we look at ourselves, where we live for you and not for ourselves, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we surrender ourselves to you. We turn our attention to you. We entrust our affairs to you. We depend and we lean on you out of love of you and fear of you. Ya Allah, there is no escape from you except to you. Ya Allah, we affirm the revelation that you revealed and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that you sent. Ya Allah, we live for you, we breathe for you, we die for you, we walk for you, we get angry only for you. We don't get angry for ourselves, we don't get angry for the dunya. Ya Allah, we give for you, withhold for you. Ya Allah, we open our eyes for you, we move for you and we're still for you. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, ya Allah we turn to you, Ya Allah, broken and helpless and needy and knowing that you are generous and you are loving and you are wise yeah. and you are mighty and you are powerful and you are, are all-knowing and all-seeing and you do as you please and it's so easy for you. It's so easy, you do as you please with ease. Allah, Allah. Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, who do we have if we don't have you? Ya Allah, who do we have if we don't have you? Ya Allah, and if we have you, what are we missing? Allah. Allah. Ya Allah, send peace and blessings on your master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Allah, put us from his inner circle, from his close circle. Ya Allah, we invite your messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to visit us in our dreams. And he's too generous to reject the invitation. He is too generous to reject the invitation. And you are too generous, Ya Allah. You answer the one who calls you. Ya Allah, you give the one who asks you. Ya Allah, we're calling you. Ya Allah, we're asking you. Ya Allah, circles of light is born. Ya Allah, it's born in your hands. Ya Allah, bidaya mushriqa, ameen. Nihaya mushriqa, ameen. Ya Allah, we ask you, Ya Allah, to envelope and take care and comprehensively encompass circles of light, Ya Allah, with vast tawfiq, Ya Allah, yeah. and with people who love it, Ya Allah, yeah. people that serve it, Ya Allah, people yeah. that support it, Ya Allah, so it can illuminate across the globe, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, huwa alayya hayyan, it's easy for you. Ala kulli shayin qadir, fa'alun lima turid. Huwa ajtabakum, you choose who you please. Ya Allah, choose brother Tariq, Ya Allah. Choose your slave Tariq, Ya Allah. Choose your servant Tariq, Ya Allah. Bil khayru lutubu al-afiyah. Choose him gently, Ya Allah. Choose him gently, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, choose him. As he's inspired us today, we ask you to continue to inspire him, Ya Allah, and to infuse him with light, Ya Noor. Ya Noor, in this moment, infuse all of us with light, Ya Allah. Ameen, Ameen, Ya Allah, and our teachers and our scholars, where would we be without them? Where would we be without, without the men and women that upheld and carried and supported this deen? Make us from them, Ya Allah. Make us from them, Ya Allah. Rabbi ghfir li wali walidayi, Rabbi rhamhuma kama rabbayani saghira. Oh Allah, take care of our parents, take care of our elders. Ya Allah, we're helpless, Ya Allah. Bring us closer to you with gifts, Ya Allah. Not with tests, Ya Allah. Bring us closer to you with the caresses of love, Ya Allah. Not the chains of misfortune. Ya Allah, we submit, we surrender, we apologize, Ya Allah. We turn to you, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, bring us closer to you with caresses of love. Not the chains of misfortune. Ameen, Ameen, Ya Allah, accept this gathering, Ya Allah. Send vast peace and blessings, Ya Allah, on all the Prophets, alayhim as salam, and on all our and on all the Prophets, alayhim as salam, and on our beloved Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And gather all of us in paradise, Ya Allah. Gather all of us in paradise without judgment, Ya Allah. And, and take care of our marriages, and take care of our homes, and fill them with light, and with love, 
and with happiness and with joy. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, and, and help us, Ya Allah, cleanse our character. So we can honor those around us, Ya Allah. And so we can have beautiful, majestic, Muhammadan character, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we ask you for everything good that our dear Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked you for. And we seek protection from every harm he sought protection from. Ya Allah, help us follow him. Help us hold his coattails. Help us see him. Walk with him, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, so you can be pleased with us. What else is there in this world, Ya Allah? Don't let us be distracted by this world. Don't let us be distracted by this dunya, duped by the devil. Ya Allah, give us strength and victory over our lower nafs, over our nafs, over shaitan, over the dunya, over our hawa. Oh Allah, give us victory, Ya Allah, so we can be honor those honor those who may have hurt us forgive those and pardon those who have harmed us so we can connect with those who push us away and so we can be generous to those even that are greedy to us ya allah ya allah and the young amongst us ya allah the young the young boys and girls ya allah raise them ya allah to be scholars and saints ya allah raise them to be scholars and saints ya allah ameen 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 you want to add anything say Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillah wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen inna allah wa malaykatahu yusalluna ala al-nabi ya والذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيد المرسلين الصلاة والسلام عليك يا خاتم النبيين الصلاة والسلام عليك يا من أرسلك الله رحمة للعالمين ورضي الله تعالى عن أصحاب رسول الله أجمعين ربنا تقبل من وقلنا بسر النبي وعلى النبي والراث النبي ولا حضرة النبي الفاتحة الله سلم سلم الله 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 ربي الله 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 ربي عوني وحسبي ما لي سواه عوني وحسبي قل هو الله كم لك من نعمة علي كم لك من نعمة علي ولم تزل محسنا إلي ولم تزل محسنا إلي غذيتني في الحشا جنينا غذيتني في الحشا جنينا وكنت لي قبل والدي وكنت لي قبل والدي الله 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 ربي الله 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 ربي عوني وحسبي ما لي سواه عوني وحسبي قل هو الله خلقتني مسلما ولولا خلقتني مسلما ولولا فضلك لم أعرف النبي فضلك لم أعرف النبي أسجد حقا على جبيني أسجد حقا على جبيني 
نعم وخادي ونظرا يا نعم وخادي ونظرا يا الله 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 ربي الله 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 ربي عوني وحسبي ما لي سواه عوني وحسبي قل هو الله يا ربي صلي على محمد يا ربي صلي على محمد ماتوا لي سورة المثاني ماتوا لي سورة المثاني وآله والصحاب طرا وآله والصحاب طرا ما ربح الناس بالإيمان ما ربح الناس بالإيمان الله 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 ربي الله 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 ربي عوني وحسبي ما لي سواه عوني وحسبي قل هو الله وأطلب الحق في السعادة وأطلب الحق في السعادة لكل من ضمه زماني لكل من ضمه زماني الله 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 ربي الله 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 ربي عوني وحسبي ما لي سواه عوني وحسبي قل هو الله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله A special fatiha for uh, the author uh, Sheikh Abdullah Sirajuddin Al-Fatiha And a special fatiha for circles of light Al-Fatiha Jazakum Allah khairan. May Allah reward all of you for your time. You gifted us with the most precious thing that anybody has. It's your time. May Allah reward you. Allah give you beyond your imaginations. And inshallah, gather us together inshallah in two weeks and, and many more times again inshallah. And all of this is the hadr of Sayyidina Muhammad. It's the gathering of Sayyidina Muhammad. It's nothing from us. It's all his sallallahu alayhi work. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to do the work of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inshallah. Fi khair wa lutu Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. من جميع السيئات وترفعنا بها عندك أعلى الدرجات وتبلغنا بها قنص الغيات من جميع الخيرات في الحياة وبعد الممات آمين <تصفيق> أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا يا أيها الذين آمنوا 
يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم together اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا من عظمك الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا من عظمك الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا من عظمك الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيبي يا رسول 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 الله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله صلى الله عليه الهدى وفانا في حسنه أحيانا وباللقاء حيانا صلى عليه مولانا أهلا به وسهلا قد طاب فيه المجلى حلا لنا مد حلا صلى عليه مولانا يا رحمة العالمين يا نعمة لا تبين مطاع ثم أمين صلى عليه مولانا يا مدعي حبه به أطع أمره غدا تنام 
المور بهو الجو صلى عليه مولانا يا مدعي حبه به أضيع أمره يا مدعي حبه به أضيع قربه صلى عليه مولانا الان تنال قربه صلى عليه مولانا الان تنال قربه صلى عليه مولانا أنتنا الحرب صلى عليه مولانا أحمدنا المصطفى صلى عليه مولانا فالمادح فيه شفاء صلى عليه مولانا اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى اله